I didn't have health insurance at the time, and now I have a plan like
Just Gamers, Con is back. Who won it? Brace yourself for a shakeup like never before. 12 new rosters and two brand new teams join the CEO. We're breaking down all the changes from a wild offseason. Am I getting deja vu? These classic maps are making a comeback. It's a blast from the past with a fresh new twist. Plus, we might have a couple of new friends joining us in studio this season. Get ready. Call of Duty League opening day starts Everybody, this is the Call of Duty League. You're watching Headquarters, and I'm your host, Chris Puckett, alongside Alley Cat and Nameless. We got to start here with Nameless. 17th year of Call of Duty starts today. It's been 173 <laughs> days since you've been on set. How are we feeling today? Man, I feel fantastic. We got a new game. It's been a while. We had a six-month offseason. I'm so excited to see these new rosters. But yeah, man, 17 years. Sheesh, it's been a long time being in Call of Duty. Now, it's been 17 years for Nameless in Call of Duty. Allie, where are we at here, over here? Five, six? Five? Five? Yeah, about five. And we hung out just about five days ago in Las Vegas. A very busy weekend, and we have to acknowledge your achievement. Allie earned the first 30 under 30 Forbes award for a female Call of Duty League talent. In fact, any Call of Duty League talent. And you did it for great reasons. The WXC, awesome thing you've been building there for the female competitors in the Call of Duty world. But also, I think everyone just really appreciates what you bring as an analyst here in the esports world. Well, thank you, guys. What's so funny is I found out in like the most esports way possible. I literally woke up to a Jacob Hale tweet and I was like, oh no, what did I do? Like what <laughs> drama am I involved in? But now it was just him letting the community know. So thank you so much. That was a really, really sweet treat to wake up to. But yeah, I'm just excited to keep moving forward. But you know what? That's not the only achievement that happened in the past week. Pocket got added to the Lifetime Achievement Congrats. Award. Congrats. I checked the big box. I think I'm able to quit now. <laughs> <laughs> time to that was an awesome surprise like you. I woke up. It was on Twitter. I was like, oh, I guess I have to go back to Vegas for an award show. <laughs> Esports Awards. Thank you for honoring everyone, including one of the big winners from the console side. Of course, it was a controller player there. Oh, look at this. Pete Oh. Melican, the man who introduced me. Thank you so much, Legend. Peter. And I got to give a shout out to my family, a lot of folks in attendance. And it was so cool to see like you and Miles were there. We had Zoe from the Overwatch League. Yeah. Everyone out in Vegas. I was on my feet. This was great. And honestly, I love that you were rounding it out as well. And you were like, you know what? We're all tired. This is great. Let's go <laughs> drink in Vegas. Absolutely. All right. Here's the young man I wanted to give a shout out to. He goes by the name of Hydra. He came over from France and he took over the world of Call of Duty. This your name was he picks up the honor he deserves first off i just want to say shout out to all the call of duty people getting their flowers during this off season it's been great and for hydra nobody deserved this more i saw the list of the nominees it was stacked but i felt like this guy was a shoe in multiple championships last year mvp and he was the best player in the world think about the struggles he had to deal with 
coming over, having to learn a new language, coming to unfamiliar territory. Well, he took over, so he's looking to yes. repeat coming in this year. And Paco, yes. don't think we didn't see you crush that speech. The yeah. man is comfortable with the microphone, and we like to take a little credit for that. Another man, though, who got all of the credit he deserves is Crim Six. He wasn't there in person because he's getting ready for his next career as a race car driver, Allie. I mean, if you haven't seen this video, you need to go to his socials and watch it. I got to see it live during the Lifetime Achievement, and can I just say, it was the most Ian Porter video I have ever seen. It was basically a promo into what he's going to do going to do next. So now not only does he have over 30 rings, he now has a sweet car and career to go with it. So Call of Duty earned him a Porsche <laughs> and now he's driving Porsches for career which will make money to buy more Call of Duties. I mean, certified legend right there in Crim6. You've seen it. He's got all them championships. And I've been following him on Instagram. He's got a crazy workout routine now, trying to get in shape so he can be quicker on the road because big Porter, I mean, that'd be a little too slow. Yeah, no one is catching up to Porter <laughs> right now, at least anytime soon. But we do have to revisit some of the big moments of last year because we have some new faces now causing chaos on the podium. One of them went by the name of Scrap. He and Toronto Ultra catching everyone off guard at the start of the year they were able to make a miraculous run at champs but it ended right before gold they walked away with silver yeah unfortunately chat gp was just a little too right last year but also we have to talk about phase firing back unfortunately they did fall to our world champions in the new york subliners winning those final two events but you know it's life death taxes and phase in top four yeah, I mean, incredible season by them, but it was really the story of the New York Subliners all year long. A team that was able to pick up multiple championships, a guy like Kismet who, you know, he's sort of been an underdog his entire career, cemented himself as one of the best SMGs in the game, but even they had to make a roster change. All 12 teams. So they get rid of one of their players after 5 0 in the finals, Priesta to the curb, and Sib on the team. So wait, perfect finals and I'm still going to make a roster change. New York Subliners, I don't know what you're brewing over there, but tonight we're going to find out. Let's talk a little bit about what is coming here in 2024. As Ant mentioned, 12 brand new rosters. No one coming back with the same team. Allie, who stands out to you? What are you looking forward to here? I, obviously, my, Miami Heretics. I don't think there's many other teams you could go with here. We are seeing players that we have not seen since the Black Ops 4 season, since before the CDL was a thing. I'm so happy to see the return. That's right. Mutineers are gone. Instead, we're all partying in Miami this year with the Spaniards. We've got yes, we some are. of the best from Europe, and of course, it's all going to be led by the sophomore, Vico, making moves last year. He is so excited to be surrounded by these guys. Absolutely, Chris. And listen, you know, for the new fans out there, or maybe you joined during the CDL, prior to the CDL, there was the CWL, and Heretics were in the league in Black Ops 4, and they were unbelievable. And this was before the rest of the regions got a little bit more developed. And what have we seen from some of these young rookies internationally, like Fred and Hydra? Absolutely unbelievable. So what do these guys do? They don't come into the CDL. They go go to challengers and they have been lighting it up the heretics team these players they got top two in challengers finals last year so expect them to be going crazy and expect a lot of people in chat screaming vamos when they beat some of your favorite miami players. is not the only new franchise we also see a relocation of our uk team the royal ravens are officially in america now and they're playing in carolina blues how do we feel about clayster's new lineup here i mean we went from one coast to the other and clayster had to go along for the ride. I feel like it's a situation where Clay has just been kind of expected to hone some of these rosters and really build some of these younger players and that's why I'm really happy to see Goddorex next to him this year. Goddorex has been through the Challengers gauntlet the past couple years and now he's able to bring in Gwyn to be a rookie, one that he won Challengers last year with and alongside Real. So I think some high expectations for this team and they'll have some fan base already just because of Clay. Anyways, I'm thinking they gave Clay the reins here. How do you feel about the squad he built? I, I, I kind of like it. Uh, you know, I was talking to him a little bit about it, this team and he said Gwyn sort of has the green light to go around and just destroy everybody on the map and for clay it feels like we are entering the end of his career but he needs something because he didn't need to keep playing he could have stopped you know clay's a legend he can do whatever he wants in, in the esports scene but he wants to get that final championship and he feels like he has a legitimate fighting chance with this roster and you know at times clay doesn't always want to be that vocal leader all the time he wants to lock in and slay stuff so he has got a rex to help him out a little bit in that regard so uh, he's gonna have to grow these young rookies but nobody is better suited than that guy in your screen.
That battle is going down with the new franchises facing off Saturday, December 9th at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's noon for all of y'all on the West Coast. We've got some new franchise, and of course, everyone is playing the new old game. We got MW3, and it's a blend of everything we've loved from the past and the future. Let's start here with the new maps and modes. Of course, the maps a lot of fan favorites. Allie, you might be new to these, but Nameless and I love seeing that crane back in action. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, I was nine when these maps were out. Jeez. I can't say the same for either of you on my right or left. So for me, it's been really fun to kind of rediscover some of these maps, but the veterans are going to have a little bit of an edge this year as they're going to know these better than anybody else. But I mean, I love these maps out so far. Yeah, you know, a lot of these maps we had back in the day, people have been wanting these maps back. We've seen yeah. Terminal come through a few times, but these are some maps that we didn't play in the active competitive rotation when we played Modern Warfare 2 way years back, like Skid Row, like Karachi, like Subbase. We're seeing these maps now in this era of Call of Duty be competitively viable on our new game modes. And the map you're seeing right here, this is Subbase, an incredible oh, yeah. map. It's super fast paced. If you're looking for a map where people are gonna get in crazy engagements and create the highlight moments, it's going to be this map, especially in hard point it's nuts and i gotta say shout out to monster energy your logo looks great across all of these maps one of the new sponsors coming on board for the 2024 season let's talk a little bit about the weapons though that everyone's gonna be running alley last year you put up only ar stats are you running a sub what's the ar of choice catch me up honestly i've been going kind of back and forth subcat might make an appearance but the air of choice this year is going to be the mcw and i'm happy that we're gonna have sights back it's gonna be a blue dot instead of a red which I technically prefer, and then as well as the subs, gonna be that rival nine. And you know what, Chris? We were kind of teased at the game opening weekend with the fact that we thought it was going to be an AR game this year, but once again, the bl the subs have been given a laser gun. <laughs> Nameless, every time I'm looking down, we have more and more viewers. If you are watching on YouTube for the first time, join the 1.7 million of the folks who have already smashed that subscribe button. Oh yeah. For anyone who's watching Call of Duty League for the first time though, what are they gonna learn today? These are the best players in the world. All right, listen, when you watch these guys, they have been putting in so many hours in scrims, learning all the craziest spots on the map, the best ways to break hills and that nature. You're going to learn a ton. Enjoy, follow these guys' stories. It's going to develop through the season. It will be magnificent, I promise. And you get a first taste of the new rosters. Let's take a look at the six that are in action here on opening day. Boston Woo! breached. You got Snoopy and Fred's taking on the big dogs with Atlanta phase at 3 o'clock. That's your opening battle. Seattle Surge faces off against their West Coast rival in the LA Thieves and of course the big match everyone's been waiting 173 days for the New York subliners the world champs putting their first battle on the line against one of the biggest teams in the game in Optic Texas. Allie it is Pickham's time get them in while you still can. All right, fans, time is running out to make your picks. Choose your winners now by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. And make sure you hurry because it closes at 3.15 Eastern. So 15 minutes after, after that first match should start. I still got to do it. It's the qualifiers for major number one. We're going to Boston in just a few weeks. But before that, games are kicking off. We'll break down the first match after this. Ready to kick it off in the city of Boston, where champions are born.
I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Oh, 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 That is a look at the brand new rosters of Boston Breach and Atlanta Phase. The first matchup we have here in the 2024 season. Let's get right into this. The maps and modes. It's a best of five as always. Allie, what are you seeing here? All I have to see is that Selium has so many places to be on these maps. <laughs> and what do you think? I mean, I, I, obviously, we got to watch these teams play first, but when you yeah. talk about those hard points, I'm really excited to see how these teams approach it. Uh, like Karachi, that map's extremely punishing. You spawn really far. So we'll, we'll see if the revenge game is truly in motion. All right, let's make these official. As we look at the rosters, we have to get our first prediction. I haven't seen either team play. I'm like you, audience, watching them for the first time. But Atlanta Fizz, you're always in the top three, and now you brought in Draza for some extra firepower. I think it's enough to beat the Boston Breach. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm going against the revenge game because we got Priesta and Slasher on the other side of this, but I think I'm still going to phase up. Phase up. Listen, I'm going with the revenge game. I'm going with Boston. I mean, we saw Priesta slam them last year every time we played them, and Slasher's got to get his revenge. Somebody didn't see the coaches <laughs> pull, but two gentlemen who that. definitely did are in the building all season long. Please make some noise for the beautiful Merkin Maven! How are we doing, everybody? Uh, very excited to be here. Excited to get casted. Excited for another year. Joe, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. You know, CDL's getting underway. We are here in studio. Going to be having some fun all year long. So just excited to be part yeah. of that action. And uh, yeah, we're going to have some fun. That's what we do. No, it's, it's been a good time. Obviously, we've got a long history with Esports Engine guys. And uh, our pals here on the desk. It's been fun just having a great time from rehearsal yesterday. Now getting into the matches. And now let's get ready for our first match. Uh, it's a new year. You know, we take we, we had a little break. We are just casting part-time, you know. But now we've got a title. It's a whole hell of a lot of fun, Joe. And it's been really exciting watching these teams do battle what are your thoughts going into this first one? Well, I mean, obviously, Atlanta Phase, when you talk about these, always the juggernaut, right? Going yep. into the year, high expectations. Then they add Draza. It was one of those off seasons where, I mean, there were so many high caliber free agents. It yep. was just a question of, are they going to stick with Slasher or not? Draza's on the board. They decided to go with him. Here is a look at that roster. You have the trio of Abizi. Selium and Simp, you add in Draza, one of the best flexes in the world can do it with an AR, can do it with an SMG. Sky is the limit as always. Yeah, th there was kind of like that that question mark a little bit uh, with Selium. You and I talked about it a lot these past couple of years. Uh, the pacing sometimes felt like he was more moving towards like a main AR and you know, in the off season you had a choice. Do you find a main AR that maybe uh, could play with a bit more tempo? Do you find uh, a flex that could come in and maybe move Sel to main AR? You know, when I heard Draza, I said to Crowder, the coach right away, I'm like, I think like this is great. In the sense, you can put Selda Man AR, he fills some of your, your holes. It also, like, he just has, like, that killer instinct. Kind of, I, I don't know, they've kind of lost that, I feel like, in recent years. Just talk a little trash. It's kind of the belief system that they are the best. It seems like slipped away a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of that fear factor, right? Yeah. I feel like when you, you know, you look in the past of Call of Duty, when teams would step on the stage, the stage to play the Optic Dynasty, nobody was looking forward to that. Nobody was sure. looking forward to that, you know, against Atlanta Phase. But the last couple of years, I feel like that fear factor has con kind of gone away. And, and maybe now with draws, getting these guys motivated, Maybe this is what they will need. It feels like they lost a bit of that confidence towards the end of those tournament runs. Well, now we're going to talk a little bit about Boston, and there's some interesting stories here. Um, you know, you kind of rebuild this team around Snoopy, but, you know, you have Slasher, who was on this phase team last year. You have Priesta, who's got to feel like he was snubbed, considering he just won a world championship. A little you bit. Capsule, who was a guy that felt like he was, like, a, you know, not an MVP, but, like, a, a rookie of the year type candidate, and then gets benched when he's frying, but, you know, maybe not making the right plays at times. You've got some people with chip on their shoulder 100% here. Yeah, I think you obviously have the veterans. Um, I mean, like, listen, for Boston Priesta, so last year, you could see the, the record. They were right in the middle of the pack, just sort of 50-50. They made a lot of roster moves. They were trying to find something that worked. And at the end of the year, uh, you know, they bring in Snoopy for that champs run. Just doesn't really work out. Um, and, and, you know, I think what, this is one of the better off seasons, you know, for a team like Boston Breach. Uh, you have Priestess Slasher World Champions. You have Snoopy. 
who is he going to, to be? Is he going to be a superstar? And then Capsule, I think Cap had a great year last year in terms of maturity, finding a system, finding his place, you know, alongside those Muneers. And I, listen, a surprise team at the end of the year, but now back on this roster, that young duo should be fun to watch. Well, you think about it, you know, when you need like the fundamentals, um, you know, doing the dirty work, those intangibles, like Slasher and Priestess should do those for you in a lot of spots to make sure yeah. you're playing the right way. So on for yeah, Snoopy and Capsule, you hope you just let the talent shine. Um, I'm even like, even if there are other mistakes from time to time, go out there and fry. And you got to think like the big mistakes, players like Priestess and Slash are going to help them get better and better. If I was a young player, this is a duo that I would like to play around. I mean, I think you've got it all. No, no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, Slash is going to be excited to have a search and destroy where you always have, you know, the covert sneakers that Deddy to play around, right? Yeah. Sort of a, a, a more standard search destroy year. Uh, but yeah, this team is, uh, you know, there's a lot of question marks here. But with that AR duo, with the world champions here, it's just a question of what do Cap and Snoopy turn into? Because I, I think that is the question we need to we need to see answered. Well, we're going to take a look at maps and modes again as we're waiting just to hop into this first game. And, you know, listen, we've been watching online scrims, but there's not a ton of, like, stats we have to go off yet, right? Like, every roster changed. It's a new title. This, I'm almost viewing, like, these next couple of weeks as, like, a preseason before, like, the break with, like, Christmas and everything. Like, this is sort of test everything. You know, the rule set's been kind of all over the place. People trying to figure out what's going to be, you know, GA, what's going to be official? How are we going to play this game? Now, let's test out for a few weeks in the official uh, section here of the CDL. And... We have a little bit of a break, and we'll see where we go. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're starting off with this uh, Karachi Hardpoint. I, I will say one thing, um, uh, you know, it's interesting to see is, uh, you know, Invasion, maybe Hardpoint banned out for Atlanta Phase. I feel like that Invasion Hardpoint is just a uh, more standardized sort of Hardpoint, where Terminal, when we get there, or if we get there, that is uh, a map where, what, four of your hills are on that left side of the map, right? You, you want the back security spawns. That could be an interesting one to, to watch if we get there. But, you know, Invasion Control, a lot of talk around sort of Hardpoint search destroy, but, uh, you know, Control comes me back and I think this is one of the better titles for it in recent years yeah no no I, just in the brief scrims I watched like yes like it, control seems like there's a lot of potential there were some defensive favorite maps sure but we usually see as the year goes on like offenses get better and better they find new ways to plan their attack um it doesn't seem nearly as I don't know defensive heavy as you saw early in like a Vanguard title or something like that with Kabutu so I, I think oh, there's gosh. a lot of potential there Kabutu. for sure <laughs> yeah 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 that that was uh, uh we're running uphill at times with that but I think there's a lot more potential here and I'm excited to get into it uh the one thing I'm looking forward to the most is probably just search and destroy because even though like the scrims will watch it's mostly there's been some best 11s like i think a couple scrims i watched had some search in, but mostly it's just been response that we've seen like behind the scenes so all these power rankings you've seen from coaches and power rankings and tier lists out from players it's or all fans. respawn yes exactly it's all respawn search and destroy though 40% of your games. I mean, it is a, a big question mark, right? And I think this is a chance for a team like Boston Breach. If you put a lot of the work early on in the year in Search to Destroy, this is where you grab some CDL points. This is yeah. where you cause some upsets. This is for all the teams, right? I mean, as you said, all the streams that we are watching, scrims we're watching, we're making these lists based on respawn power, not really the Search to Destroy. That game two and five, they can carry you a long way at this point of the year. Tough test, though. Win yeah, phase is <laughs> usually one of the best teams in Search and Destroy. Uh, now, I know it's very early in the year, but that's usually where they'll thrive. We're ready to get into it. Here we go. Game number one, phase Boston. To start us off, hard point, Karachi. We'll see if all the hype around this phase team early in the preseason. Uh, every, se every season. Yeah, basically every season. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I said this see Draza alongside these three. All right, here we go. Let's get into the first map. Started off a big draw. It's a new addition to this phase team. He's been uh, nuts. I think I was talking to Crowder, like we talked about BPL games, and he had played like 30 more than every other player. This guy lives and breathes Scott. He has been putting the time in. We'll see here where he's going to be for this team. But early on, it's Boston Breach. They're finding time at the hard point, but it's Sim. Trying yeah. to make the plays of the double. I mean, when you talk about someone who plays the most Call of Duty out of our CDL pros, it draws it. He's normally, a nutshell. He's a nutshell. Normally, the top of that list is Sims going to find two, Selium with another. P2, we're going to be going to that top left side of your mini map as we head on over, over towards that cafe, right where draws spawns up. So, some nice early time. And Sim, 3 and 0 start. Does get taken down. His duo in a BZ gets traded out by Slasher. So, now on this rotation, Yun fights. So you have Draza setting up. Alongside him. 
You're gonna have Selium just sort of watching this red window. And it looks like the one player for Boston Breach to go on a route is going to be Slasher. So maybe waiting on that number seven to go for this flank. But it looks like Sims watching it, able to find that kill. And Simp has been insane in the scrims I've been watching. I think a player very happy to have Deddy back and maybe unlock his playmaking ability a little bit. But he's been nuts. And the other side of that duo, though, it is a BZ. He plays a role that's very tough, especially early in titles. When you're the guy smashing your face into every opening, being the first to hit the point. You got to work on your timings, but there's somebody that has been the best at it year in and year out. It is a BC. The guy's insane. Yeah, and what you just saw, right? Right there, that first push uh, gets shut down. And Boston Breach, they spawn all the way out on that right side of your map. So you, some of the spawns in this game, you have sort of a classic spawn system where you spawn out far. And then every now and then there's some, like, just what was mixed that one? in squad they... <laughs> spawns. Like, there's definitely some question marks just how many spawn points are available. As we go over to P3, this one can get a little bit wacky because there's not many spawn points on this side the map if you have drunk junkyard control where snoopy is right now you can spawn here but if not you're spawning bridge you're spawning all the way across the map would be very different thing joe yeah <laughs> but yeah no this one you can get them spawning out so so deep and slasher doing a hell of a job of that so far joe he's on four in a row he's at five and two and look like look where you're spawning right now if you are draza you are completely opposite side of the map and you've got to hike it across with the lanes and avenues locked on down make it five in a row for austin before he falls Starting to chip away at this deficit. It's Snoopy there with a little gunfight win. Hey, I mean, we're already 30 seconds through and we're, we're thinking about the nice hill over to towards P4. Sim gonna take down Snoopy. Yeah, Capsule already inside P4, so now just trying to play his life. He's trying to be a thorn inside of phase. The problem is, is every single kill that he gets, they're just gonna be spawning up there, so. Yep, Abizi right back to his position. Simp just continues to wander around red, able to find that double. Nice plays from Simp on those rotation kills. Breach, though, with a full 60 at P3. But there you can see Snoopy spawns on up and maybe a chance for a free pinch here to catch FaZe off guard. It doesn't look like they're going to be aware of his position at all. Maybe going to be a freebie, oh. but it's not. It's a BZ. It's able to win the gunfight. that tears him at the last second, just able to react in time. And now back in the lead will be FaZe after that incredible rally from Boston Breach. But you can see basically every dot now around the point. Draza trying to rally in. Your next big waves of fights coming in here, Joe. Yeah, BZ up top, able to take down one. Got a lot of damage in. Simp yeah. and uh, BZ able to take down three. They're going to find that time. And we talked about Simp. He's on six in a row. Cruise missile. He's been nuts. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Like he's been nuts. I mean, this rival, the MCW, just his kinds of weapons. As, uh, yeah, he is looking comfortable. That's going to be all four dead for Boston. Breach a 20-point lead for Atlanta phases. We rotate on over towards P5. Three in a row for him currently. Make that four. He tallies on another one. Next hard point going to pop. Waiting deep, I believe, for ages was a beast. Just waiting to kind of get that pinch with the squad. He's going to fall, though. You get a pretty close fall, though, if you're a face and a chance to jump onto this. And what you heard there, right? I, I mean, we kind of talked about this. He's not rocking covert sneakers. You know, some of the things that the players are talking about and respawn, especially on land, uh, with the crowd noise, with the white noise that you have pumping in your headphones, can you run sort of lightweight or something else besides covert sneakers to give you that advantage looks like draza didn't have it that life able to take down too so just a couple of options that these players could go with yeah yeah i think it'll be a, a different on land for sure for that but search or destroy especially as the playmaking ability is going to be nuts but making 17 now for Sep as he continues to snap still an arrow lead though about 20 points capsule though just waiting for the opening takes one Second too much. It was three there through four phase. As our next hard point pops, we'll see the fight for. From bottom right, it'll be Boston Breach trying to get the attack. Top side, Atlanta phase control. A flurry of kills each side, but Snoopy with two. Yeah, I mean, the through first rotation, very controlled by Atlanta phase, but only, what, 20, 30 point lead. And that's just due to that P3. That is going to be your money hill where you get that full 60 seconds for Boston Breach. That's exactly what it was. I mean, it didn't sniff it, right? If you were phase, you were spawning out so deep and. That'll be the difference maker. Can they do a better time, better job this time through if you're phase? Yeah, slaying wise, I mean, draws almost double positive. You have Simp who is almost, what, 20 and 10. Speaking of phase, let's listen to their comms in this first match. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna come up here, hold on. Yeah, yeah, you can go I'm sitting in the corner. Just show that heading for me. Heard you, I will, I will. I'm stunned, Zach. I'm in the corner. 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 I
I need back left. Bus, bus cross, I think. Bus left, 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 bus. Yo, I'm trying to ask the one. I'm trying to help bus up. Bus up, still. One more, one more. That's it. Bottom of the bed. Oh, oh, the AC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One shot for Charlie. Hey, let's see if we can get time, MC. Missing Snoopy. Yep, he is for Charlie. Bus, 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 bus. I don't know. Hard kills, hard kills. Two there, two there, two there. I'm one shot. I'm one shot. Cross. I'm one shot. Top red, top red. Good time. Top red. Absolute top red. No, take a right flank down. Take a right round. Yeah, one shot, one shot. Deep shot now. This is really good time. I'm gonna go up straight. Yeah, AC, bro. Yeah, AC, Austin weak. AC? AC, Austin, yep. They kill it on AC. AC, AC. Nice. I'm climbing AC. We can hit this one more time. Hey, I'm in red with you. I'm gonna show you this. Down to hit this shit. He's top right, top right. He's looking for you, Abe. He's top right. He went like their side. Oh, that's him. That's good time. That's good time. He's outside window. That's not window. That's not time. Nice. Good. Good. You're cap. Hey, this is easy. Hey, you guys can play left. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. It all them soon. Top three. Dead. Nice. This guy's just running you. Yeah. I'm top three. Need him. 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 All right, sure, sure. I'm gonna do it. Here we go. It's another P3, and we'll see what Boss and Breach is able to do. Can they rally back into it just like we saw them do in our first set of rotations? So far, so good. The kills are through, and that big lead you built out of your phase again might disappear. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of heard at the, the start of that listen, and what do we want to do here? Do we want to take a right route, maybe rotate, even with 45 seconds left on P2? But it'd be easy. He goes over towards red, and you just heard the comms. This is good time. Let's go for it. They played for the 20, 25 seconds. Are they going to find a break here? That's going to be the question. Behind Sims double, not going to happen. Priest up. He's gonna stay alive. There's one more player lurking here. And through these P3s, I mean, you have a tied game and a potential lead for Boston Breach coming in right now. Lead change through. Boston Breach out in front, another solid hole. But the big thing, I don't know if you're gonna see another one, right? Like, you're, you're gonna have to get this win somewhere else. And that is where they've gotten 120, basically, of their 180 seconds. Like, they have been so, so strong there. But to our next point, we go. And a nice clearance for Boston Breach. Looking to chain a couple together. This could be big time. A right, huge rotation shields there by Boston. You had to set up if you were phased, but three get a spawn out. Well, now all four. Uh -oh. Priest with the, yeah, you know, that's going to happen. The team Nate comes in, but Selium actually misses that top jump. So maybe that slows things down, but that's going to be two dead. Two out of the position and Simp with the rival nine. Able to take down Slasher's capsule. The last player here for Boston. The reinforcements coming on through. Yeah, let's get to a position where I don't have to shoot through the railings because we know how fun that can be. But unfortunately, he gets dropped. Next up to bat, Slasher. Just, he's in the corner. He's in the corner. Oh, he's able to snap. Actually gets the kill, but just enough time there for another phase player to come on through. 10 points separating these teams. 10 points remaining on the hard point. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think you did a good enough job there if you are Boston Breach. You've won rotation now over towards P5, and you made it messy there. Yeah. So we have a tie game, now a one-point lead for Atlanta phase. But Boston Breach very much in this is here comes the break attempt. We know this face team and pass hard points. They they love to, to go for these hard point breaks. Rotate a little bit late. Seems like they're gonna try and do it again here. Selium with two. But now is it two versus two around this hill? Slasher with the SMG in hand, but it's all down to him. Maybe buying enough time for his teammates to get there, at least for Atlanta Phase, not to get on that hill. So a great job by Slasher playing his life. Yeah, no, it, it's kept it messy. You're absolutely right. No one getting any kind of time. And now the teammates get there. They pick up the kills. You're spawning all over if you're Atlanta Phase. And three people around the point now for Boston Breach is once again, they start to build up this lead. 15 point advantage. It's a time when the point starting to dwindle. Phase will break through, but it's late in the point. It's only going to lead to, what, 13 seconds or so in scrap time. But you've got one and four, and Draza and Selium on the other side of the map. They're going to have a pinch developing here. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Through all, all of this, well, you had a couple of players double positive. I mean, Sim's still 29 and 19, but the slaying has really started to even out on the Boston Breach side. They have picked it up. They started to win those rotations, and, well, it has been paying off and on the scoreboard. Slasher now towards this top three side. Able to take down Selium on the bridge, and that's going to open up the middle alley for Capsule to take down that player on the hill. Snoopy, Prisa connecting on two. They can win here. 30 more seconds needed inside of the point. Can they lock it down here? Streak coming in. You see that number three, Sim not moving. I was wondering. And that's going to be the streak. It will connect with one. Sipping of easy. Clearing out the point for now. It's a easy able to get in. But there's still one more player there. It's Snoopy with three big ones in a massive moment. 
with just 15 left on this hard point. And now it's a foot race. Look, you already have Brice in position back Cafe. All of FaZe through this dumpster alley trying to get inside Cafe. Draza with that close spawn gonna give them a four versus four. And well, he's gonna take down Slasher. So FaZe, they use this streak, they get them off the hill, and now they win this rotation. So we set up towards Cafe. FaZe can win it here. BZ gonna spawn out behind one, able to take down yeah, Capsule. Yeah, but tough. Breach, they have to go. <laughs> get that free pinch kind as he spawns out. But yeah, this is it. Do or die time. The time for the break. 2.30, 2.38, Boston looking to collapse. Who will win these crucial gunfights? It's Snoopy with another big pick. It's a BZ though, with an answer. So far, back and forth we go. What a lovely double there. Maybe a triple for a BZ. Too easy for a BZ. As he cuts them down and maybe wins the map here in the final moments. Yeah, good luck getting over this dumpster. I mean, it is just so difficult phase. They clutch on up. The first map of the CDL this year. It was a tight one. It was, it was. Breach it a heck of a job fighting right back into it, but Simp Street to get them off of that P1 allows him to win that rotation over that second hill. Yeah, I mean, I think throughout the rest of it, it's sort of, you know, you heard the conversation, you talked a little bit about the listening with phase, like, do we take this time or do we try to set up early for three? And I, I think they're thinking, you know what, how, what a good break team they've been, right? They Forever. break one of those, this game might break wide open. Yeah, you're not wrong. It just didn't happen. It didn't. You're right. It didn't. But uh, it, that's, I think that's what they're thinking. We break one, we're good. But. And that's always a conversation. That's why sometimes with them, you look at the scoreboards and, you know, they have all the... They're out slaying. Uh, but why is it a 12-point game? It's just sort of that risk versus reward. That, that reminded me, you know, I, I've watched a decent amount of the phase scrims and, like, there's been a BZ. You know, when you're first learning the new game and that role early, he's been so flustered. He has been, like the comedic value for me so far at the beginning of this year. He's a hilarious person when he's going through it. He'll be in the absolute blender, but then at the end of the game, he'll pop some crazy triple that'll win them the game. I've seen that before already this year, just making a nutty play individually at the end of it. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at some highlights from that map number one, but yeah, Simp leading the way, he finishes with 33. This was the biggest lead for Atlanta FaZe over towards this area, but on this second rotation, I think Breach the slain got going a little bit more. They made some of these hills a, a bit more messy for FaZe. And, and then, I mean, the key is they win this P3 rotation. I think it was Priesta who was able to hold on to that hill time, put the pressure on Atlanta FaZe. Snoopy started popping off. We saw him with a couple of three pieces. And then winning this rotation here at P4. I thought his late triple was going to do it for him. Maybe. Yeah, there was a chance. So I think we, in some ways, know what to expect from FaZe this year. And just because, you know, They've been performing at a certain level for year after year, but more on the Boston Breach side. Just thoughts through the first map. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I think you uh, competed with one of the, well, we saw that coaches poll, right? An S tier team. We, we know what this face team is. I, yeah. I would be happy with, with map number one. I'm, maybe if you got going a little bit better, slaying wise on that first rotation, this looks a little bit different. Because I think, you know, as good as FaZe, their core has been in search and destroy. I think. We're expecting some teams to look for wins to be getting upsets in search and destroy. I, I thought maybe they were going to handle the respawns a bit more, but that was that was down to the absolute wire. But a banger to start us off. You see the fist bumps out in celebration for the phase side. A little, little bit of frustration here, but, you know, just kind of hand in the hair like, ah, we let one slip away. All the roster changes, sort of these yacht squads, and at the end of the day, you have a very competitive game. That is what the CDL has been these last few years, no yeah. matter what. It just comes down to the wire. A couple of key moments that uh, Atlanta FaZe were able to win. Again, I think just that streak getting them off P1 was was massive. And even to coordinate to make sure there's no trophies, we know, even in this title. I was happy to see a streak kill someone. Yeah, yeah even in this title, the crews uh, gets, I mean, I don't know, pac manned by a trophy system. Uh, so that, that happens. And, you know, they dealt with the nades, got the trophies off, allows it to connect. Trophies are all we need to defend our entire world, Joe. They're so strong. Yeah. Like, if we're ever worried about attack from, like, an alien race or a meteor shower, like, just literally just toss trophies around, bro. They like, gobble it all up. What do we have to worry about? <laughs> we're good to go. Yeah. That's, that's all we They're need. They're so strong. I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but now we get ready for... That's why you only have two of them, okay? That's why we only have two of them, okay? <laughs> we get ready for Search and Destroy. Uh, now, talk to me a little bit about Karachi. Uh, and, and let's just talk a little bit about how Search is going to change this year. Because if you're a viewer that's maybe just watched last year, um, or a couple years where Deddy was, like, sort of Deddy, but not Deddy, like... You're going to have dead silence and movement. It, it opens up some options, right? 
No, it does. Uh, obviously, you know, he opens up those flank routes, allows you to make a lot of crazy clutch plays. Um, but for search in this game, you know, players are allowing one smoke per team, uh, yeah. and your push is really based off of that. You can either use it as a fake, right, as we've seen in the past, but from the search that I have watched and played, that smoke can be everything on some of these maps, especially offensively. Now, Karachi, I think it's a little bit different. You can use both bomb sites, uh, but it's all about that bridge bomb site to me. Uh, if that bomb gets planted, well, that's before we uh, G8 snaking. But even with that, there are some incredible, powerful positions on that side of the map. Yeah, there's been some some good moves with uh, the change in some of the GAs and rule sets as we've moved. Hey, shout out to Sledge trying to figure it out. No, right? that, that's that's amazing. I mean, once I think Crowder was told me that they were they were looking into it very early. I was like. Awesome, because we don't usually hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like midway through the year. We're like, nice, man, we're working on it. So that was awesome. And they're, they're trying to, to find a way to make it a bit better for our players. And I think it, it's much more entertaining to watch when not everyone's just break dancing on every single heady in the game, Joe. Yeah, no, no we're I don't know what about, that was. but I mean, that's just your favorite move. That's your yeah. go-to. But we're going to talk about uh, Atlanta phase and the stats that, you know, we know that they have uh, from last year. Uh, 34 and 18. Uh, they won major two. Uh, you know, they did the roster move and draws, and, you know, they finished third, um, you know, at champs. And there was just sort of a question mark. Are we going to have a roster move? You know, we even talked with Crowder. If last year was a more traditional COD with Slasher, does it work out better, right? You know, that was one of the, the things when you have, like, the Covert Sneakers slash Deddy. Like that team on Cold War were probably disgusting. Probably. Yeah. Um, but I just think with the, the free agents that were out there, it was one of those... We, we got to go for it. Yeah, I, I just think it's one of those things where when you have – what's like a what's a move that I'll think of? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe like that back in the day when it was what, Rise with Zinni and they end up putting Slasher on the team was still That's a very crazy. good That's crazy. You're bringing this up. You know, uh, well, Zinni's like, watching like, this. Even like, if your piss. team is so good and you have a player like Slasher, when you have like that mm -hmm. core – you're trying to build that like dynasty team where you're just going to smoke people. Uh, You'll even if like it's not maybe a necessary change, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you could use a better want. example there, not use Zinni. You could talk about New York this year, right? I mean, we, go why did they go to Zinni? I don't know. Messed up, man. I don't know what's wrong with our first day back. Like, come on. My bad, Zinni. I love you, buddy. You know I do. Yeah, we'll buy you some chicken parm. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, oh, he'll need a couple of them though. Yeah, though he will. He will. Yeah. This guy loves it. But uh, yeah, I mean, even New York with Priesta, the whole Sib situation. I would never would have done it, but they went for it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just a, it's a tough decision. All right, well, we're getting ready to go. Game number two about to be underway. To search and destroy we go. Uh, excited to see it because I just haven't – a lot of the scrims aren't being streamed. I haven't watched a lot of it from uh, the professional team. So here we go. See how people are going to surprise us. But as you're saying, a lot of pressure around the utility and the smoke play, which I, I always like. It's like the CS guy, me, Grinder, back in the day. I like, you know, nice little smoke, make plays through it. You're a big smoke guy. I mean, when you talk about just your war zone plays. Uh, I really am. I'm the utility for our team. You're the utility guy, no doubt about it. Going for those reses, the clutch plays. You thought I was going to run that perk where you, like, get knocked and the smoke automatically comes out? I didn't, but... Maybe you should. Yeah. For Karachi Search, a chance for Boston to bounce back and tie this up at 1-1. Faze looking to take further control in this series. Slasher, looking for a little bit of revenge, even though I don't think you've used it that way. I'm going to sell it that way. <laughs> Map two, here we go. You can see early pressure over towards this B site. The BZ throws that stun. C capsule is there. He's not going to check under him. And this is one of those plays last year probably wouldn't be possible with what we were just talking about. But now everything kind of slows down with a BZ in this spot, maybe just trying to see. Is anyone going to peek over here towards top green? Coming to my bedroom. He's ready. He's redecorating in there. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Gunfight, some shots going down towards the attempted bomb plan from FaZe. Slasher, though, the pick with the nade. That's going to take Draza out of it. The question is, do they know Capsule's in this spot still, mid alley? I mean, Abizi hit the stun. You saw him trying to nade it. it it's just a question of wh where is Capsule? They still haven't checked this. There is that smoke going down. We forget to equip Deddy on uh, on this search and destroy class. We may have. He is kind of chunking around a little bit. He is here. Boom, 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 boom. The big old footsteps as he tries to get through. But now the plant is going to go down. Can he get through in time? Looks for it. Able to take it. Nice trigger discipline there for a sec just to get recentered. Make sure he took the fight. Selium, though, his chance in one versus three. Takes down one. 30 seconds on the clock, and the stun is going to hit. 
This is the problem though, when that B bomb is down, there are so many different angles. You check it for top coop, you check it for top three, middle alley, that this Boston team has to work with. Nobody on the bomb quite yet. He's gonna find one, now has to finesse his life. Oh! Able to snap on a slasher, there's enough time though. Capsule finds the kill. Oh my. Second kill in the round, a defuse is coming through for slasher. Yeah, I thought. I thought slasher about got put six feet under there. The snap, one more bullet. The snap looked insane, like onto his forehead. But yeah, you know, felt the pressure to check bomb. Once he has to check, then it gets a little bit chaotic. But a nice slow round there. I mean, you just saw, kind of saw what FaZe was doing, trying to make them think maybe somebody peak. You had a BZ in that position. But the whole round, I mean, it, was, it felt like they were trying to find capsule, and they never could. He just got through, able to take down Simp after he plants. Yeah, it sounds like an elephant stop around. He first took a step, you're like, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's risking it. I, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't do that, but maybe he knows some things I He's just like, tr <laughs> that little trot. A BC, though, with the early pick with the rival. Trouser right behind him. Big control here from Atlanta phase in the four versus two. Bomb starting to wrap out to the other side for Breach, but you've still got Semp lurking on that side of it. Slasher. Clean shots there to bring them a little bit tighter in this, but might come down to the one on one on the other side of the no, map. I, I think it will, right? Just if Freeston wins this, he can try to go for that plant, and then maybe you set up Slasher for the clutch. He's just kind of sneaking around. And this may work out, or will it? Of course, it's Simp on the other side, and it feels like his game sense sometimes is a little bit too much. Well, I, I just couldn't tell if he spotted him or not. The time looked weird. I think he did. Yeah, yeah, he had to have, but the gunfight is there from Priest. Uh, maybe you got the game sense if you're Simp, but. Big P, Priest uh, able to do it as well. Now, 2v2, 25 to go. He's trying to work it back towards his teammate and slashers, kind of cutting right up the gut between both phase players. Yep. Here we go. Draws has gotten through, though. Draws has Easy. gotten through under slasher, finds both of them. Puts Atlanta phase on the board. And yeah, slasher just waiting on that bridge, just trying to get them to think, maybe to you know, over-rotate, forget about him, put all the pressure on phase to hunt down Priest and that bomb. Nice job by Priesta, you give them a chance, but draws up with the positioning. Tied up 1-1. One, one. Draws is tossing one. Ran the trophy early. Likely the tactical as well, so that trophy almost cleared out of it. Abizi, the first blood. Lord, another one for him. That's back-to-back -back rounds of the first blood. Yeah, I mean, just the same stun. You know, Capsule playing for that position. Uh, last time through, didn't get challenged. This time, once that's done, can they just go for it, able to take him down. You can already see Bomb being planted. As soon as Capsule gets taken down, you know you have numbers on this side of the map. Well, you said the first round, like, they couldn't find him. Like, that was the big problem. This okay. time, you're able to deal with it. I mean, if you do not have numbers, and this Bomb is planted at B, Ooh, good luck working on, on an ace. ace! take almost finds number four in the ace. Almost, just not quite enough to get all four. Priest is trying to get his health back and maybe make a challenge, but there's so little time for him to work with. Shots coming in from every angle, and it's another round there for FaZe. But yeah, a little bit different than that first round. They get the info quick, they get the first blood, they get the bomb down within seconds. Yeah, and I didn't hit what they did in round number one, right? They got a BZ up top. They played it very slow, just forcing Boston maybe to try to peek something. It's just they didn't have to because Capsule's positioned. Um, so yeah, that time they pick up the pace, they challenge that middle alley player. Let's see a breach off the do in their second offensive push. Looks like they're gonna be met with aggression. So I thought for a second. You were sending it if you were phased, but everything stops here for a moment. Slasher, though, as he looks for the angle, is Draza that's already got it. 4v3 for FaZe. That's three straight first bloods and five in a row for Draza. Yeah, those early nades that go down. And as soon as you see that trophy icon, that means that they can cross the bridge before you. They beat you there. So you're hoping a stun or a nade connects to give you the info that they can work over towards this position that Draza's in. But it doesn't happen because the trophy's down. So you have to clear it. He does not. And now that gives them the man advantage. Yeah, there's just disgusting headies everywhere. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, imagine if they were snaking it. I mean, good luck. Yeah, yeah, it's like unkillable in some of these spots, but now in the 2v4, you try to make something work. Capsule does get a kill. Abizi, I think, almost able to pick him up, but not quite. 
Yeah, Boston though still have to work the bomb plant. Not gonna happen. Sims gonna take down Capsule. Now all down to Snoopy. He knows Abizi's in this area somewhere. But it's taken taken down. But yeah, that just draws it crossing over the bridge, finding the first blood. So what, three rounds in a row now for Atlanta Phase, led by those first bloods. That's what they've been owning. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep this first blood streak going. Draws is five in a row, comes to an end, but now Beezy's starting to take over. I mean, it's the Draws and a Beezy show. They're 12 and five. Sip and Sully and two and four. <laughs> it's just been the kills flowing for the top half of that scoreboard on the phase side. Well, let's see if they can find another first blood. That's really what matters here in the opening moments. So you saw what they were going for, going for a quick mid-alley push for a BZ. You have one player watching over him when that player crosses over towards top plat and Priesta. But the stun connects, he's gonna back on down. Not gonna hit him, he's just gonna play his life. But you can see Boston, they wanna deal with a BZ right now. They know he's stuck and they find that kill. Capsule also able to find draws and he is just trying to play his life. Be a thorn in the side of Atlanta phase. Hey guys. Just hanging out. They're all grouping up now for the three man hit. <laughs> Got our cool CDL, uh, you know, uniforms on. Yeah. Simp. Shot's a little windy there, trying to maybe get one, but maybe thinking about the next gunfight in that situation and does not matter. Breach, get it done. And yeah, they're able to isolate a BZ early in that round. And that's one of those spots, like, you know, snaking early in the game. Like, a BZ can probably just be really annoying for that position. Oh, that without, P1 area? Yeah, yeah. But without, without being able to do that, though, it's a little, little, little trickier. Yeah, it is. Wait, it's, I mean, it's, we saw on the hard point, like, that was like almost an unkillable spot. Get a trophy down. Good luck. Uh, but yeah, he's just got to got a prone there and hang out. Wait for his teammates to help him. The early nades going over towards that B zone. C sir. B site. Draws are going to go for that cross, but then you can see the stun connects that time. And guess who is there? Capsule with that first play. Things are blowing up. Capsule still up, though. Six and three, but we'll get dropped. The headshots through for Abizi. Picks him off the bomb plant. And they'll have to recoup that to get things going yet again, but complete control. Now over to phase. Still take numbers behind Simp's kill. So now Snoopy and Slasher will see what they can do, take their time, get an info here for a moment. This phase just kind of backed it up and regrouped. Yeah, I think right now phase is just thinking, let's let them plan B. If we have to retake, we will. Uh, let's not get caught out. We have the numbers advantage. Just clearing out everything. Simp was able to spot one. That is the dead player, but Cell's just making sure bomb not being planted. Now he's just extra dead. Yep. Oh, as he mantle up, he gets smoked, but his nade's able to hit. So you get a kill through at the same time. Slasher now, one versus two. The man's had some clutches in his career. Does he have another one in the bag now? But he doesn't have bomb, doesn't have much time. Good luck. Yeah, might be able to find this first kill. Just kidding. Oh, Cell oh, checks oh, it. Slasher on non HP, gonna get out with his life, but he has no time to plant this bomb. Celium says hello again, old friend, and he's gonna take him down. Yeah, that gunfight looked like it was uh, Amos just going all over the place as he was like fading away off the back block. I mean, I think for both players there, Cell, I mean, he was just sort of hot. Oh, oh, bunny yeah. hopping up yeah, top, yeah, half yeah. his bullets go into a, that brick wall. Both players shot an entire clip, basically nobody drops it. <laughs> They're professionals, I swear. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, Cell's just thinking, don't die, don't die, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, just... I was going to say, just good job backing down for yeah. that, making sure he didn't, yeah. Because it looked like he had a freebie at first, then it got a little interesting and just dipped out. All you got to do is waste time in that spot. This spot from Capsule, just kind of prone behind, uh, what, is, what is that, that burnt car over there, but it's not going to be a B hit, he's going to reposition. Pressure now over towards A, that's going to be Snoopy and Priesta. Really Snoopy, first line of defense, just watching that cross towards that middle alley. Hello, yeah, you heard that. A horror movie. Yeah, right? <laughs> Those creaky doors. Okay, even like the footsteps there on the wood. I felt like we were actually in like a. Some kind of horror Somebody needs to check the foundation of this place. Yeah. <laughs> it is not safe. 3v2, though. Numbers for Boston Breach. Stellium. Simp. Pressure on them to make the play. You still have bomb in the hands of Simp. Under 30 to go. 
Got to start to make some decisions here. Sign's going to take the fight. The wall bang is oh. through. So, shocking that he's able to do that one. Well, he didn't think he had that kill. He did not think he had that. But the last bullet was able to connect and Simp, he has crossed. Well, he's trying to all the way towards B. Does he think he has time? It doesn't look like it. And well, he's going to go for the challenge. But Bo Boston... It would have been close. What was like 10 left it. on the clock somehow? Yeah, it was like, I, maybe he would have had it, but probably would have been spotted. Or, or he was thinking maybe he catches them trying to scramble across right. type thing. Yeah. Sometimes you see yeah, his ADS in that situation. <laughs> Catch them both trying to move, but not going to be the case. Nice shot from Breach. Get a couple of round W's. Capsule making plays. Nine and four. Three in a row. Ooh, does he spot him? I'm not sure he does. Now he will. Now he will go for the challenge to rival nine. Takes him down. Oh, it's a busy's turn, but Cap is going off. 11 and four, five in a row for Big Cap. Yeah, he had a little bit of help there. His one teammate gets dropped, but that first gunfight, I mean, that was just a thing of beauty. Smoke off the one side and hit it, kid. Takes the fight now. The plant will go through as well. Another 3v2 round. Favor to Boston Breach. Chance to tie this up at 4-4. Slasher gives him even more numbers. All on Simp yet again. As Breach's takeover in this map two continues. A back and forth affair just like we saw in that <laughs> map one. Yeah, good luck. He's just trying to wiggle a little bit. Yeah. That, hit the cross. There's just not a lot you can do, especially with the rival there. But uh, I think you saw... What, Kenny and uh, what, Dash have been calling the Rival 9 the rate gun with, with their coach JP just because at times, man, feels like you just oh, get evaporated. So, oh, some of the clips I've seen, it's like it looks better than like any AR long range. Like, you'll see, like, it takes you like five bullets across map and someone just gets zapped. I'm like, what just happened? It's a rate gun. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to put it. So, cruise now for Capsule. They want to use it here. Kind of give up the B cross. Maybe use your nades. He's going to use it right away. They find a BZ. He was the one player. Maybe could have made this a messy round. There is all the info. Not going to connect. But with that first blood, you take it all day long. Capsule in his bag. Six in a row. Try to work up for position here now. To maybe find another pick. I think the key here could be if Selium's able to just oh God, there's find one or, or two. Hello! Here, I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just he gets that. the info, hears it, peeks, and simple get dropped. Capsule seven in a row. And with Bomb, bomb not planted, I mean, Selium's position, pretty much useless, right? Just don't overpeak him. You know there's probably a player top three. Don't let him catch you off guard. Capsule's just been hanging out. Snoopy on the pinch, doesn't see anyone on the bomb. Just sell, Ooh, just nice no catch. time, and yeah, nice little nade through the window. Selium's legs gone. So what, it was four, that's four rounds in a row four for Boston straight. Breach. Again, the first bloods, I think, were the biggest difference. Yeah, it was uh, three in a row, I think, for FaZe, and then, well, three first bloods in a row, and that's just been shifted completely. So nice adjustments out of Boston Breach. But Capsule leading the way, 13 for the young man. I think I think all teams still is learning search to some degree, trying different hits, trying different setups, and you know it's always a little meta game within each search and destroy. A BZ well finally slows down caps a little bit of a slide and a snap back, hits the shots on the fadeaway, but the info is gained, the rotation is in, and the kill is through for Boston Breach. So even though you get the first blood, you get two right back of your breach and you've got numbers. There's in so many of these 3v2 scenarios and this is where breach have done a good job for the most part of not ever allowing this to somehow flip the script and it's in a 2v1. Allow them to get two freebies. They've kept control when they've had numbers. No, and I think uh, what you're seeing from Capsule, right? You saw him pop the Deddy. You know, he's running those lightweight boots so he can be a little bit quicker on breakoffs and maybe, you know, get those quicker timings that we have yeah. seen in the past. So that's what you're seeing, just sort of that meta game. So you get to the spot, you don't really have to move past that to at least get that first one sometimes. Exactly. Back. So bomb, bomb down now. Have to try and get it back. And Draz is going to make this a 2v2. I was worried that what I just said they haven't let happen is about to. Almost does, but we're into a one versus one now. Simp, Snoopy, 
Sips able to get it done and get the big kill. And he has not had a great map. He's been, I, I feel he lasts alive a bunch of times with like not really a chance to clutch this time. In a one versus one, he's able to get the win, put them to a big round 11. Well, especially defensively, if you're the one player over, you know, over towards A, over towards Cafe, like, and you're left out to dry with a rival nine, good luck getting to oh, top yeah. three. You're just yeah, sort yeah. of stuck out there. A lot so. of times when we hopped to his POV, it was, it was like the situation was like, yeah, you're screwed, okay? Yeah, he's been last alive a lot. That time, though, gets it done. Now, big round 11. Boston to try and tie up this series. Oh, the Caps stun hit. The stun hit. Does he see there? him? His foot there. Yeah, he does. That's a what, size 12, size 13? It Sip gets the shots in as well. I'm already being planted behind the Surprise! Blood. Abizi with number 12. And Abizi slowed down big time, kind of in the mid game, but taken over here in the final round. Each team just been thrown. The Haymakers and who's gonna answer back? Simp and Abizi, all the kills in this round 11. Snoopy, the last one up. Nice shots from the rival at range, but now a 1v4. People on every side flicks it back, but another player there. Phase get the round 11 win. It was a heroic rally. Four straight from Boston Breach to get us to that point, but a Simp 1v1 clutch and Abizi take it over early in round 11 as a phase win. Yeah, I look at that round 10. You have the 3v2. Uh, if you are Boston Breach, you have the numbers. Uh, you, you just well, can't put I, it away. I, I, I kind of cursed them there, didn't I? Because I said they did a good job not letting that happen in the 3v2s. And yeah. they, they did, yeah. That's my bad. Yeah, you got to remember your caster now. You can curse things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how this works. But here's a look at they this. They really one. had to do a good job to that point, man. You're not wrong. But here you can see, what, a BZ12. Uh, Selium, 2200 damage, but only six kills. On the other side, it was all about, uh, what, big cap. Slasher with the damage in the map as well. So, yeah, a great back and forth, but you kind of saw just the different pace, the different well, looks. I think it's hard. To, I think it's hard to see sometimes, like, when we're watching one of the subs' POVs and they're, like, hitting something. And, like, I, I know you just... The time to kill is fast in Call of Duty, but a lot of times, like, those ARs are getting shots in, like, on the crossbar. not, like, really seeing it, but you just see the damage numbers there. Like, they were backing people up or maybe doing damage to give them that one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe not getting all the kills, but, yeah, there was definitely important damage through for the ARs. Yeah. And, uh, but I think you saw right at the end of that round 11, just the first blood capsule, I think, got stunned. They had a trophy down, but if it blows up midair. The big shoes, did. Yeah, and the size, I don't know, 12, 12 13s? I wear 13s. They look like 13s, Joe. That's going to do it for the Search and Destroy phase of 2-0. We are headed to a quick break. When we get back, control continues on. I hope we're having fun with day one of the CDL for 2024. It has been a blast thus far. Joe and I excited to be back. The action is going to continue. We've got matches all night long.
upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Don't miss out on all the action at the first Call of Duty League Major, hosted by the Boston Breach, this January 25th to the 28th at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway in Boston. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to callofdutyleague.com for more info. Hello and welcome back. We know you missed us terribly over that five minute break, but we have returned and we are excited for a map three. So far, we've had two bangers and two maps that Arguably, Boston kind of threw away. Like, they had a big chance to win. Uh, you had numbers to maybe win the search and destroy in round 10. You look at the hard point. Good chance to win that one as well. Now we go into map three. I think you're thinking of your Boston. Awesome. We played them tough. It is Atlanta phase, but a little fluster probably, right? I, I mean, yeah, it's so early in the season. I yeah, hope yeah. they're not fluster, but yeah, I mean, some early mistakes. that they, they had that round 10, that 3v2. I mean, Simp going massive, you know, in that round to win it out for them. Uh, but yeah, Lena Face, you know, map number one, just able to take it with their slang. Simp going big. A few of those maps, but a BZ encapsulated a bit of a SD duel. Now over to control. An invasion is, you know, I, I think one of your more standard control maps where you're going to be a little bit more defensive favored. This B site for the offensive team is going to be the easier one to take, but over towards A is where it gets dicey. The reason being, you see where number seven spawns? If you get. You know, spawned all the way towards that top left side of your mini-map. It just takes a while to get over there. Yeah, I mean, whereas if you're moving towards B, it's about a 15-foot hike. You're there pretty quickly. It's like, it's like I moved to Columbus. I'm now about that far from Joe's house, so I can bother you. I'm right down the street, buddy. That is exactly <laughs> <laughs> About to be the second tick through. Uh, working on a flank, I believe, is going to be Simp. We'll try to see if he can open things up, turn some heads for a moment, and he has done just that. Just keeps shooting Tex, and he does just that. Takes down Slasher, they get back onto the point. I think Snoopy's still there looming and waiting. Simp has done his best to distract as many players as he can as they're swarming around him, and they continue to be put into the dirt. That's going to be four in a row for him, looking for number five. It'll be Slasher up for his next at-bat. Knocked out of the fences again. Yeah, looking for number six in the cruise. And, I mean, you have just wasted so much time. And that, while that happened, you had Cell making sure they didn't go over towards A. And BZ now working the middle of the map. And look, you the way you had Slasher Capsule clearing out their palace, you're just worried someone is pinching again. Two ticks done over towards B. That, but that's that simple. Play, yeah, I didn't think it was going to turn to that. I, mean, no. I saw it on the minimap. I mean, it was, I saw it developing, but I did not think it was going to turn to wasting a minute of time. And he's right back to it. Nearly three in a row, 10 seconds left to go, and they've got to get on the point, but you've got a presence here. Draza and one angle, Selium looking down the lane. All player, players here ready to go, 2.4, it stopped on the clock. There's a BZ trying to cut them down. Will you come out of this if you're breach? One guy left. Sorry, I lied. Two guys left. <laughs> Close one comes in quickly, <laughs> and they get back onto it. Yeah, if you're new to the CDL, the way you control works, you have two zones. 30 lives on each side, and when you're the attacking team, as soon as you capture a point, you get a minute of extra time. So, you know, there's a mixture of a little bit of TDM in here. You're you're playing some of the objective. It's like all when, of our game modes combined. Yeah, way. when you're on the objective, <laughs> that, that clock pauses. So, uh, a lot of ways to win. Well, multiple ways to win. And but yes, a lot, you know, some of the most of the time, a lot of the maps are defensive favorite. But normally, as the year goes on, teams get better and better at winning offenses. Yeah, typically that's, that's how it's been, and sometimes we have a new map that comes into rotation later. It's like a little bit of offensive heavy. It's like that wild card that <laughs> sort of throws things from mix midway through the year. But focus here to the final 20 seconds. Due to Sim's flank, he did not have a whole lot of time left to go here. Slasher tries to pounce. Draza says not this time. Not enough time to get towards it. Looking like... So that will be a defensive fold here for Atlanta Faze to start things off. But I'll say this, like, it was really that one play, <laughs> the difference between that maybe being a really good offensive look from Boston. Well, it's tough because the first point's not that hard. We didn't really get to see them take many cracks in the difficult part of the offense. Yeah, I mean, slaying wise I, even with that six spree, I think it was a four or five kill difference for Atlanta Faze. Uh, I mean, Simp has just been map one. He was making so many of search, search didn't really have his moments on that map. Yeah, just round 10, right? Yeah. He clutched to make sure they got to a round 11, uh, but it's been... I haven't watched their search. I've just watched their respawns. That's where he's been a freak. So I, I, I imagine search, they'll be good, but... 
Something seems to be working for him with this particular title. Yeah, you can already see there's some one player over towards B. Maybe the rest towards, uh, you know, towards Cafe. Thinking about going over towards the A zone. Throwing a different look off that first break. But with that one-on-one -on -one win, more capsule. Maybe now I'm gonna send someone over towards B again. And we've seen this in the past where you put someone on the easier zone, just pause the clock, the other three go and work A, and that's exactly what's gonna happen here. That's usually when it's like a defensive heavier map, but if you can get that harder point first, you win. Typically, right? Like, if you can get that harder point, you set yourself up maybe for a W. Not every time, but if you can do it, props to you. They got a chance to do it here. Second bit of progress through. That'll be the clearance. So you get one ticket B, two through on A. So what are you thinking here now of your phase? You got a minute left to go. Is it a bit of a gamble to try and finish A? I mean... First, maybe, finish it first, I mean. Yeah, I mean, maybe a bit now, just do the time. You already have three takes. That's how much Boston got in round number one. So maybe you just get done with B, use that extra time to work the, the final take. But now they're kind of put into a, a deep trap. You see Slasher's position all the way back bridge. He's just watching these crosses through this middle courtyard over towards a street. You already have Snoopy inside of ice cream. At least that's what I called it. How many years ago was it now? 13 or something? You were back in college just being a demon, dude. I, I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a 30-year-old dad now. But back then, I was shooting straight, let me tell you. <laughs> 15 to go now. On to the point. Behind a flurry of kills there for Atlanta Bays. They're able to get out of the trap and keep everybody up. Assuming they can get B here, they're going to have what? I mean, similar time to what Breach had. You're going to have about a minute to go, but... You only need one tick. So, like, one break, you're probably good. Can you get that one break? Because I think taking, I mean, already having a two-round advantage, or, sorry, a two-tick um, advantage is great, but if you can get the round, I mean, you likely guarantee the map if they can get this done. You know, I'll say what's a little bit different about the A zone is that there is some room to finesse, right? A lot of the, the tough points in control. Oh, like, once you get in there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. You can't, it's tough to get naded. You play your life a little bit. Oh, it's just can you get in there? Yeah, it's just, that's, that's the question. <laughs> yeah. Can you cross to it? As we just saw Selium tries, he does get taken down. Abizi now on the pinch, but it looks like they are going to pick it up. Uh, they sure do. And he's like, okay, uh, I'll try again later. <laughs> just going to wait for his teammate. Oh. 30 seconds left. Dodging nades, dodging doors. Dodgeball. All right, the reposition works out. Snoopy opts to get aggressive. I'll make him pay. Now you've got numbers towards the point. They're all going to be spawning out. Who's going to pick that up? It's going to be Sip to pick it up. He's going to be in a big position. Can Sip slow them down as they try to get through? The answer is going to be no. You get here to stop the clock for a moment. But not for long. Abizi finally gets shut down. Selly is still here finessing. And this is what you were talking about. There are spots to finesse around this point. He's just getting tagged up. Tries to chow out. Looks like they are going to hold. And that is all Slasher to me. There was a three on two. You got a two player hit at the front of that point and Slasher takes them both down. Selium goes for that trade. You know, you saw sort of a BZ watching that cross trying to help out Sel. They deal with him, but Slasher goes massive. And then they're right at the end with Sel finessing. He was able to pick up that cross. So huge end of the round plays by the vet. Yeah, it's just tough. Like, I mean, you got what? You got three down, but you just don't spawn out very far either if you're the defense. Like, and Simp had a chance, I think, on the cross to maybe cut them off. If he gets one or two, it goes differently, but he's on 20 as well, though, so he's been doing his thing. Well, we heard the listen in early on with FaZe in the hard point. It's Breach that are up against it. They're currently 0-2 in the series, trying to battle back here in the control to listen in we go with Boston Breach. He's low, low before. One cap, cap. cap. Hey, 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 Dark, 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 dark. We don't take, we don't take. How much have us? Any help, any help. Top yeah. top 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 dark, dark, dark. I stunned dark, I didn't hit him. Don't be don't take. Yo, top before. Yeah, I'm any close, any close on the left. Yes, yes. I think it was DVD, 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 one shot done. Nice, I'll give him a before, 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 he's on me. Yeah, I'll see him left on you. It's top before still, top before, two, 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 two. I got I won, that was you, that was you. I don't know what me. I have yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah,
I'm hiding in rocks, guys. I'm hiding in rocks. Yo, people for me. Behind him, behind him. People for me. I'm on shot. Behind him, behind him. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Back ass, back ass, really weak. Alright, I'm hiding in rocks. He's one shot, Eric, on you. I don't see him. I don't see anything, bro. Just got to just got He was back on me. He was back. Fire truck, fire truck. One team there's fire. One team there's fire. He was before you. Fire truck, busy. Fire truck, busy. Shout out, Kathy. Alright, there's two other players. I'm pulling, I'm pulling busy. Alright, I'm pulling Jaws. Fire truck, fire truck. Sims deep right on spawn. He's with the fire truck, busy. One shot, really big fire truck. I'm, I'm blocking Gatron. I'm blocking Gatron. Just stay up, play kills. Yeah, yeah. Push out the right here. Yeah, yeah, Sims right. Sims right. Sims out. Sims out. Spawn, inner spawn. Watch out. Top American. Top American. Might have jumped down. I'm not sure. I spawned deep, press some bridge. Okay, okay, okay. He might not know. I did, I did, I did not, I did not. Where is he? Where is he? He's he's like, he was, he was an American. I think he's like on the sandbag or something. He was like trying to find me. He's on me close. Fuck. He's close on the wall. He's front wall. Front wall. Dumpster corner. 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 Well, it looked like they were in a pretty good spot, and then they started dealing with Simp kind of spawn killing them a bit towards their base, and that kind of, I don't know, broke the flow for a bit. But now we're on to the point. Let's see what they can do with it. I mean, Capsule did a bridge spawn and then finds two. Uh, you do not see that spawn very often, if at all. But, you know, maybe with Simp finessing his life, you had, I think it was someone was with him over towards that P2 area, just gives them a chance. And now you have, I mean, full control if you are Boston, selling him the last player alive. Capsule. Not able to take him down, but Snoopy is there for the trade. And now Snoopy just has to play his life. His teammates are watching the cross. So, uh, you know, you hear a lot on Twitter about the crosses. And this is an example of that. A busy trying to get there, but the name connects. The team shot is in. And now maybe an offensive round win for Boston. You got one across. Yeah, two across. Both get shut down. Selian drops. Draza drops. A big, massive round victory there for Boston. But I know you were a little, uh, a little frustrated with some of the spawns. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, yeah, I, I, you know, with that spawn, you could just see Simp had no idea when he was playing his life. Just really what they had, what they wanted. You have Simp sort of, you know, they call it top American, top palace. That top castle balcony, when you spawn all the way sort of top left of that mini map, you have a decision. Do you just leave him, go up to B Street, but you're taking so much time? Or do you back up, try to play for and clear him? Which is not easy to do. So that just puts the offensive team in a, in a tough spot. But yeah, Capsule spawning out just gives him the angle, gives them that A Street. I was wondering if it's like the direction Sip was looking or like what? Yeah, I mean, he, you saw him sort of finessing his Yeah, thing. yeah, just like he kind of had a line of sight on that spawn. Like, Sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah. Frieza, little win there. Behind the Renetti. Now let's clear the bit of time off this or just keep surging forward as Habizi's waiting there at the tank. Phase with a very similar kind of break. They sent like two or three over towards A. If you have one player at A just playing their life, that's Draza. He gets to the point inside a bus stop. Already one tick done at A. You have one player at B. That's going to be Sim watching Dark, able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. So Boston just needs to pick a point here. Where do we want to reset? They're able to get them off A. So now they just have to regroup, go for map control. Yeah, sometimes we've seen teams just try to defend both points and you end up losing both because you're just spread a little thin. You know how crazy the comms get in those moments. Like they're insane when you're trying, you're having like two little 2v2s where you're trying to comm to each other and everyone's yelling. Sometimes you just gotta pick a point, but be about to be done. Get wrapped here in a second. As Draza will get the rest of the time now. I mean, it's kind of similar to what we saw for Breach. You got a good amount of time this time to work with. Two minutes to go. How do you develop this push? Can you push it to a round five? Well, they take down Slasher. He was playing that A three. That's gonna allow them to push on up. And now you're just waiting for the pinch. Abizi gets taken down. Now it is Sim's turn. You have two players on it. You have two players on it. Now they have to deal with him. Just wasting their time looking at that cross. Snoopy going off this map though. Showing some individual prowess on the map. And with those trades, they're able to save A. I mean, the theme of this series though has sort of been like, Breaching control late. Phase bring it back and win the map. You're up 2 1. You got a chance to close it. This is where Breach need to show they can close. Yeah, you're down five lives. You take your time if you are phase. Still 90 seconds in the round. You save so much of the clock just due to the, that opening break. Now they're winning those ones, and they might just play a little TDM here. Well, now they're going to have to figure out something else because that's going to be all okay. four dead for Atlanta face. Well, you think usually when you play a little TDM makes the kills easier, right? Because they're not worried about the objective. Instead, they all just lost their gunfights and uh, get shut down. So need to come alive if you're a Boston Breach. Show you can close. That's a good sequence. You bring it back. You bring the lives back in a massive fashion. Now just trailing by two. 
You reset the entire push now for Atlanta phase, and Snoopy continues to be hot. 28 and 15, five in a row for him. The young gun has been something special. You reset the push again. Yeah, you can see the way that Boston plays this, right? A little bit differently, and maybe they, they play this bridge area, so those spawns don't happen that we saw in the previous round with Capsule. You block the spawn, you still then force him to hunt you down, just waste so much time. 90 seconds was on the clock, and now we're down to 25. This 9 versus 8, make it 7v8. In phase, they gotta go. The first person up is gonna be Semp. Just feeling the pressure to get moving, but yeah. You're gonna have to win fights and get through. One gunfight went, able to do it. There's two. Sip it to BC, find the openers, but you've traded efficiently enough if you are breached. Seven now to go. Time dwindling. The gunfight's now onto the point. Trying to soar in, can't find the opening. Last one there will be Selium, and he will drop. Breach, stay alive in the series. And they needed that moment. They had a couple maps in their hands. They let slip away. This time they close it out, and they'll take us to another hard point. And I love it. I'm glad we don't have a 3 0 first yeah. match of the uh, year, right? Let's get it. 100%. I want, I want more maps. I think, you know, I was asking you kind of like if you're flustered, if you're breached. I think if anything, you know, I kind of joked it's like preseason time. If you're breached right now, like, I think just extending this series, like, win or, lo win or lose, like, getting a lot of reps in this type of arena against FaZe, like, it's helpful as a team, I think, at this point in the game. And I think one thing you love to see is see number five, Snoopy. We've heard so, so many great things about this kid. 30 and 17, leading the way damage-wise on his team. On the other side, Simp, especially in respawns, continues to have a great series. But it's 62. I mean, look at his engagements compared to the rest. I mean, 33 and 26. I mean... That is insane. Yeah, I mean, if one thing, I know it deaths hurt you a little more in, in response. So you got to watch that number sometimes. Like Maybe you can be a little too aggressive, but 6,200 damage, 33, 26, you'll take that, I think. And this was that two-piece I was talking about for Slasher in that round, too. I think really saved their defensive round. Just they would have got on the bus stop and probably got that last take done. Uh, but he gets the two kills, keeps it done, and then Capsule, there's that spawn for the offensive round. And you can see Sip and Abiz are like, oh, that. That sucked. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what happens, and boom, over to A goes Boston Breach. Yeah, I, I think maybe you're right. You talk about sort of the positioning and setup that you have from Breach, maybe to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, we're still early in the title. Gonna, gonna have some moments like that, that's for sure. We've seen worse when it comes to spawns. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you saw right there, just, you know, there were some winnable offenses, and Boston was able to do it on this control map. On invasion, just what the, uh, you know, you saw what the defense was trying to do. But, you know, one of those tight situations, we wanted to see B Boston clutch on up, and that's exactly what you got. Yeah, I'd want to curse him again, but I just want to see it. Like, you're, you're in control. You want an offensive round. You need to shut this one down, because I, 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 you got to be, after you're down 0-2 hole, they had to have been chatting, like, guys, we should have won both those maps. We should be 2-0 up. What should they be doing there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's fired playing. up. Yeah, he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sure. But now this will be an interesting one. Terminal hard point. I wasn't sure how much of a terminal we were going to see today. Like that and sub base were kind of the question marks for me. Sub base, sort of your, you know, I think you heard nameless talk about it on the desk, the, the pre show. Ton of engagements, almost like a bocage. Uh, if you watch CDL in Vanguard gear, it is just mixy with the close spawns. Yeah, it's just hard to, you know, one of those hard points that you don't get a lot of time at a hard point. Yeah, There's not really a time. money hill per like your typical one. Yeah, it's just fun to play it's just gunfights 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 um terminal it's interesting like you know when you see when you see the size of the map sometimes like you probably like i don't know you're thinking like maybe more of a sub heavy map or like when you just look at like the mini map breakdown you don't realize how open like the left side lane is and it just becomes all these ars fighting for security control We'll see how it plays out here, but it didn't really play out in my head because, listen, we had these maps back in the day, right? Like, mm -hmm. we've had them before. We didn't have Hardpoint back then. So when we first heard the maps announced, I tried to like, kind of visualize in my head like how I thought they'd play. Right. And Terminal, I just didn't really think would play like it ended up playing. And I'm no. like, all right, well, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see maybe four ARs on each team, yeah. maybe maybe a sub. But it, this is all about crosses on this map. And what I mean by that is, like, we're going to go to Burger Town, and it is just a – if you can stay alive in the objective, it's just your teammates looking over you, right, watching that cross to you, putting damage in, and you just kind of hanging out, hoping there's a trophy down and the nades don't hit you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, four of your hills are going to be on one side of the map. So it's an interesting one. Yeah, no, it really is. And it's just, it's not that typical, like, sometimes where you need to, like, make a lot of movement to help your teammates in spots. It's just 
L triggering like all over the place. You just get these lanes, you get these cutoffs, you're able to do something naughty for the squad. But now into our next map we go. Boston Breach do enough to get us to this map four. We'll see if they can tie it up and get us to a final search and destroy. But first they have to win terminal and it's going to be tough to do it. Um, just when you think about the talent of phase, if they get you set up in one of those traps, how good they can be at punishing. But you have fought them tooth and nail on every map thus far if you are Breach. I've been so impressed with what I've seen from Breach, especially from the young guys. Capsule his moments in yep. Search and Destroy. Snoopy his moments you saw there in the control. We wondered if they were going to step it up, how they were going to play along the two, you know, longtime gods and players like Priest and Slasher. And so far, I've been impressed, y'all. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think if you're trying to see someone step up, we saw, I mean, they won the map, but Freesta is known for always playing FaZe very, very well. It didn't have the best stat line last game. Maybe uh, you want to see something a little bit more for him, from him in this game number four. Priest is one of those guys that they have stopped worrying about stat lines. Yeah, no, he just... I just stopped worrying about it. Win. I know that guy's doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> no, At no this point, I just know he's doing something right. Everyone loves playing with him for a reason. But the early engagements, we'll see which way they go. As Snoopy's trying to shoot off some toes, get the wall bangs in, but behind the counter is Draza. Work at the angle. Draza continues to work it. You see the way Faze is playing out this, bars. right? You see the way they're playing this. They're backing up left. They are just making sure no spawns happen. A BZ. Just make sure there's no pinches through the plane, because P2, we're going to go towards pretty much right where a BZ is, and you can earn a ton of time. So they are just hanging out. They are happy to give this up. Maybe you get them off, but right now they are just trying to control this security area for 80% uh, of the map. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, literally, their, their setup will be good more often than not. But now next hard point pops, and we'll see what they can turn this into. Because you just have to, like, if you're trying to break here, it's just like you just got to go through layer after layer, it feels like. Just uh, I've watched trends where they have set this, sent one push. And then they're just like, let's just set up outside inside a plane. Yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah. just sort of, it, it's impossible. It can be very difficult to break this hill. I, I think the most I've seen is like a mid hall push, but you can already see they deal with the back security push, and now it is going to be all through this sort of jet bridge area. But now, good luck. Now we take three steps and we change where we're all triggering. <laughs> <laughs> you take a tiny little shift and you've got the next angle unlock and this one probably even easier to hold is yeah you're funneling through that one lane but a perfect hold so far 20 seconds left to go and yeah, i think you've got a good example of exactly what we've been talking about on this particular map they did not get another shot at it oh now you have to respond here if you are boston breach just you know you spawn on that bottom side of the map due to this side do the way the vetoes play out so phase is happy to play it now a chance for Breach. You have Snoopy, download the plane. You have Priesta watching top eskies. And I think the key here is if Priesta, I'd say if he's able to win a gunfight, maybe puts pressure over towards the burger side of the map, over towards P4. But yeah, good luck with this. Capsule <laughs> Slasher with the team shots. And now look at this. Priesta, he's all the way back security over towards Burger, but he's going to have a lot of phase to deal with. Can he stay alive and get some help? Oh, uh, he gets two out of three, but they'll spawn up right there. So. Yeah, I mean, it worked out nice with the timing of the three down that he's able to get that position, maybe a chance to make kind of a heroic play, but you'll have another crack at it to fight for position in four phase, but it's Capsule racking up the time. Capsule Airlines, he'll get all the objective time. And now our next hard point ready to pop, phase in position. It's been a game of hold so far. Now as you go to P4 inside a burger, this is a game of get rid of their trophies. We have to get them out of the time. The phase gets security control of easy. There's just so much room back here to finesse. It's just way more room and space than you would think. But it just goes so deep and that just allows them to play their life. And while you this saw, is like security? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, way, it's way bigger than you think it is. You're just a waste of time. Well, so it's weird because you like... Up. It, it, you have so many areas to reposition, so many spots to get headies, but you also are kind of dealing with the whole map cross. Like, you have to, like, try to get eyes in a lot, but yeah, you could just be anywhere with an angle on anything. And Cell probably really likes that spot. That, that seems like a very Cell area of the map, huh, Joe? I mean, Jaws has just been hanging out. Just making some burgers in the back. You stop it right now. I'm now on a burger. a 30-point lead here for Atlanta phase. 
Just a back and forth battle. Now we're gonna head over to the bookstore. Slasher has been here for about 30 seconds, just chilling in that corner, waiting for that rotation to pop. Drives in a BZ, gonna find some kills. The last player alive is going to be Snoopy. And with that win, can he find a second? No, so he still has some time for phase, but look at this, the spawns come in for Breach. Yeah, they have the closer spawn for sure, but like you just get to that far left side lane to at least pick up one, start to thin the numbers, and now you sort of get a natural pinch that develops based on the spawns for phase. But this is massive time needed for Breach. So far, so good. And this is one that maybe at times could be a little little bit scrappier, but they do a good job answering back after the initial phase break. No doubt about it. I, I think you're happy about this because you, you may have the lead and then you're going to control the security area for now. Yeah. For P1 and P2. So phase the way they're thinking is, all right, we don't have these spawns. We have to get as much time as possible here at P1. Nice little nade to back him up of your cell. And then the peak on the opposite side to fry him. Boston feeling good for a moment, but now phases turn to shift this map on its head. Everything blowing up around Priest to finally able to get the trophy out, maybe for a bit of cover, but no, I think a trophy ate the trophy. Oh, it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he got hit by felt like everything when he was yeah. trying around the corner. Stun, 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 damage from grenade, stun. All right, Faye's gonna go for this now. You saw the pinch here from Abizi. Well, they're able to take down two, and maybe now this is a chance to take the security area. Snoopy now has to play his life, he's gonna get some help from Capsule. The watch is cross, but yeah, the stun connects, and now Cap's gotta play his life inside of Dreams. Next hard point, popping on Capsule, playing his life, winning fights. Nade may be good. Well, if it wasn't the shots where the wall thing threw onto Cells, he tries to finesse back from the nade. Capsule doing everything he can at the next point. Looking to maybe get another lead change. We hop to the plane for a moment. This fight's going down there. Maybe Simp trying to push through on the flank as he won't find the opening. Boston just trying to tie this game up again. Just drops a tickle in his opponent, so a flurry of headshots. But everyone gets fried. Then right after that, Priesta with two through on the feed. A rotation upcoming now as we head out and see the beautiful sun in the sky. Yeah, no, we're towards this P3. This is where Boston was perfect. They are just frying right now. Yeah, I, I, Look I, at the team. This isn't getting kills. Yeah. You have 10 in a row for this Boston Breach team. They hold P2 from the front side. They deal with the pressure towards security, and then they spawn them out near this plate, find all of the kills, and, and they are inside of the hill. So nice work from Boston Breach. Can they hang on, though? There was still time left at P2. And off a spawn. Here comes Atlanta Phase. Yeah, that was nearly perfect. There from Boston Breach, nearly just a thing of perfection to chain together those two points. But I think you kind of nailed it. There's still just a little bit of time. What, like five to ten seconds? That's in, in yeah, I mean, the we're difference. having rotation fights at 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, we're not used to this. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's wild how much hard points varied over the years. <laughs> how, how our spawn systems have worked, how our maps have been. But yeah, definitely some heavy fights in the early rotation. We already see an example of it. 30 seconds left, and well, you have Big Cap all the way in the back. Look at the burgers and the patties are cooking there. They look delicious, Joe. <laughs> I, I pull them straight out of the game, right into my mouth. They're actually going to get some of the scrap time. Snoopy, he's on three in a row, finding the scrap time. So now this is down to a three on four. Fades, they're trying to deal with the trophies, throw all your grenades. Maybe you can find the player on the hill. Here come the trades. In the bathroom, it's Capsule looking to peek. What a busy find, he finds two. He's had so many kills around the objective. It's a lurk roll, I mean, sneaky there if you're Snoopy. There's one player jumps over the top of his head. Now the next hit coming in, you can see just all the white arrows, similar to the setup we saw from FaZe earlier in the game, just watching that cross. Lead change has gone over to Boston. Street coming in. That's unfortunately Selian that's going to explode. And this is why I wasn't sure how much terminal we're, you're, you're going to see here. Just a very unique style of hardpoint on this map. In Breach, they can win it here. They can set us to a map number five. A phase, they have to go again. They have to try and cross. Throwing all of their nades. Have to deal with the players in position. Snoopy, he orders a 
three-piece combo deals with Atlanta FaZe and Boston Breach. That should do it. I don't that think anybody's close. To game five. Nobody's close. Map five, here we go. Snoopy with the monster play at the end. All smiles for Boston Breach. First two maps, I mean, you are in a 4 0 phase right now. You had a chance to win the first two, but that's back-to-back -back maps they put on the board. And yeah, I think you saw it. Like, that's that's going to be, uh, I, I don't know. That map's going to be interesting the when it comes to the veto the process. That's the cheese right there. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the stinky cheese. <laughs> I'm thinking, can we move one of those to, like, bottom S keys, please? Yeah, right, right. So <laughs> we're not entirely, like, on the left side of the map. Yes, that's yeah. what I vote for. Probably, probably would make a little bit more sense. But that's but. okay. That's all right. I mean, they they picked to the play it. That's just uh, the way the veto system goes. You see, I mean, nothing crazy stat line wise. Just probably 150 trophies thrown on both sides. Yeah. No, there are more trophies thrown than kills in the map. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what maybe you know it's a weird one. Trophies just tossed everywhere. Explosions, cheeseburgers, and monster plays there from Snoopy. But that'll do it for the map four. We're going to a quick break, and then we've got our fifth and final map coming up. It's the first match here. Ah, it's a game five, baby. season game five. We love to see it. Boston, FaZe, battling. I don't know what Snoopy was doing on screen there. He was showing off some sort of new Boston dance to break. Then we're back, baby.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Here we go, it's day one, match one, time for a big map five, and I know we are thrilled, because I think last year we had 90% of our series were 3-0, so it's a good start, Joe. Yeah, great start, yeah, great start to the year, yeah, going to invade, search to destroy. Both of these teams, though, I mean, just so back and forth, very close games through our first four maps. It absolutely has been. Breach has been in control at times, let them slip away. These last two, though, has not been the case. They've shut it down, they've gotten it to a map five. Now, where do we go in search and destroy? Our first search was, I mean, he was back and forth as hell. I mean, what, you had three straight for FaZe, four straight for Boston Breach. Um, a lot of focus on the search, into, or sorry, on the first Bloods, then maybe some late round throws we saw deep into the game. The clutch from Simp and ultimately FaZe kind of dominated in that round 11, but what will we see here on Invasion? Definitely a different beast than we saw there on Karachi. Yeah, I mean, really what you're looking at for the defensive team, you're watching that cross over towards B. I feel like the B side is sort of what, you know, what the offensive teams are, are trying to attack. Get that bomb down. It looks like a very slow start here for Breach on attack. Just kind of play in for info, seeing what's available. But you have no one over towards B. You have one player watching that dark cross, and it's really just Selium on that back B heady. Just trying to play in that area. Well, it could be a little scary early, too, without like a trophy. You want to get to some normal spots, suddenly Nage just hit you in the face. This plays a little bit different to low start coming into play. And FaZe, they might just be happy retaking B, right? Just sort of winning for those crosses, using those nades to give themselves numbers. But Simpu's been a monster in respawns. Maybe trying to find the first blood. There goes that cross to B, smoke going down. That's gonna let sell you now. All right, it's a B hit. Plank going down now. Still four versus four. No one threw the first blood. Bobby the smoke is. just tries to fly right on through. He does it, slides through one. Looking for three now is Sim. Got a chance to make the play. Chance potentially for the ace. There's three. Bye oh! bye! Simp with the ace in the 1v2 clutch to shut it down in round one. Ugh. My man did it all. He threw a smoke down and <laughs> ran through that. He's just running, running and gunning. Simp with the unreal ace here in map five, round one. I, I thought I thought he was going to finesse that last fight. He just mantled up the tank. Well, you saw Priest is thinking the same thing. Yeah. Priest is like, there's no way this guy re rechallows this. He's going to finesse. Uh, that's Wait, why no Priest starts running. He, he's like, all right, I'm going to slide behind the tank. Let's do a little a dance-off, a little battle. But oh Sim just pops up. And I says, think he took Bye. like a bullet. He was still like 117. So it's like he's probably thinking the same thing. I'm just going to catch him. Woo. Okay. Hell of a round one. And it was Sim with what? That 1v1 clutch in the round 10. This time the clutches start early. Arrivals banging. Well, I said maybe they're going to give him the retake B. No, he's just going to... Throw a smoke down and run through it. So they're gonna smoke off Priesta. Priesta's like, I am out of here. Yeah, well, all that happens. Snoopy did take down two in round number one, so he had a great game four. Had some clutch flights there. Towards the end of the game, able to take down one, but he gets straighted out by a BZ. Last round, thinking about what angle he's going to take. Watch his teammates drop. Oh, just enough there to find the kill. Boston Breach. There's the round. Wait, wasn't, was Priesta the last alive in that crazy Abizi clutch last year too? The one in Hotel? <laughs> I think the poor guy was. <laughs> it was a similar thing too, where he like tried to push and got caught. I swear to God, I have to go watch it, but. Oh. Sorry, it just popped in my head. You know how my brain is. I know. <laughs> I was like, maybe I <laughs> Round three now. Bomb back over to Breach. Priest to your carrier. And they're working on this pinch up, this push up towards A. A BZ will be the close first point of contact. He's got Sip there to work with. Yeah, everything is really relied and started with those smokes on both ends. Sim now just in a reposition, has the help of a BZ looking over him. Draza just watching at a street. 
That's Cell, who is pretty much in a one-on-one -on -one now with Slasher. Well, Farisa finds the first blood. Simp tried to get aggressive, tried to find a time. It was very close. If he finds the first kill, may turn into a double. You're just playing behind your numbers right now if you're Breach. Abizi trying to watch both, and he chows out. And well, there's the entire team. Is that everyone gets a bullet into him, it looked like. And look at this. They're not going to go for the plant. They're going to try to rotate this. They're going to try to rotate this. Selvo, they almost line up for him. Oh, my God. The first slid right under his oh, bullets. Man. And yeah, you're just seeing everybody there. Now, if he held there for a little bit and didn't get aggressive, yeah, that might be like three freebies. But it's not Draza. One versus three. Ooh, just out with his life. Doesn't have, two. Any, doesn't have any nades, though. That's going to be tough now to get Snoopy oh, off of that Yep, position. sure is. <laughs> sure is. If you have an aid, maybe, but a couple of chances for Atlanta Face to clutch that out, but does not happen. Boston Breach used their numbers beautifully after that first blood. I mean, that's a hell of an answer from Breach after you get just montaged on in round one from Simp. Well, that could be the comms. It's all right. Well, I mean. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I mean, listen, if he doesn't make that play, we are... We're, we're good to go. I think you gotta, it, that's a fear sometimes with younger players, and you have a couple, but I think that's where the slasher and priest effect maybe comes in, sort of like, whatever, dude. I've been dunked on many times in my career. <laughs> we're good. Especially by that guy. <laughs> we're fine. Just focus yep, up and you'll get you used to it. <laughs> on to the next round. So they take the 2 1 edge now, just Boston. Tanks just blowing up everywhere. A BZ. Back to it. I mean, he had that flurry of first bloods uh, in the map two. Not a lot of openers since, but in this round, able to do it. Give the 4v3 early over to phase. Yeah, I think obviously the map is just... There's a lot more openings on Karachi. We saw Cap and Abizi with the rival nines. Invasion a little bit different. It's sort of about watching those crosses, getting that info, using the teamwork and the smokes to work a bomb site. Snoopy, he's hearing the doors inside a cafe go down. There's the smoke. Now, can he find a timing? No, Abizi watching the B Street and watching that flank. So, heads up play from him. Oh, man, some other titles he's probably Yeah, that's there. 150 HP right yep, there. Yep, that sure is. Just survives to get away from that. They'll get the plant behind it as well. Now it's all on preset. One verse four. Good luck. But the round really to a BC and his early kills. Pinch is there trying to use every hit he available, but too much work to do. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, and if you're a Draza or a Priest or, or you're at home, you know, you're the A, a uh, street def defensive player. I mean, that's what I've been playing with, like, uh, Octane and Havoc, some wagers. Yeah. That is a... Uh, that's a tough spot. They put you in the tough spot, dude? No, that's it's just boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's, boring. it's a boring spot. <laughs> They're a street, you put a couple of shots in, and they just go away. Uh, just behind that, yeah. Oh, man. So, like, Joe, go hide over there. We'll handle this. No, I just, I volunteered to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do anything, uh, anything too important. Perfect, perfect. I got eight, guys. Yeah. <laughs> First blood comes in. You know, Capsules, the Wino is very different maps. Obviously, you know, it's tougher to get uh, up close and personal, maybe make crazy plays with an SMG like we saw on Karachi. But Capsule, you know, he was the hero of the map too. He was insane for them. So you still like to get him maybe out of the early going if you were Atlanta phase. Oh, I mean, if he's in Capsule, yeah, there's still going to be the two to, to find yeah, those yeah, early it's, fights. You take some pressure, I think, off your team just getting one of them out. this kind of map I mean it's just sort of a question of we have to commit sooner or later the defense is gonna play their different angles just try to find info that's really what this is about and you reposition if you're the defense so you're just relying on cell to find one he's gonna spot that in that position a little bit of an off angle finds the first gives them those numbers time dwindling tag stands <laughs> love it Draza trying to chase one down. But he's able to get away. He gets away, but he's gonna be the only man out. Priest the last alive again. Knew he had one behind the hump, but not able to snap back in time. And Sep already on the bomb. So after the two straight from Breach, similar, similar to what we saw in our first search, back and forth we go. Two in a row for phase. Did you hear that? Is there a dog on the map? Bark. Ruff, 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 ruff. A barking, dude. Someone go help that dog. That's just me. Oh. I, I just bark sometimes, Joe. No, I'm pretty sure there's a dog barking as he was diffusing that bomb. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time I heard that. 
<laughs> Three in a row now for Draza. As they'll send it quickly. The one player here on that B Street for now will be Priesta, and he's going to have a, a lot of company here soon. Can he get one? Can he, sorry, Slasher. Can he get one? Can he get out with his life? You can see the early info, right? They were watching that cross, and you already have Snoopy in a position. Flash this right door. is quick. I like that, though. Just to, like, back up, play his life for a sec. Maybe, you know, not get a little over greedy and get burned. Yeah. Bad thing for them, though, is Slasher gets taken down. You're hoping he takes down one, but... That smoke push comes on through, and then Simp with another. Okay, well now it doesn't look as good, man. Yeah, Priestin was going for that angle on that jump up, but now it's a two versus two. Bomb not planted yet. It is still down. They're trying to hunt down Snoopy, and they do. So a one versus two for Capsule. Right, Slasher was alive. I thought it was like a great play, but <laughs> things ended up falling apart behind Simp's two kills. Capsule now. Yeah, that that heady is absurd. It's been absurd for a long time. Yep. Good luck. Is that a stun? He's just worried about that second player. I mean, he still just has to take his time. They have to plan if you are phase. Where's the flame coming through? Is it happening? Well, now you get across the bomb and you got Selium at the tank, so things haven't gotten any easier. Nice, ooh, some nice shots, but still so hard to win that fight. Yeah, you saw those. So he bad. gets uh, two or three headshots in, though. Yeah, it's just a question of are those wall bangs, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? true, true, true. But yeah, nice little snap there from Cap. But you had the first blood if you were Boston. But I think it was Simp. Gets those two kills on the bomb site. That second on to Priest that he was ready for the peak. Takes him down. Now a two round advantage for Atlanta Face. Well, we'll pick up bomb and now we'll get started. Similar setup to. What we see in the past defenses from FaZe. And it's just some of these slow starts here from Breach. Just playing for Ample, maybe a little over aggression you'll see out of FaZe. But they're they're usually taking well, times 30, 40 seconds off the clock, really before the push starts to develop. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the defensive teams, if they see two to three players cross towards B, what we saw last round Snoopy do, uh, a defensive player may try to get aggressive. Work DVD, work through cafe, and maybe that's just it. Let's show two or three cross. Someone just play the different lanes. Try to find the first blood, but FaZe is giving them nothing early. And they are happy to retake B. So that, that's just been FaZe's play call all game long. There is that smoke on through. And Simp is trying to do it again. He has somehow found himself in this position. And Selium is able to make it a three versus three, now a two on two. Can Simp make another huge play for Atlanta FaZe? This has a psychopath. Tries to, not able to do it. Now, trying to get down to a one versus one is Cell. Just can't, oh, oh he gets it. That's it, that's the round. Snoopy not gonna get there in time. Oh my goodness, almost guns and catches Cellium. But Capsule gets caught sliding to the bomb. I, Cell almost just got fried. He did, almost, he almost just fried. got fried. Imagine you get that clutch kill for the round and he just gets incinerated. Let's see us again. You see that cross, and then on that yeah, way he back. slid like slid like too far. And yeah. what's he get hit down to? Forty-seven. Yeah, another bullet or two, but still, he got zapped. You just saw he instantly. I'm out. I'm out. All right, one more round now needed for phase. Just those messy rounds they continue to come out on top of. Sip. There's the first blood. Four v three now. And he's had a hell of a series. I mean, the game two, maybe not great, but this game five, he's been brilliant. The response, he has been disgusting. And he has a magical ace to go with that, but you still got to win the series. Still a chance for Breach to bring it back here. Now that we get down to a three versus three. They're bringing it back. There's a nade from Priesta. Simps out of the round. Cursed him again. That's my bad. Now two versus two. Sell him gonna catch Snoopy. So all about the info. You have one player over towards B. That's Capsule just watching that mid cross. Just sort of a mind game. Who's gonna over peak? Who's gonna over chal? You see the way Selim is played. He's watching that full flank, trying to see where the A A player is. Oh, this timing. Oh, this timing. Oh, that made me sick. Just watching how it's playing out on the mini map. Capsule the kill. 
Cell, bomb in hand, still a chance. Well, and he's worried about Capsule on the flank. That's gonna allow Priesta an opportunity to work yeah. out the street, check the bomb. Boston Breach still alive. It's just a tough spot. It's like, do you get lucky on the timing for the kill? Do you just try to stick yeah, the bomb? Yeah, Drogi just holds it. it. It's probably the, the yeah, round over. Yeah. He probably finds that kill for free. Yeah, I mean, they're just on the other side of that alleyway for throughout all of that. And, whew, yeah, I think another half second he holds it. He's probably good. Can Breach win four in a row? And win this series, and what a what a crazy one it would be to kick us off for this season if they're able to do it. Very fast push in towards this uh this cafe. Yeah, capsule again. You can hear him stomping around, so just opting for the field upgrade of Daddy when he wants to use it. Just a question of when do they want to go? They know there's probably a player mid tank, maybe another one mid courtyard. It's kind of been the default setup here for phase. So we're gonna open up and there goes that smoke down. And again, everything relies on these smokes on some of these maps for the offensive teams. And who is it? Simp with the first blood. Snoopy now trying to make the play. Some damage in, stun over the top. Able to stun one, but it's Simp. Again, another massive kill. Four versus two now. He's up to 11 and five. Monstrous series. Now a chance to shut it down. Are they going to give him another ace? Is it two aces? Oh, God. It nearly was. He wraps right. That's two aces in this game five. But still, a heroic effort there from Sip in Atlanta phase to get the win. But Breach, you played him tough yeah. throughout. That was a hell of a series to kick us off. The back and forth affair through basically every map. Nobody getting blown out. A testament to the talent in this league. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I think for, for, for phase, I mean, that game five search is the search and destroy you kind of want to play. Just feels like they had an answer for everything. They were playing their style. Simp obviously goes off. But the respawns are still sort of the, the phase where you're getting a lot of slays, you're playing well, and then just sort of those close moments sometimes aren't going your way. Yeah, no, I, I, I think like Draza was a fantastic pickup and uh, he's brilliant for this team. But are all questions answered that we think there's going to be winning everything? Absolutely not. They have a lot to prove and. You know, they won the series, but you saw the vulnerability still can be there at times. So we'll check out some of the highlights before we get ready to hear our desk thoughts and get on with the night because we still have two more fantastic series ahead of us. Yeah, I think for Boston, I mean, just had what? Capsule with some big maps. You had Snoopy, you know, kind of the question marks were around sort of the young guns and one of your tougher matchups on the year. I think they showed out. I think they played very, very well. Uh, this is going to be a team to watch out for. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's so early. But, like, from what we've seen, hell yeah. I had a blast. I, yeah, I, I want to see what they're going to be able to do. Um, terminal, that map's still something. But <laughs> yeah. no, really, uh, really excited to see this Breach team. I mean, I, we were just wondering what the ceiling was kind of with Snoopy and Capsule with regards to the talent and the individual plays they were going to be able to make. And you just got to see that on full display at times. I think, yeah, you're a little frustrated. You didn't win the map one or two. Didn't take home the series. You had such ample opportunity to do so. They're going to be really frustrated over one or probably one one round. I think the round 10 specifically in the map two and probably the end of the map one is what's really going to be frustrating for you. But listen, if you're going to make mistakes and you're going to lose close maps, do it now. Great time to do it. Yeah, you're going to have a couple of maps and then we're going to our matches. Then we're going to have that break, right? Sort of, sort of regroup, fix what you have to fix. But I, I thought it was a great first series for both of these squads. Yeah, it was. And we'll, we'll get to see how they improve as we continue on. But it's the first series. We get to a game five. It was a fantastic time. Curious to hear the thoughts from our hosts and analysis. Guys, take it away. Analyst to analyst, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to have them back in the same room. <laughs> I got our team here. What's up, everybody? It's fucking, we got Alley Cat Nameless here. And um, speaking of incorrect word use, the chat kept saying aim assessment. Alley, <laughs> let's answer that question, though. Looking at the players, how would you assess their aims from <laughs> this first match? I, I was in, like, aim assist. <laughs> I think it's great. I think 
what we don't talk about or haven't talked about yet so far in this game is that aim assist is actually a lot less sticky. So it's going to be a cause a little bit more of a skill gap when it comes to this game specifically. But wow, we got a game five our first match. We did. We did. And I started on a negative road. I want to reroute us into the positive world. Who had the best shot in this lobby name was because Selium has not lost a step. That's true. Wait, that beam on the bomb that at the very insane. end there and that 1v2 was absolutely nuts. If we're going to highlight one player, though, I'm going to highlight Simp. The guy was making plays the entire time, had a couple big aces and big clutch kills in that map one where he turns around and finds capsule for that rotation, yeah. won them the hard point. So if I had to highlight one guy, it'd be, it'd be the go. Right? Well, you like Simp, and I went ahead and talked to production and asked, can you get me his play one more time? Here it is, Nameless, the ace from round one as Simp sets the tone here in a crucial game five. I mean, this was just straight up gunny. First of all, he did the same play throughout this map, which we'll break down here in a little bit, I'm sure, with that smoke. He gets inside, finds a kill at Coop, another one at Bomb, and then he knows the last two players are going to be tank, right? So he finds one here, slides, gets that challenge with the advantage, jumps up on the tank, and before Priesta can even react, he is dead with the double headshots by Simp. But man, Chris, just the play to pop that smoke through the cut, make it a little bit mixy because it's a really hard retake, is impressive, right? And Boston was not ready for that. They did that a couple times at B. Ali, you said something that I never expected to hear last year. You said, I might just be a FaZe fan. What happened? How'd they win you over? I, I just love the way they played in this series. Uh, specifically, Simp is disgusting. As Ant was saying, I, you're a Simp for Simp. Get it? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Uh, but I think the biggest turn for me was just the awareness. And also, I'm just excited to see Atlanta FaZe playing Search and Destroy with Dead Silence. I feel like we saw a lot of moments in Game 2 and Game 5 where typically Sound EQ might have played spoiler in a couple of flanks, but not this time. Not this time. It's fun to watch the minimap in the new game, and it's fun to take a look at the new rosters right now. We got our monster spotlight with the first winner here of the new season. He is known for his confidence in and out of game, and we got him live. Draza, how's the new team feel, brother? That feels great. Obviously, the first match always going to be a tough one, but we, you know, iced up, and you know, Chris is a beast, and he four-piece first round. Everything was going our way. Going our way. Draza, congrats on the first win of the season. I kind of want to open up with how does it feel to be on some of these old school maps? What does it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I barely played these. I was playing pubs way back in the day. So, I mean, the maps are good and I'm excited to play them. Uh, Draza, I want to ask you, the Search and Destroy, it looked fantastic. You guys obviously come correct in that game mode. In this one, it's a little bit different because you got to have more awareness, right? Like, I feel like a lot of bad habits might have been picked up last year with the sound EQ and all that. So talk to me about how you guys have adjusted playing off these crosses on these old school maps and with the sound adjustment as well. Yeah, I mean, I feel like s &D in this game is actually better than last year. Mm -hmm. um, I think getting, like, calling crosses and getting info is really good, and it helps me as I, I love s &D. So I like the idea of being able to see crosses and get information really quick. And I think for the better S&D players, it will help them a lot more. So I think we're just playing really good right now and uh, our S&D is going to be good. I got two questions for you here, Papa. First one is, out of the four players on the team, how would you rank them by aggressiveness? Uh, I'd say BZ, Chris, me, and then so. All right, final question here. I know you did a lot of work in the off season. You are now a father, a homeowner. For yep. anyone who is watching you for the first time, tell us the story. How did you get from Alaska to where you're at now? Um, I'm known for, you know, the number one grinder. And if you want something, you go get it. So I just grind as much as I can. And I, you know, it leads me to everything I have now. There you have it, man. We love to see your path, and we love to see you guys starting off with a hot 1-0. A game five victory is good enough for a match yep. dub. We'll see you later, Draza. Yep. Thank you. That's Atlanta phase. They pick up the first win. I do want to give nameless credit, though. All the coaches' polls had Boston in the bottom or the second to the bottom tier. You said they would be able to hang. They went to a game five, and they look good in all game modes. And you know what, Chris? I, I bet Boston, like, the takeaway from that when they leave is, like, we felt like we won that series 4-1. Yeah. You know, th those first couple of maps, it was, like, one moment away from them winning those. And I think the biggest thing as well is the young guys played so great. Capsule, okay. huge search and destroy performance. Snoopy in the respawn, sub AR, it did not matter. He He's doing what he needs to do for the team to find success. So losing that, it might be bittersweet, but they'll get better. Two world champs and two young guns. You got to love what Boston's made of, but they're done for the day. We have plenty more games to go. And reminder, if you're watching, you might as well be earning. That's right. We've got awesome in-game items to give away all throughout opening week. And all you got to do, watch the Call of Duty League. You're doing it right now, and you can earn the Mirror's Weapon Blueprint, charms, emblems, calling cards, and XP tokens simply by tuning in. Get more information, scan that QR code. And 
also don't forget to sign up to be a part of the watch party as the 2024 watch party program is back now is your chance to join sign up and you can be hosting your very own official watch party starting next weekend all the way through major one scan the qr code on the screen now to learn more there you have it that was our first match it's going to go to atlanta phase when we come back though it's an all west coast battle you don't want to miss it two fresh lineups Who's got this one? Is it LA Thieves or Seattle Surge? Stay tuned to find out.
So much history in one place. It's time to make our mark. Get your goofy ass up! We're about to play. Get up, Danny boy! I we got it. some fresh faces for the LA theme. Same can be said about Seattle Surge. And when I look at this, I'm basically looking at young versus old. No offense, Seattle Surge, but you got some old heads up there. On the other side, LA Thieves, you got Joe Deceives, youngest player in the league last year. You got Dan Ghosty, youngest IGL. Let's start with LA Thieves because the chat was just asking, who's playing for the team this year, Nameless? Listen, man, this team is pretty stacked, right? You got Dan Ghosty, Joe Deceives, Afro, and Cammy. There's some familiarity there with Afro and Cami, but this is a team that I'm very excited for. I think they can definitely be a top six roster, and you know, word on the street, I'm talking to all these players and stuff, they're saying Dan has been really good at this game, that he's been performing, uh, and this is a game that suits his play style really well, yeah. right? Like, he likes to call himself, in quotes, the hill kitten. Well, you could sit in the hill and watch crosses. A lot of these situations, uh, they're lockdown hills, and then Joe Deceives in his year number two alongside Afro, we've seen both of them have crazy highlight moments in series, so that could be a very dynamic sub -duo. Here's our Monster Energy pregame. Allie, break it down for me. Yeah, 2023 overall record, 27 and 21. But again, this is a completely new roster. And to be honest, doesn't really give me any sentiment of the previous year's roster. And their best major performance was major four. They got first. LED is just known to field these really strong respawn teams. And I think that's what we're going to be looking for when it comes to the Los Angeles Thieves. And from what we saw in Dan Ghosty, there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders right now. Not only was he put on the optic to be a leader last year, but now he's also being put on LA Thieves be leader this year. All right, a little swap for Kenny for Dan. I see what's going on there with Optic in LA, but on the other side for Seattle Surge, it looks kind of like a Surge roster from last year with a few upgrades according to the chat. Let's start with Illy, a man who injured his thumb. He sat on the side. He got benched, basically replaced. Now he's back in the starting lineup where the guy who went through a similar situation. Remember, yeah. Hook started with the Gorillas at the start of last year. Yeah, I mean, Chris, looking at this roster, it's everybody has something to prove here, right? You got the duo in Hook and Illy trying to make a name himself once again, prove people wrong. You got Arsenis who's coming off the worst year of his career, and you got Abuza who's coming from the rookie scene trying to make a name for himself in the pro league. So this team, a ton of potential with Rambo as their coach. I'm excited for this roster as well, man. Sort of in the same realm of LA Thieves. Like, one of them's going to be top six, top four. Which one is it going to be? We'll find out. Hook. Illy Rambo back together all in Seattle. I love it. Game is ready, so we'll hold our predictions. Get yours in the chat right now as we hand it over to two eSports Awards nominated casters. We got Miles the Ross Boss and the beautiful Chance. What up? What up, friends? Oh my god, the 2024 season already an absolute delight. Game five to start things off, and now we get to watch two absolutely oven fresh teams go at it, Chance. We got stories for days in this one, mate. It's so good. And I'm like nervous with excitement too. It's so nice to be back. And I'm so excited to watch Illy as well. Like Puckett mentioning on the desk, he's had his thumb injury. Like the past two years for him have just been like choppy. Sometimes he's in the mix. Sometimes he's having to sit on the bench. Now he's back from the start of the year, a world champion. And this is going to be a fun team to watch. Let me tell you. Well, both these teams again, squad wipes either side. Let's see how they fare here on MW3. Already seen a Karachi to start today off in our first series today, and now already into a good one. A boozer, the first man there in our game to get a kill for the Seattle Surge squad. Let's see how long they can hold on that hard point. I mean, it's going to be great, right? You got the number six of Booza spawn out over towards Diner as well. So you have the map cut off from every single direction. They haven't read these spawns actually in the slightest yet for Seattle. But at the same time, LA Thieves are taking their time. So this is great time to collect on P1. Great time indeed. That's Hook standing up and crouching in the hard point. No more of that snaking nonsense. Word to Zuma already. A nice bit of a break there. LA Ooh, Thieves, 13 plus seconds to be had. They're going to grab that and see what they can do over by Restaurant or Diner. Interchangeable terms here on Karachi. 
Yeah, I know, sort of like a peculiar situation, right? They didn't read the spawns on P1, so LA Thieves get the break, but at least you get the setup over towards New. So to Seattle, the opportunity, try to get the full 60, make something happen, but maybe Afro and Ghosty want to break it down. You know, or the order is up. No one on the point just yet. Here comes the close range battle. The back alleyway about to bust wide open. Hook cracks the door, doesn't catch a single player. Great work by the LA Thieves. Three down now for Seattle. In the point you go, and we're looking at a lead change. Hey, look, that's a fantastic break as well. We're going to see a lot of, like, shutouts on hills this year of, like, teams being unable to break. So, LA Thieves, a cakewalk like that is going to go such a long way. A free 30 seconds on rotation to, like, find these errant kills. Cami already putting in the work. This is a beautiful moment for LA to really try to run it up. Any more for Cami here? Is MCW getting put to work? Stun ends the run there. Trades are there. It's Joe Deceives, one of the players with a tremendously high ceiling, a lot of potential. Will this squad, oh boy, be the one to see him shine? Nice couple of kills, out like a light, new hard points up. He's by himself though, he is getting surrounded, stunned out, tag, you have to clean this kill up, and RCDs does exactly that. But keep in mind for Illy, number seven spawns all the way out, and number six and number two, so many players on the left side of the map, so a 2v2 fight around the hard point for the moment. LA Thieves again, if they get the break, they're in a sweet spot, but Big Daddy Al, it looks like he's holding it down. Holding it down, here comes Afro through the back door, he's checked the storerooms, nothing to be had. There's the contest, coverage once again, good work Seattle, they hold on to that one. Over to Ghosty now, love, love for him from the desk. Let's see if you can find it here in the game as well. Illy once again in the feed, and that's a lead change, Seattle Surge. Yeah, and that is some clean work by like the world champs on the side of Seattle as well, right? Illy and RCD is in a very sort of like precarious situation. They read the pressure perfectly and deliver. Well, maybe not all the time. They end up getting broken towards the end, but at the very least, they get a full setup towards new is Illy currently on a four spree. We go from the big old dine to that little cafe, now over towards Waterfall. A little found thing. I don't know. We're going to get these names right towards the end of the season. Don't you worry, friends. Over to Illy looking to make that five spree happen. Streaks are on the menu. Nice moves. Gets it. Great work. Finds the kill. Hard points up. Open for business now. Got to deal with Afro. But Surge have the numbers here, Chance. Yeah, you can see how hard he's playing for the streaks, too. So you got the numbers, you got the time, and you really want Illy to get this next kill. Trying to lock in a cruise missile, and he's going to deliver. The bait is on point, but maybe you trade a little bit of time to try to make that happen. Still scrappiness inside of the fountain. Not sure what's going on with the uh, CDRF7 on the right-hand side of the scoreboard. We'll find out what's going on there. But in the meantime, Thieves with a slight lead. They're going to prolong it. A boozer can't get any more out of that life. Slides into the hard point. No problem, though, for Ghosty. A nice two-piece from him. Surge with a late break. 20 seconds to be had. Yeah, the ref did not spawn in, so you don't have to worry about his gunny. That's just going to be Hook. He's actually replacing for the kills column. But make no mistake, if Hook is on the map, he will be getting the kill. So make no mistake, they're there. Uh, dude, I was going to go back and just give gas to the Seattle Surge team for putting together that incredibly hard intro. And then on the other side of the board, the Thieves one. Unbelievable. What an intro we've had to this series. Can we find an intro, though, to this hard point? The bottom side of the hotel, very, very small indeed. It's going to get mixy. Shoulder to shoulder. Oh, Illy wow. gets taken care. Of. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to creep around the back, but just all bases covered right there for LA Thieves. And obviously a nice little three spree for Afro as well. So Ghosty gets to go to his home. Hill Kitten indeed. He's collecting the time and, you know, the motor mouth in the comms is going to be on point as well. Oh, trying to make something happen there. Booze oh, on the okay. check in there. Finds all three. Sorry, boys. The room's not ready yet. And we'll take the next 30 seconds. Unless it, I think it's Ghosty at that top right hand side, unless he can get involved, which he actually has. He's looking to make the break alone. He might just do it. He's found himself three in a row. Looking to get himself back into the point. Yeah, this is sort of one of those situations where you have the spawns, you can throw an extra couple bodies at the hill. Like, you got the top third control, try to chip away at a little bit of time. So, LA Thieves, maybe overextend a tiny bit, but they can make it work. They got the setup towards new. We've seen what SMGs can do in this spot that Afro is in. Zero spree for the moment. We'll see how many he can collect. Afro gets himself too. Can he find a third here on the point? As he's now finding himself soaking the time, Joe deceives lightning fast there on the defense, keeping the hill in the hands of the thieves. So far, so good. Here comes the streaks from Illy. Wise investment. He's going to get two. Great work out of him. 
Yeah, nice uh, cruise again. There was a lot of effort and emphasis put in to get that streak, and that is a big usage for it as well. In sort of a similar spot to what we had last go around, Seattle getting more of the scrap time on P1, but this time they have an even more secure setup to P2. LA Thieves, they completely broke it down last time. Seattle can't make the same mistake twice. Well, can they break it down again? We're going to find out how the Thieves get it done in a very quick listening. Yeah, yeah. I'm not okay, 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 I'm clear, I'm clear, I'm clear. Yeah, yeah, I'm clear, I'm clear. Okay, okay, one's one's back down already. Yeah, 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 well, one team across top plat. We we playing old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see Taylor and Rod. Taylor and Rod, boys. Yeah, some boys. He's chilling off. He's chilling off. He's he's kind of weak. He's kind of weak. Go back, Ali. 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 I was going to be free probably. What do you guys want to do? You play I'm going to go right. 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 I have okay, yeah. I have sat outside. They can you go top all three. It. I can get no, there. No, on the right, on the right already. Kyler on the right, guys. They spawn okay, diner. My top turn. I want one spawn diner at least. Crossing Kyler to the yeah, square. Yeah, I'm on the square. I'm on the square. Diner. 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 Yeah, it's a long fight and for a decent chunk of time as well. Final 15 is something that Cammy will be happy to collect. And RCD's actually wanted to go and chal it. So a couple players spending a little bit too much time in old. LA Thieves are going to be in the new hill first. But Seattle with the spawns looks like they're going to be very quick to swarm. Ghosty living up to the name of Human UAV there on the break towards the backside of the map. Over to Fountain once again. Talking about this second story, incredibly important place to be. RCD's with a trophy down. That's going to pay off Afro though, the assassin from upstairs. A little bit of an El Tayir impression for now. Will he pounce? Can he get another? Yes, he can. Hard point, no stop. A save yet. Here's the third. Afro with Beautiful. a clean breaks. Any more, though, from the front door. Reload. Grit your teeth, son. Here they come. Abuza, though, gets the clean break. We're in now once again. Kami choosing the other foot, and the thieves are still kicking. Oh, this Seattle pressure is absurd. That just felt like Afro versus uh -oh. the world, and Seattle uh -oh. comes out on top. Hook, I mean, look, maybe he uh, learned from Ghosty just a little bit. The team Nate's always going to be a, a presence. <laughs> Hook from upstairs now. Can't get the second. Joe Deceives lives to fight another day. Man, what a hard point that was. Only a 10-point game for now, Chance. We didn't get to touch on it after the listening, but LA Thieves not able to really break into that P2, that restaurant side of the map. It was very, very difficult for them, but what a bounce back on the little diner, on the cafe. We'll get it. It right guys we promise new hard points up in the hands of search oh, good work from Millie. great tags as well at least trying to back these players down so seattle with the early advantage on this hotel hard point and right now la thieves not a ton of pressure a couple players up top but it is not easy for that to way through unless you gun like that afro trying to kick things off it's not easy whatsoever hook now the lone man inside the point his teammate abuza on the outside trying to soften up the attackers great work from hook the immediate snap back expecting more Vic as thieves on the approach to this point. Final 30 to go here, Chance, and what a start to the series already. Oh, Demon Time as well, just smashing through the front. So it is a head smash from both these teams. RC's for two, Abuza for the cleanup, and Seattle continue Ooh. to hold this time, continue to run the score up, and now have a massive advantage in this game. Ghosty couldn't get the cheeks out of the way in time. Abuza eats him alive. Now at 2.35 and climbing, Seattle Surge are within spitting distance of a map one win. Can they close out on P1?
bed to work with in the scoreboard. 200 points now, crack for the thieves. How long can they get it done? It boozes in. Cami with the immediate rebuttal, and the game is still on. And keep in mind, the rotation's going to the top left side of the map. So Seattle right now, they don't even have the good spawns for new. You only need six points. You can make the break at P1, but it looks like they're pushing to try to fight uh -oh. for this time. Illy, heads up place. He's going to go for this six. There's one. No more thieves. Good comms. Here comes the counterattack. Arcees finds one. Trades again. Jodeci still soaking. Ten to go here on the point. The foot race over to the restaurant and Abuza. He's the man in first. It's the rookie. Rookie's got to make the play. He's got the dumpster hop up under cover, but he gets stunned and he doesn't get gunned. He wins the gunfight, stuck in the process, but it's not enough in LA Thieves. Get to time first. Thieves are in once again. Cami now trying to take care of Hook. Finds himself a kill. Thieves are in again. 50 seconds to go on the point and it's going to be a battle on the back line. Woo! He breaks through into the time. Five seconds for the win. I don't think the Thieves can do it. Oh, Surge. Man. My God, did it take a pound of flesh? But what a map one that was. Bro, and welcome back, Illy. Good Lord, it is nice to see this kid play. Completely took over at the end. The two-piece gets one guy at a time. Think it might have been a wall bang. Wins the gunfight in the back alley and seals the deal. The cruise missile that Illy was able to earn. Getting the two-piece on P1 to open up the map on top of 27 kills. Leading the lobby. Illy, how do you do? That was such a nice return to form. Wow. 27 to 16. Here's a look at the highlights there from map one. Damn, what? This is the first day of the season. We're already off to a good it's start. So good. This is so good. I mean, there's so many things. All right, we'll get into that later. But for now, great work out of Seattle Surge. And yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, by the way, like, it's not just that. Abuza in the moment you saw was like 4 in 10, right? Yeah. Like, he did not have the best start. And there is a massive question mark for Abuza because in challenges last year, he fried the entire year, make no mistake. But as a main AR, he is currently on Seattle, picked up as a sub. So there is a lot of confusion from the community about how, like, well he is going to perform, as well as Illy did the entire time. Abuza made a nice, strong comeback, I think was leading the lobby in damage. And again, went from 3 in 10 to dead even. So, I mean, Booza for his first game also played out of his mind. You got to trust Coach Rambo Ray, of course, being reunited with uh, Illy and Hook. They won a world championship in 2020 on the Dallas Empire roster, and you've got to put a lot of faith in the man for now. Great stuff there. Abuza may be out of position on paper, but they're in game sitting pretty. Great stuff out of the young Belgium. That really is just so fantastic. And I'd say for a, a series start like that, it is always hype for the team that wins a close neck battle like that. And it can be devastating for the team that takes the L. So LA Thieves are going to have to try to bounce back because they nearly orchestrated a pretty massive comeback on Karachi. But now going into Terminal, I'm looking at Seattle and I'm just looking at the S&D prowess that these guys potentially are going to have. Illy, this is what he does if he's frying and respawn. Like we've seen him in S&D tournaments his entire career. That's how he got his start. But even at the start of this year, he has been a monster. Yeah, really, really good stuff so far. Terminal Invasion, Terminal Invasion to close out the series. If we have to go to game five, decent chance we do because, uh, hey man, it's early days and uh, it happens. It happens here in the CDL. It really does. 2024 season off to a bang already. Going to Terminal though, Chance. You look great. Now we're good. A little bit shorter now, too, trying to even things up. But yes, going to terminal. And for anyone that has played this map, they know on defense, you're very comfortable. You can sit in plane. You can throw an endless amount of shoulders if you're playing towards Eskies. With the snakes not being in, it's not going to be nearly as bad, but still a dominant power position that you can hold. So any offensive round wins you can collect, you are going to be incredibly happy. And for like round one, especially before the trophies come through, it's an opportunity for the team on offense to make an early play. We've seen guy at the desk as well, and, and of course, Joe and Clint talking about Dead Silence being around as well, because uh, the field of grades, they're it. still around. Not to mention the covert sneakers. Everyone's been uh, real stealthy so far here in MW3. Thank God. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how things go. Again, trophies won't be around for the first round, give or take, depending on how those scores go. That changes everything indeed. Something we saw all throughout last year and throughout Vanguard. We'll see how it plays out here in Terminal, because again, nades in this game, there's something about those frags, man. They just seem to be absolutely ridiculous. Now that EOD's fixed, maybe not as much, but hey, we'll find out.
Yeah, there's a lot of explosions in this game that seem like nukes from time to time. At some point on high rise, we are going to see some crazy things with those propane tanks. But I'm hoping we get to see some crazy plays on this map again for S&D this year. Like on terminal specifically, you might see some weird stuff for the round one breaks, but we're going to have smokes on the map. And it is very much a game where teams have to be incredibly well coordinated every single round to keep track of the information you're going to get from the other teams. You have to be on point through and through. And again, Seattle, they have a nice strong win from map number one. They have fantastic uh, players for search and destroy from map number two as well. I'm excited to see what they have cooked up. Well, before we get to that, I see what uh, Abuza had cooked up all throughout the Challengers season last year. Oh, yeah. Look at it. Them stats salivating at the prospect of getting into the league and getting to put his skills to the test at the very best of the best. But that average placement of 3.88 is Champs KD. Unbelievable. S&D though, Charles, that's where we're going next. That 1.42 against the Challengers stock. Let's see how it fares here against the LA Thieves. And make no mistake, I'm personally not expecting to be able to throw up numbers like that in the Pro League, but for stats that good in Challengers, this skill is going to translate in some capacity. So make no mistake, the man is going to be a force on the map to be recognized with and especially for that s and being just a, a little bit higher builds that excitement just a little bit more and for the fact that like i know he's a rookie player abuza is 23 years old so like he has been around for a decent amount of time so i don't think there's going to be any uh maturity issues that's a kid that looks incredibly professional nice and locked in indeed and i would imagine possibly speaks up to four languages i will have to confirm that with the man himself but we'll see how it goes Ilias T's and hoop backing him up there on the surge side of things over towards the red corner of the stage ghosty joe deceives cami and afro of the la thieves i think this team charles has been lauded as a very cerebral one very very heads up gameplay ghosty at the helm there in terms of the in-game comms you got players like afro and joe deceives hyper aggressive very very dangerous sub sub players and of course cami we haven't seen him really reach the heights of cold war since cold war but is this the season chance could this be the one to pull him back I mean, the first thing I'd have done if I was LA Thieves is just put that man in sensitivity training and just make sure he's got the, the sense on lock because he'd go back for the frying. But I do think a big part of like where Cami has the most success is when he's on a team that orchestrates like the map well and has fantastic communication. So I really like the pairing he has with Ghosty because I mean, Ghosty, early prediction for me, I think has a, a very good chance of being like a top five AR in this game, like almost right from the jump. His comms are fantastic, very consistently and the man can slay. So I'm very excited to see that sort of AR duo pairing for LA Thieves as well. Sensitivity training, is that because of the new uh, sensitivity settings in the game? Let's find out. Round so one, we've, <laughs> we've got the boys of Seattle Surge attacking first time round. A couple of members of the LA Thieves spotted out. A big salvo of fire. Won't find a whole lot as Cami will escape. And look at this bomb, by the way. The bomb has just made its way like through the terminal and in between a few players on LA Thieves. So there's some sneaky spots on the map for the moment. And it looks like the play call is going to be force A, and they're going to force it very soon. Yeah, who gets a bomb into an airport? That's dreadful security. Over towards the A bomb site, Hook now teeters. Watching out for this salvo gunfire. And it's hard to tell what's going on from the minimap there. There are two levels to this map, and Illy gets away with his life there. 27 HP, but the clock is ticking. No one to drop yet. Yeah, Joe Deceives is underneath. That's what Illy's going for the check. So the heads up gameplay is there, but he doesn't get an intel with the hit marker. So right now, Seattle pressure's on. You are running out of time on offense. And it looks like they're making a rotation, but not with the bomb. Ooh. So this is sort of a fake, and RCDs gets picked. You're making plays over towards B. LA Thieves have not fallen for it yet. Yeah, the mind games indeed. If you can make some noise over here by the B side, can Abuza be the man to get it started? Can with one to his name already. Gets the second. 20 seconds to go here. Perfect. Afro does lose the fight over there by the bombsite. Joe Deceives gets hit with a pistol. That's the bomb out of play now. All down to Illy. As the rounds exploded in the final seconds, and it's going towards the LA Thieves, unless he doesn't have the time. No, not at all. And that is a round, by the way, where the comps from LA Thieves Ooh. had to have been just completely fantastic. They never fell for the bait. No matter how much pressure was like over towards the Esky side of the map, you actually saw Joe Deceives, yep, rat backs and gets this cleanup kill. Ooh. If he like responds to the pressure too much, who wins the gunfight? That A bomb site would have been open and maybe some shenanigans would have taken place. But Joe Deceives in LA heads up plays in that first round. And again, on defense, Always happy to get him. That's the difference one kill can make. You're at professional Call of Duty level. The prowl of gunfire across the terminal here. Those MCWs putting in work. Very, very similar setup on both sides of the map now. Surge. How's their defense going to look now? Four members of the LA Thieves. 
They're looking towards that on ramp. I think they call it the uh, the apron. I'll get its real name. I, you've lost me there. I don't know what an apron <laughs> is, but I do know who was able to get the first blood at the very least <laughs> from range as well. I think with that uh, rival nine. So who putting in work in the cockpit right now? And I mean, had a trophy that was putting in some serious work as well. So right now on defense, a, a massive advantage that they have triple stacks the plane side of the map. Oh, who just exposes himself a little too long. Afro, he enjoyed the season now creeping forward. Pistols ready. Afro's going to get it. Out he goes. Here comes the counterattack, though. RC's trying to fly forward, pick up a trade or two. No, not going to happen. 3v3. Abuza is still locking down B as well, so he's able to come out. No pressure on oh there. Probably going to get forced through mid and plane, and RC wins a big one. Nice advantage over Seattle. Trying to keep this plane secure. Now the Alec on the tarmac. They line up on the inside. The aisle is a safe space, though. Here comes RC's once again. Gets himself his second. 15 to go. Joe Deceives holding it. Going for the plant, and that is an outstanding bounce back from Seattle Surge. Yeah, and I think uh, much more of sort of a standard terminal round we're going to see as well on defense. You get a guy in the airplane with a trophy, throw a bunch of shoulders, get all the intel, and again, Hook wins a big gunfight, I think, from cockpit over towards books as well. So Hook puts in the work. You get the first blood on defense. You just make sure you get the trades after the fact, and Arcides does his job to a T. Here we go once again. Those defensive rounds. Difficult as ever. Smokes out on the cross. Who's going to get in there? And okay, Subby's at the go. Great work there from Kami. Perfect coverage. Afro could have been in trouble there, but Ghosty finds himself another one. So the LA Thieves, again, defensive rounds go hard. Uh, there you go. Illy, though, for a 1v4. I mean, he played out of his mind on map number one, and this is definitely one of those players you watch in a situation that is hopeless. Illy absolutely can get to work. Well, that's bad, Simon. Joe Steve spotted out. Here comes the adjustment. Ghosty on that long line of sight. Illy heavily tagged, expecting the push. There's not a lot of hope here for him, but this is what Illy was known for for the longest of time. Search and destroy, superstar. And not today. LA Thieves, very strong defensive round. Yeah, and again, like always pay attention to Illy because he can make plays. That is truly a hopeless situation to be bad burger and end up in a one versus four. But that honestly just comes down to the smoke play. Hook wants to smoke out the middle of the map, try to pierce it with the rival nine and look for like an easy kill when his teammates are challenging through Burger. A stun just lands on his face, kills the entire thing. So LA Thieves again, very heads up as another defensive round goes through. Still plenty of time to go though here on our terminal search and destroy first to six for you newcomers. And Afro, it's boarding time and he wants to get himself seated quickly. Hook's back to up towards the plane. Nasty's there in the deep recesses of the aircraft, way towards the back line. Going to be a hop him out here, but we might be pumping the brakes once again, Chance. Just over a minute to play. Yeah, and I think right now, Afro and Joe Deceives are hoping for just a, a slight shoulder that's overpeaked a bit too much. Get Hook tagged up and then send Afro in for the kill. But that's on one side of the map. On the other, you have Ghosty making noise towards Eskies, but it is just a 2-2 defensive split. Right now, Seattle just playing like stones. Exactly. And I don't think the LA Thieves have too many lethals or tacticals left to play with in this round as well. I think they may have emptied their pockets early on, and now they are broke. Can they get it done with their MCWs and their rivals? Afro is going to try to find out. That trophy is annoying. Checks the cockpit. All clear, though. There's two of them here on the embark. Illy takes care of one. Hook's still on the inside. Arsties might get caught out here. Oh, he, he didn't see him. Didn't see him. Oh, nearly didn't matter. Final 20, 2v2. Running out of time, though, for 15 seconds. Hook again, though, wins a big one. And with 12 seconds running out, Afro just going to have to fly to try to make some sort of absurd play. But you just check the bomb and clear it out. Seattle locking things down once again. Hook right now seems to be running that airplane. Ah, uh, certainly. The captain himself. The classic smoke of the feet and run for it. It leaves Joe Deceives guessing. Is he inside the smoke? Where's he gone? He may have left the catwalk. He could be inside the terminal now. He could be the back of the plane. And there he was, Hook. With the pistol from the back, perfect timing. There's no way Afro managed to teleport himself to the other bomb site. That would have been very impressive indeed. Two to two. Yeah, another round on defense, by the way. You saw sort of like <laughs> the moment Afro had where RCDs actually doesn't spot him bottom plane is uh, one attempt you can have, another attempt, smoke out the front and hit it. Hook is here, he is ready to go. First blood collected. Can't survive, or the trade's gonna roll through. The aggression is absolutely in. There's the trade from Abuzi. You got the 3v2, and you got the bomb site control as well. Ghosty gets picked, and just like that, an offensive round potentially gonna roll through. 
unless Joe to see can clutch this one versus three. Good luck, Joe. This is going to be a tough one. Surge finally made the play work. Oh, here we go. Joe from way up top. There's so many places to check on the inside of that terminal. Boozer down low. There's the tags. That should be the round sealed. Can. Oh my god. Joe to see couldn't even get to the ground. Surge, take the lead. Yeah, and I don't know how many times, like, you'll probably see that play once or twice, like, per game, where teams just smoke out the front side of A or, like, cover, like, the uh, the glass slash, like, Eskies thing, and then you just fly. Everyone has to be on point. You have to make sure you're coordinated, and Seattle was exactly that. I mean, I think one of the most terrifying things to hear in, like, the league is someone calming, hey, Hook is flying at us, because I feel like when I see him run through smoke, it feels like a guaranteed kill. Oh, my God. Back Burger Town, Cami. He's not flipping patties. He's trying to hold down that long line of sight. Over to Illy now. Backs up wisely. Not a lot of gunfire there, and a boozer with two. Oh, I don't nice. know how he's pulled that one off. What an opener. I mean, again, that was the exact same play, but just a little bit better job of sort of backing down and letting the, the kills come to you. And oh every single kill does. Seattle read it perfectly. Like, hey, we just smoked out, eh? Banged it out. We'll see what happens. Well, they did the exact same thing. And Seattle, again, ahead of the game right now in s and at least here on Terminal. Back-to-back -back rounds and a, a very noticeable advantage in the game. I mean, it, as you said, there's not a huge amount of options you have in an attacking round. And Surge have managed to just make two of them work out in a very lovely way. Good stuff there from Seattle. Oh, sorry, the last one was defensive. You know what I'm talking about. I've had about three hours of sleep. Newborns are a nightmare, but he's wonderful. Don't let me hear that. Nobody clip it and send it to him in 10 years. Good shots, though, from Abuza. Three spree from him. Streaks not massively, uh, well, actually, all streaks are pretty good, but not tremendously impactful here on Terminal. A lot of inside cover, a couple of rooftops to work with. Nice. Great nade from a boozer four in a row. They're going to force the airplane two, and then Joe deceives, doesn't even give him one. So you still have that man advantage, smokes out for the cross, a lot of attacks coming through, but this is going to be bombed down, man advantage, Seattle might do it again on offense. Wow, there we go. All down to Ghosty, 1v2, technically a 1v3. Can Ghosty stay alive with the bomb planted? Really trying to make his way towards that terminal over by the catwalk looking for anything you can possibly find in this position what an angle that is we'll see that come into play in a moment meanwhile luke's got the inside of the map covered illy with the coverage seattle surge back to back to back yeah, and again, Illy, for a player to watch in Search and Destroy, he's always going to be teaching. Picks the perfect angle to watch that sort of like lower playing cross to comment to his teammate. And then Hoop knows he only has to stare at sort of that like back ladder. So the, the 2v2 or 2v1 setup, completely on point. Another offensive round. And I think that really just comes down to the nade coordination, getting that first blood on Afro in that mid hall. Seattle right now wheeling and dealing. Yep. 2-2 two -two split, A and B. Not a whole lot of info, but there we go. An exchange of nades. Illy somehow catches one of the joins perfect. him. There it is, my God. It's a 4v2. Abuza pumps the brakes quickly, no problem. Illy looking for his sixth kill in a row. Asties. I'll get it done. There's Illy. Finds number six. That streaks at the ready. Sure and that Lord. is that. Seattle Surge. Disgusting on terminal. I mean, that is absurdly clinical. I mean, two different offensive round wins on different sides of the map as well. I mean, even just to look at that from like LA Thieves perspective, like they haven't had a lot of success on offense at either side. They try to basically just full send through the middle of the map and then every single stun and grenade just lands at their feet and picks them apart. Illy, MVP on map number one, exact same thing on map number two as well. 2k damage, nine kills to his name and two first bloods, but obviously a booze and hoop getting two first bloods a piece as well. Seattle picking the thieves apart. Yeah, Zio back at it. Who can Illy? Insertion destroyer, 6-2. That is a dominant performance and uh, dare I say it, could it be a 3-0? Invasion control come up in a moment, but that first Karachi very close indeed. Nice bit of a comeback towards the end from the LA Thieves, but not enough to close it out. 6-2 on Terminal, though. That is an absolute bludgeon in Terminal. See you later. We might be seeing one of those later in Hardpoint, but you have to get through the Invasion Control first chance. God only knows if they can get it done. Ah, it's going to be a fun one, too, man. Brand new map for control that we're going to be working with. Not a lot to uh, no. Like, we're going to be learning a lot with sort of uh, the fans as well for this map three. Very excited to see it. We'll find out how it goes. We saw one in the first series of the day. We'll see one right now. Seattle Surge taking on the LA Thieves. And so far, an absolute bloodbath. We'll find out what happens in control. Coming up after this quick break, don't go too far, ladies and gentlemen. This is the CDL.
upgrade your game with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. Control on Invasion. Coming up next here is Map 3, Seattle Surge versus the LA Thieves. Absolute smoke show so far from Seattle. They are running the show. The LA Thieves may have left them uh, a very creepy prank phone call, but at the end of the day, it's Seattle Surge taking care of business. I was about yeah, to do try it, to get in their heads, but I was, yeah, <laughs> I was so close to doing the whole thing. I've got the beat ready and everything. Oh my god! I got, well, I'm glad you did it because that would have knocked me off my game. Uh, unlike Seattle, <laughs> who hasn't been phased by lotion. that. I got lotion. I got lotion. Okay, well, right. that's great. We're going to invasion, by the way. Yeah. So you're gonna need the lotion because we are in a desert. So it is gonna be very dry on this map, but the action will not be. We obviously nope. saw an invasion control earlier. Back and forth banger, offense wins, like fairly balanced on the map, aggression towards both the zones as well. So maybe we'll see a, a different look from these two teams from what we saw earlier today, but I'm excited just to watch it and see it in its true form. Two zones, 30 lives, and maybe loads of fun. Let's find out for who though, because at the end of this series, it could be a 3-0 and sell surge, absolutely giggling their way into tomorrow's play. So far, over towards the A side of the map, or B side of the map, we go here on offense for Seattle Surge. A boozer dips a toe in, stops the clock, starts the cap. And you had RCDs covering like a, a ton of the map as well. So, you know, players are made. You've cleared out B Street. You've responded to the pressure. You don't really have to worry about the flanks. Maybe the middle of the map just a bit, but this B zone almost assuredly going to fall. You already have LA Thieves chalking it up, trying to set up sort of their play over towards defending the A zone. And you see the idea. Jota Thieves posted on the bridge. Everybody else just spreading the map. Yeah, nice spread. 210 to play with now. That's a lifetime here on Invasion. If it was the A side, we're going to fly the little showers. Very, very small space. However, a dangerous run across open field to get there. We'll see if the players can get it done. Lots of covering fire here. Watch for those long lines of sight and those angles. And Cami, the man in the feed, slowing things right down. Joe seems over my bridge. That map goes deep over there, by the way, boys and girls. So Joe's been spotted. And Illy springs to life. A nice two-piece, two down. Oh, and this could hurt. Oh, he's going to get the cross, too. No. Yep, made it to showers, and he's the trophy player, so he gets out already. Oh, no. So much pressure, but he backs up for a trade, and Afro not only guns him, but guns a booza to bed as well. So an opportunity. Afro absolutely kills it. Oh, that slipped through the fingers of Seattle Surge there. They could have caused some real damage to that A zone. Great work there from the LA Thieves. They keep the play alive for now. Go to take care of a top tank. And Cammy keep that side of the map all theirs. 115 though, the Thieves have done a great job here on defense, burning the clock down, it's two dead now for the LA Thieves, Surge flying forward. And well, they're forcing like a, a deep back spawn as well, but LA can at least spawn up and just watch the crosses. So all of these gunfights are going to be the ones that potentially decide the round and Cammy kicking things off with that first blood is going to slow Seattle down massively. It saves, min map will save. This is awkward, Dilly though, he had a boozer find their kills. Two lives separating these teams at the moment. Can Afro stay alive? No. Oh, really got here again. The map is now in the hands of Seattle. The capture is on. Two players trying to get in there. The coverage is there. And Jonas seems getting involved. Finds a big kill on the reinforcements. The capture still taking place though. Illy's sitting pretty right now. One segment done. And it's like chaos in the spawn as well. So players on both teams are trying to check every single corner, but Illy eventually, yep, just not enough help. Players able to get too close in LA Thieves. Still stable on defense, running out of time. 35 seconds left on the clock. Seattle get one good push to try to make this happen. Yeah, four segments captured so far. We'll see if that comes into play for the deciding round. Jota Thieves in the feed on four spree. And Illy once again, the initiator here for Seattle Surge. He's been the playmaker. In a big way, the spree of Joe Deceives ended. Final 20 seconds. One more set of kills, and you can still get in their surge. Well, he's able to win the next one. That's going to be three down. Who's it on defense? It's Cammy by himself. Cammy delivers for one. He's going to have to clutch up massively for the team. Can't get it done. Seattle, 6.9 on the clock. The nice amount of time to work with. Nice amount of time. Nice amount of teamwork. Oh, the lives have gone for the LA Thieves. It's falling to pieces. Afro finds one. The second. Oh, can't get any more, but the numbers are there. Ghosty firing his way through. Can they get on the point? The final three members of the Thieves here in the first round. RCT's tagged up. Damage dealt. The pinch is on. The clock is on. Open. The round is not over yet. Can the Thieves do it? They may have just stolen this one. What an opening round.
Good Lord, and straight Gunny at the end there, too. Seattle had the setup. They had the crosses covered. I, mean, I think it was, what, Ghosty? Come on. That just peels someone off of that heady. And speaking of just big gunfights getting one, here's the other massive play that Afro was able to make. Nice, clean three in the feed and just a small overcommitment by Illy. So opportunities on offense created. Thieves as icy as you like them, able to shut him down. And now actually sprinting straight over towards that. Well, we're going to try to get the A zone done first. We'll soon come to know this one as the harder zone to capture. Every map has one. Oh, dear. Asties and Joe Thieves firing each other through the walls. Three dead for Surge. Big this advantage here for the LA Thieves. Massive opportunity for them to capture this A zone. And again, for the, like the expectation is this is going to be the more difficult zone to capture. If they can get it straight off the jump, we're going to get a very early opportunity to learn and see how easy it is to defend B the entire time. Where LA Thieves had success on defense. Seattle Surge might just end up struggling. A zone gone. So much time now for the Thieves to work with. He's done the hard part of this map. Now will you be able to capitalize on it? Go see an Afro. Fighting the way through the open side of the map. Kami cutting through his way. Through the mid, just over two minutes to play. A nice corner there from Illy. He's over by oh that P2 position, but the Thieves have bulldozed their way in a broken. Yeah, Cami is ripping heads right now as well. They know someone's back construction, and that player is at least going to get traded out. So you've at least dealt with the back pressure. Now all gunfights forward. LA Thieves now on the point. Only one man on it. Afro looking for the kills. Who falls out seemingly nowhere? Do they care of business? A boozer joins him in the feed. You're starting to run out of numbers here on this side of the map for the LA Thieves. It's Ghosty, who's got to win a couple of very tough gunfights. Here comes number one. Gets it. The second, no. Not able to get away. But Joe Thieves has got himself a little closer. The play is still on. It's Joe Deceives. My dear God, he's staying alive. I hope that was in just like prime position to be annoying, but he at least gets taken care of. So now Joe Deceives. Well, there's two in the feed. The opportunity to fly forward. Trades coming through on RCs. The last man on defense is going to be a booze of rookie. Needs to go big. Three players near this zone. Massive communication effort there from the LA Thieves. They managed to deal with everyone. Now the next wave of attack is on their way. Only two members of Thieves alive. Looking for the kills. Not going to happen. Who can nilly? Zio getting it done in the feed. A one life separator right now, and the LA Thieves are not giving up the push. And they're behind enemy lines again, so all these trades rolling through. Seattle have been on point on defense. It has been difficult for them to make it happen, but they have been delivering. <laughs> Dancing with the devil on square. Joe DeSeeds gets a little bit of help. Guns the next one in another three down. This has to be it for LA. Stack the f***ing point. Let's go. Push it now. Afro finds big kills up front. That's going to be a big one. Get in there. Two players. Where's the third? There we go. That should be the round. First segment long gone. Trophies working overtime. Cami and Afro letting it rip. Can Surge find anything? Who can ask these? They get in the feed. Go on, boys. Go. The contest. The kills. Oh, my oh, Lord. What a run. One life still separating them, but Surge, stay alive. Every single stun and every single nade landing on that zone eventually just bites its way through the trophy. Staying alive on defense. Still clutch, but still more time to work with. Trades back and forth. Seattle stagnant on the point. It's a bunch of great head glitches and power positions. And Illy delivers for two, desperately holding on. LA Thieves, though, just need one final tick. This is the push to make it happen. Take a deep breath. Wait for it. Here come the lethals and tacticals. They have to know a booze is up there. 15 seconds. He could go huge. Two. Turns around. That's a problem. Joe DeSeeves starts to party. Illy up close. Dealt with Cammy. They've somehow infiltrated the whole setup. Cammy can't get any more. Still on the point. There's the contest. And it's done. What a round. Finally. And the thieves are pumped after that one. Yeah, I mean, that was a jolt and a burst of excitement out of Joe Deceives at the end of that round because they had to fight for every single inch on that map. Seattle made him work for it, but hey, that is a 2-0 lead right now on control, and I think it was Killer Cammy that ended up making the play. I think he wins a gunfight by DVDs, working on the flank, turns that into two, and tags up a player one shot for the third, and took a lot of effort. They now have a nice lead in the control. Surge has such a good-looking sub there. The team somehow managed to silently infiltrate and assassinate all of those players. Abuz and Illy, though, nothing quiet about it. They have head their way in towards A, and they've gone for the old A attack, and it's working out so far. Can they catch it though that's the question joe deceives afro answer right back illy gets ripped and that's the play done all down to asties now take as many with you as you can mate it's the thieves town yeah and i mean one tick goes through on a so seattle at least get a little something off of that as they're now rotating back towards the, the b zone so maybe a small amount of success but still a long way to go in this round 
There's Ghosting on your screen, 8 and 15 for the moment. Looks like they're not going to be fighting tooth and nail to defend this B zone, but they want to make sure they post up and get these kills. Yeah, good work again just to get that first segment. Cami on the flank once again, nice and slow. Back and forth trades, looking like a White Stripes album cover there in the kill feed. Now oh, Cami's made it all go red, bit more Ramstein right now, and Cami, here we go. Trying to slow him down. Opening now made for Seattle Surge as they punch their way out. Abuza now finds an angle. You've got space to work with Seattle Surge in just about 50 seconds. And, you know, they played it a little bit slow defending the B zone, but they still got it before the final tick came through. So you still put a, a decent amount of pressure on Seattle and force them to make the play. Car is going to help out Cami and Joe Steves in the moment, but I don't think they needed the help. The defense has still been on point. Seattle, you only got 30 seconds left. The B zone's still not easy to capture. You need to start to move. So they get themselves on that. That's an additional minute of play. Cami finds one, three dead for Surge. This isn't looking good. This could be the map. We could be going on map four. We're going back to terminal, but no. For a brief moment, Joe deceives ends the play. Oh, Big wins. On Willy. And that could be it. You've got players on the point for now, but there's a present from Joe over the top. Trophy saves the day. Are we able to stack this one? Seattle surge. And it's not over they yet. got it. That's the next true minute to go. Good lord. Yeah, these invasion rounds are apparently uh, a lot more stressful than I was expecting. And Seattle pretty quick through the middle of the map as well. Maybe it put on some pressure, but RCDs get shut down and Illy doesn't really have support just yet. So Seattle really need to start finding these kills towards the middle of the map because a couple players are actually just like Ghost. It is Ghost who's made his way through the middle of the map and is now just a thorn in their side. Eventually gets cleaned up, but he buys his teammates the trade. Seattle back to square one. All of them coming off spawn. Illy the green thumb takes care of that thorn 35 seconds to go two segments at a one clean set of kills it might work out hook's gone in all the way through the back did he hear that player in a, above him at blue i don't think so ghost is going to be a problem hook if his play works out he could get his boys into the zone but they've got to win their individual well, gunfights and it ain't happening LAP is no too. They're going to turn around for it. I was going to say, oh, Ghosty yeah. started a tweak like over towards blue. They were keeping track of players. They knew who they got through. So again, the communication from LAP is absolutely on point. Got to fly through the A Street. You cannot make it happen. And really sealing the deal on that final defensive round. LAP is completely turning up on invasion control. Yeah, completely different team there after the first two maps. Seattle Surge, a couple of nice looks, but not quite enough to get it done. LA Thieves, that A capture in their second round win, very, very important. They've bought themselves an essential lifeline here in the series. We're going to see another terminal hard point at the very least, and then we go back to Invasion for the Search and Destroy should we see the game five. But as far as we're concerned, I thought Control was going to be a bit whack in this game. I can't lie, but Invasion, <laughs> that was sick. Come on, baby, more of those. That was a 3-0. That felt great. Can't wait to yeah, see what a really close one looks like. That was brilliant. Look at the highlights. Here we go. I mean, the highlights, I think it's going to be a decent bit of Illy and then a decent bit of Cami. I was going to say, Illy's been popping off the entire series. Cami rose to the occasion. And even for like, you know, this is the first round where Seattle are really creating opportunities on offense. There's Afro just slamming him to shut down one of those pushes. And I think Cami had a, another beautiful moment a little later on to do the exact same thing. So just for the fact that in the stats core, you saw Killer Cam kicking things up quite a bit. Massive factor in their success. It's just so hard. I mean, it's a big old map, man. I mean, we're, you're going to see the assault rifle players having as much fun as they possibly can, especially over towards the A side of the map. It's just, I don't know, it's a very, very difficult map to, to find that success on. Clean four kills like this, a moment like this where you get to stack the point, a luxury, but it didn't work out in the slightest. I mean, look at that easy retake there from Seattle Surge. They got two segments out of it fast, tooth and nail to fight for the final segment here. But man, the LA Thieves are not an easy victory for them whatsoever. That was a tight 3-0. We'll see how they go in the hard point on terminal. And it is an interesting thing as well, because like it seemed like LA Thieves on the, the round where they had to fight for the B zone had like a lot of opportunities to like stack it and get the progress. And it seemed like maybe that was a missed opportunity until we watched them actually stack it. And then every single stun and nade just blows through the trophy and just does so much damage that it wreaks havoc on everybody. So not easy to get either of these zones when teams are on point and LA Thieves, they certainly were there. So series not over. I mean, as far as vibes go, again, losing that map number one in the fashion that LA Thieves did could be a little bit devastating. Well, they've officially bounced back. They forced the map four. Maybe have a little bit more momentum on their side.
Just to go back to that trophy as well, man. I mean, the the timing you have to have to have to get that trophy ready for that moment, and the comms to be like, I got the trophy for the point. Let's get those kills. Stack it. Get that trophy down. It still got eviscerated pretty quickly. All those players spawning on that close side of the map. Nades over the top. Madness. Absolute madness. Very very exciting map though. That comes to a close. Two to one so far in the series. But mate, we go back to another terminal hard point. It's so one-sided. John Clint said the same thing. It is. It's one-sided. Once you have to go out on the tarmac, you get a bit of fresh air. Right back on the inside. How is this one going to go down? Both teams are pretty solid in the first hard point. Very, very close in the rotation game. Karachi, a similar sort of map in terms of get ahead of the hard points as much as possible. Is this going to be a similar case? Uh, I think so. A little bit of like a very close game, but I think I like the sort of framing that uh, this is a weird sentence that Turtle had on Twitter. Uh, very wonderful stats guy tweets out great information all the time. But instead of like referring to like the hills on terminal as like full 60s, just like shutouts. Like how often does the team that win the rotation just completely shut out the opponent? When we saw terminal early on, it was six out of the nine hills that we saw. So very constantly outside of a P1 and maybe the plain hill, when you win the rotation, you can lock so many of these hills down. So there's gonna be a lot of key gunfights like around security, especially that side of the map that are really gonna be the deciding factor on this map, potentially all year long. We'll see how it goes. The boys get to rehydrate. I know a couple will be hitting the monster energy drink, the official energy drink of the Call of Duty League. But this terminal, we'll see how it goes. Very, very important for the boys of the LA Thieves to force the game five. We'll see if they can get another crack at Surge in Search and Destroy. But until then, get to the gate on time. Get on the plane. Because you know Nature will not be happy if he's got to buy you all tickets again. <laughs> Uh, Nate has been looking uh, pretty good at this game as well. Look, man has actually good. been on his grind. So, yeah, talk about he's a man that seemingly hasn't lost a step. I'm scared to play against Nate if we ever bump into each other in rank play because man's a menace. And now we go. P1 opening salvo fights taking place. And right now for Seattle, fighting a two front war. They get to the time first, but they are also going to be desperate to try to flip these spawns. While we stay on the Nate shot train for a moment, I took his advice and I put that uh, uh, sprint after sliding thing on with ATS. I'm old, man. Nice. I've got a baby. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> So to surge right now. They've got to get themselves over towards that right and left hand side of the map. Not going to happen. The moves are hoot kills all over the place. They've still got the hard point. And Afro, this is big pressure. Surge looking to try to get the flip. And this is the moment, right? Afro is going to fall. Joe Deceives has to try to fight these players off. You have Kami that just hightailed it towards the back of the map. And Joe Deceives roaming that direction as well. And again, it is all about the desperation to keep these left side spawns. Kami's going to lose it. Joe Deceives and Ghosty, though, putting it work. It looks like Ghosty for two, Afro for the cleanup. And outside of number six, nope, he gets eviscerated as well. A ton of time for P1 for Seattle, but they at least did not get the rotation. LA Thieves, we'll see how much they can get off this. Full 60, absolutely, potentially on the board. Yeah, this is it. We're in duty free right now. The boys aren't paying taxes, and so far they're not actually worrying about anyone. Here comes the hit, though, slowly but surely from Seattle Surge. Flying through that terminal. Joe receives guns up. No help. The boots oh, are so quick. there into the feed. Flying forward. Another oh, big one so from Hoop. Quick. Oh, my God. The thieves all dead. There's the break. I mean, that was so fast. That was just an instant, like, four-man hit just about through, like, the P1 side of the map. They win the gunfights in the back and for a hill that can very often be a full 60. Seattle, that is a massive moment in the game. As you have a booze, by the way, the rookie starting things off 7-1. and one. You could not ask for anything more. Yeah, great start. Cut to pieces, though, on the inside of the aircraft there. Hello, Billy. Whoa. Nearly gets turned on there. Nice teamwork the LA thieves to bring him down in the end, but a wonderful chunk of time there from P2. Over towards the plane we now go. You've got your duty free. You put it in that little Ziploc bag thing. You get to open it when you arrive. Here come the lads flying forward. Trophy down. Three, two, one. Send it. Trades are there. Cami gets two. Illy wins the trade war. And you also need to make sure you keep the left side spawns too. I think Seattle happy to chip away a little bit of time, but they just need to make sure they're careful. And that's why guys like number six Abuza wrapping towards the back. So I think that was the play call from Seattle for the start. We give it one good attempt. And if it doesn't work out, we rotate, we post up and we just win the gunfight. So they're trading away 45 seconds just for the rotation. That is how valuable the left side of the map spawns are. And well, this is LA Thieves opportunity to break it down. And they're trying. Asties, the backside security cleans them up. Lovely angle. Final few moments going to go the way of the thieves. Lead change now for a bit. Not enough of a lead to really sit with any kind of cushion. 
It's over to Illy. Top left-hand side of the minimap. This is going to be an awkward fight. He's inside Burger Town. And Cabby, he's got no idea he's in there. Check it. Cut to pieces. Hook with the coverage. And hard point up once again. Surge in control. Yeah, nearly uh, a sneaky attempt there, but it does get shut down. And right now it is what? Just a booza posted in the back of the map in a deep angle. Three players working on the cross. Ghosty is going to check it and win it. So at least you get over towards security. Still got to win the gunfights, though, to try to get towards this point. Bit of a pinch. Who can get one or two out of this? That'd be great. Nah, here we go. Burger Town's about to bust wide open. Seattle Surge. There's the contest. There's a big win. Seattle Surge somehow staying alive and pushing the lead forward. Let's hear how they sound with a quick listen in. I'm holding new. I'm going in on I'm P2, I'm P2. They need me, bro. No, they're all going through old and mid-hall, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, don't see on old, don't see on old. Nothing here, I'm playing. I have your plane cross, brother. They're gonna push me, guys. I'm holding it, I'm holding it. Top three, top three, top three. And burger, burger, go see dead. I saw it. Oh, no, 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 I still, I still, I Top three, top three. We're missing one, we're missing two. Top three, top three. I'm missing two. Nice, 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 nice. I have a trap on you, I have a trap on you. I have a trap on you, I have a trap on you. I have the left, I have the left, I have all the left. They're not going on the back, guys. One on the back on me, burger, burger, burger. Go see, go see, dead, dead, dead. Yo, this one, one, you dead. Sunny me on time. Oh, two more, two more, two more, two more, two more. We're missing two. Nice, we're missing one. Nice. I'm pushing. Make sure you're black, make sure you're black. Soak this shit, soak this shit. Yeah, you got it. Okay, okay, okay. Get them. Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. He's low plane, low plane going, low plane steps to the outer right. You feel me? I'm pulling you, I'm pulling you, I'm pulling you. Two, 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 two in you, two in you. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna wrap burger. Take your time, take your time, two in you. Afro, dead. Nice, put him back in. He's a fucking three. 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 Watch out, Penny! Watch out, Penny! Watch out, Penny! Dead, dead, dead. I'm on the back, I'm on the back. I'm on the back, yeah. One guy's on me! Dead! I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's early days, but I think that's my favorite listening of the 2024 season. Fuck that shit. <laughs> you feel me? We're in the point and we're looking for another lead change as the thieves are playing out their skin. Uh, this has been an absolute grueler of a map as well. You had one big break on Dreams for Seattle. Well, you had a big break on the Burger Hill for LA Thieves. Currently, the good spawns in the hands of Seattle, but they're not getting any of the time. And right now, it is just a, what, a slugfest of these gunfights from downrange. Seattle, at this point, desperate to try to hold on to these back spawns because LA Thieves, they have ramped up the pressure, have a little bit of the lead and a couple kills coming their way. And right now, Illy, he's only got one man for support on the back of the map, but if he doesn't need it, who can Illy picking up all the kills they need? Cammy, just no cover, no problem. The challenge fights like that against Arsites. Time's up. Over towards our new hard point we sit. Soak in as much of this time as we possibly can. Afro battling through security, manages to get it done. Doesn't think it is bad check, but he has got to worry oh. about who can a moment, not enough on the time. That's going to be one angle covered. Over towards the other side of the map from the aircraft now. Cammy in, finds one over to Ghosty. Oh, is it enough? Yes, it is. Ghosty finds the kills. It's a late break. Oh, and it might be an ugly one. Can he stay alive? That is an amazing break, though. Again, another one on Dream. So these two teams, again, in absolute slugfest on the map. Another massive moment for LA Thieves. Two different hills where they've been in a bad spot, but they're able to deliver. They're going to have maybe not a comfortable lead, but a sizable one. They got the left side spawn. So long term right now, LA Thieves are in a fantastic position on Terminal. And they get the break onto the plane once again. They did it in the first round. Ooh, that trophy scared Afro. <laughs> You're fighting for trophies this year, though, son. Make no mistake about it. Checks the cockpit. All clear. Lovely shots onto a boozer. Now forward we fly. Fresh mag. Stun. Check. Send it. First in. There's the trades. Oh, no trades. They're late one there from Ghost. He gets involved. Illy on the back line. Safe and sound. Seattle hold. And again, this might be a situation where LA Thieves just chalk it up and play for the rotation. Maybe see if you, like, someone can make a hero play. It looks like Cammy's trying to be sneaky to trip away time, but everyone else on the map is just going to be dialed in towards this burger point. But here's the play from Cammy. His teammates win the guns for the rotation. Can't quite make any craziness happen, but at least draws a little bit of pressure. So Seattle, no one's able to do anything sneaky. Everyone's going to have to just work through the front. That's a nice lead change again. Just for a moment, and here comes it through the front. Illy can't get any more. Three dead there for Surge. Great work, Ellie Thieves. 
Final 10 seconds here on the plane come to a close. Burger Town, it is. Another and close. Keep in mind, Miles, by the way, that they're past the 193 mark, so a full 60 wins you this game. So there is so much pressure on Seattle right now. That is a great call. He receives. He's having to get involved quite far forward. Cammy with the cross. Here comes Surge. There's the first. The second for Cammy. Can't get any more out of it, but his boys are there. Joe Deceives finds one, stays alive. Surge trying to hold it down. Ghosty gets involved. This could be it. Is this game five? It is not over yet. One more hit from Surge. You have to contest. They just need to contest for at least like three or four seconds or somehow get Joe Deceives out of the hill. And there it is. The nade finally comes through. They pierce through the trophies and at least get him out of time. So Seattle just bought themselves a lifeline in this game. Oh, the rotation would be absolutely crucial. They nearly line up for Afro. Nice nade, nice trophy. Nades everywhere. Oh dear, a little bit of a late game blunder. Far from over. Over to the bookshop we go. Thieves are in first. The pressure is now mounting. Could be an attack from two angles for Surge. Anyone to get the break? Hook through the front door, skins him alive. Joe Deceives gotta go big. Working through the back too. So there's the first one. Maybe Afro working through the dreams to focus on the back side of the map, but right now the focus on the point, sliding in and gunning him down. Joe Deceives reading it, but still Illy alive inside the point and dancing with the devil. Illy for two again. The hero on map number one towards the end might be the hero again. Ciao, Illy. Arstig's now going up against his old teammate from LAG, holding him at bay. He will not let them leave the plane. Joe Deceives coming at it for one more crack. Nearly gets the kill. The clock's still ticking. 10 now for the win. A boozer trying to keep him out of the long line of sight. Ghosty finds one. Can he get a contest? Over to Illy now to save the day. You've got to go. Thieves in. Illy wins it. That is the map. That is the series. Seattle Surge. What a start to the season. Oh my God, and what an absolute battle to make it happen on Terminal as well. You go to a Burger Hill, it's the full 60 just like Onslaught. It is so tough to get through. LA Thieves had everything perfect, got the four man white, but Seattle Surge, their resolve completely on point. Eventually able to weed out Joe to seize from the hill, get the break and seal the deal. And we've given Illy a ton of gas, deservedly so. Two minutes inside the hill, big gunfights towards the end, but RCDs as well, laying down the law in that final map. A great series between these two teams, but Seattle going to be very happy to walk away with this one with the dub. I felt like that was the RCTs of old, you know, like holding down a strong lane, essential moment in the game, doesn't waver, takes on two players, great damage there. They look, either way, LA Thieves, incredible play there on Invasion Control, super strong from them. I think both hard points chance, realistically, pretty good out of them. Seattle Surge, just a couple of moments here or there, well, they managed to steal it away. And if we did have to go to the Invasion Search and Destroy, God only knows what would have happened there. But Surge, great start to the season. Search and Destroy looking fantastic, as expected. Hard point, not bad at all. Mate, that was a lot of fun. High five. I'm joking. Don't yeah, absolutely. Don't so much fun don't to uh, see some of these guys back as well with the brand new roster. So uh, a great start for them as well. And I'd say like, especially so for the S and D two offensive wins on terminal Seattle looking flawless. Looking absolutely flawless. Speaking of flawless, let's go to the desk. Good God, you're all attractive. Very, very intelligent. Likewise. Merc, Maven, oh, Miles, wow. and Chance. It feels like a major here on opening day. I'm loving it. Welcome back, everybody. Pucking alongside Alley Cat and Nameless. And we didn't expect blue to be the color after this series. All three of us on the desk fell LA thieves, but instead, it's the old guard still getting it done, Alley. I mean, uh, Illy's back. I feel like that's all the takeaway I got from this series. Illy, after his injury, having to take time off, I mean, he has come back in full force, not only in search and destroy, but he was having his way in the respawns as well. All right, Nameless, let's focus on the positives here first with LA Thieves. What did you learn from the team? Because they did get a win in this series. Yeah, I mean, incredible potential, right? We saw it when we got to that control, what Cami was able to do, putting up a ton of damage, getting inside red. Uh, but majority of the series, I just felt like Seattle surged the more polished team. Yeah. Yes. There were a lot of situations, like, especially in that search and destroy, like the way that they attack plane and use prior rounds, like setting stuff up with the smoke top eskies and rotating over, just beautiful plays, a boost 
Palooza as well. Like, that guy is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I can tell you right now. You, you saw Illy popping off in the KD department. Abuza was setting him up left and right. Uh, but yeah, both these teams, I said it before the series. One of these teams is going to be a top six, top six, top four team. They have the elements that you need to form a good roster. Right now, though, Surge, they definitely did a little bit more in the practice and preparation leading up to this match. It was a close fight, as you can see in the final score. Surge, though, gets to 251st and finished the series 3-1. Let's do the Abuza conversation because we got to touch on it. You got a guy from France, comes in, causes chaos and challengers. Now he's here in the big leagues, his first series playing alongside some legends, some world champs like RC. Yeah, there was a lot of talk around Abuza, especially last year, because his average placement was top four. He was the challenger player on everybody's spines, and I think he had a really, really solid game one, which is something we didn't see a whole lot with rookies last year. Uh, nameless, a lot of people thought that Alec was just getting the bag with LAG. He had some handcuffs on. That contract was over. He goes to the surge. How do you think Alec is feeling after this year? He's probably feeling amazing, man. He's got some world champions around him himself as well, and this team looked great to kick things off. Obviously, under Rambo Ray, that guy has them ready to go. And, you know, his role on the map, this is the perfect game for a guy like Alec. Post up, get some kills, communicate effectively. The game can be pretty slow at times, so he can IGL. It's working out great. Arsenis drops 4,800 damage to secure the win in game four. But right now, we got to talk with the man who is back in the building after a way too long of a time period. Young <laughs> Illy, welcome back here yeah, to yeah. headquarters. Talk to me about your first match win wherein Seattle Surge Blue. What's up? What's up? Um, honestly, it's a pleasure. Uh, just uh, being on Seattle. Like, what? Also, like, what? Like, just the players around me. My teammates are all disgusting. Uh, I couldn't have hoped for uh, better teammates, uh, to say the least. Uh, yeah, and it feels good. Obviously, uh, a win always feels good. Of course. Start off the season. Yeah, Ellie, welcome back to the league. And what a first match out of you specifically. I mean, you were taking over. And not only in Search and Destroy, where you usually find your prowess, but also in Hardpoint. How do you personally feel uh, on this game and where it lands kind of in your arsenal? Honestly, I love this game. This game is, I think, godlike. Like, uh, <laughs> just like the mechanics, just like MW2. Like, 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 I load in every day and I play the same maps I was playing when I was a little kid, when I just started. Like, just think about that. And then plus added, like, just the mechanics on top of that. Yeah. This game's godlike, simple. Uh, Illy, you know, I've been a big advocate of you saying, like, this guy's got to be on a team. Like, what's going on? Like, you were one of the, the players in that generation that they just love COD, right? Everybody talked about how much time you put in, how many aids yeah. you were playing, things of that oh, nature. Godlike. Yeah, for you to take such a long break, what was that like, man? Because you were so silent throughout that time as well. You weren't tweeting, you weren't posting videos, you weren't streaming. Talk to me about all that. Just watch it. Honestly, I was just chilling, to be honest. Like, I'm like... I decided like whatever like I'm like gonna take like the season off and just chill and uh, yeah I was just chilling I was just focusing on myself you know um, just getting ready uh, for uh, next year like uh, what well, yeah that's simple just simple as that love it well you're back and you're walking away with a W in your first match when before you go give me a little call out one for each of your teammates and a, and a quick correction to the chat apparently Abuza not French from Belgium, guys. All right, everyone should know yeah, that. He's from Belgium. Now. Yeah, but he speaks French. <laughs> Tell me about your teammate, Tilly. Who do you love? All of them. Like, uh, everybody, to be honest, is equally. Like, everyone's just, like, I, like I said, man, like, I couldn't have hoped for uh, better teammates. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say... Yeah, I, I like them all. <laughs> yeah, all right, save that for the podcast. We'll be catching up with Illy a little bit later. Surge gets the second win of the night. We'll uh, let you go I, celebrate. Honestly, I would say, I, honestly, I would say, like Kyla just because me and him have like that bond, like just from like yeah. before, like wanting like champs together and everything. So yeah, I like, but, like that. I, it's I couldn't vote for better teammates. For Yo, we love, bro. Illy, go enjoy your night. Thank you. Have a good one, boys. Good to see him back here in the COD League, and Illy and the Surge are getting the win over LA Thieves. But that was just match two of three. Ali, what comes up after this? It's drum roll! Optic Texas and New York Subliners are coming up after this. They're already talking about it in the chat. Remember, if you're watching, you might as well be earning. Link your accounts right now. Your YouTube account and your Activision account combined to earn you the Mirror's Blueprint. You can get the TV, Charm, a clutch, a kick, and blow. A whole lot of fun. All you got to do, link your accounts right now. And of course, speaking of technology, We've got some of the finest here, Allie. Read number five. <laughs> Never miss.
us a match of your favorite teams with the Call of Duty League calendar sync. And here is the fun part. When you add a calendar, you'll also receive a squad up calling card you can use in game. Hey, that's right. fire actually. Sync it up. It's going to help you know when your team's playing and you get some gear in the game. You got to love it. All right, chat, let us know what do you think about the first day here back on YouTube? What do you think of the first day of matches? We had a game five, a game four, and when we come back, I got to get a prediction here, Nameless. Is this going to be short and sweet or hot and heavy? Another game five going the distance. Hell no, this is a game five. This is about to be an absolute banger. Stay in your seats. Optic versus Subliners, the world champs, when we come back. <laughs> Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
ready to kick it off in the city of Boston where champions are born. When we sleep, heaven sent hands down, vibes so unique. All right, I'm told the players are almost ready, so we're gonna make this one sweet and swift. We've got Optic taking on the New York Subliners. Alley Cap, for anyone who missed last year, why is this a big deal? This is a big deal because they lost their king and scum who retired, and now this year they have brought Kenny and Fred onto the main starting lineup. We got a fresh look of Optic Big Bruce back in the building. He, of course, one of two players returning on the lineup. Shotzi, the other one, nameless. What were they looking to build on? Listen, uh, they're trying to find more consistency and bring in players who've been winning world championships, right? Like, Kenny has been dominating. Fred is on the up and up. He can fill any role, basically. He's going to be running AR or sub for this team. It doesn't matter depending on the situation. This is a star-studded team and what better match for them going up against the world champs that's the ultimate achievement and they're trying to see if this is the roster that can really take them down and now for the monster energy pregame for optic texas their overall record was third in the season last year and their map one record was 30 and 18 first in the league this is a team that was disgusting at hard point and online somehow they got better at 19 and 5. optic texas the expectations always very high for them i think specifically on pred's shoulders looking to kind of be the big studded superstar sub alongside of shots and it looks like they're really stressed out there in the optic camp all smiles the whole <laughs> squad is looking forward to this battle, but you got to take your opponent seriously because everyone underestimated the New York subliners that went on to win the world championship in addition to two other events. And Hydra, well, he helped lead this team. Controller player of the year. The whole industry recognized what he and the rest of the squad accomplished. Yeah, I mean, I feel like last year when we talked about New York, we were just looking at how perfect this roster was. They had two yeah. very good ARs, utility players who could do anything, and you had two amazing submachine guns and the star in Hydra, and we know what Kismet can do the grunt work he's fine with being yep. in, the, in the objective and taking those routes well they just wanted to join the rest of the gang and make a roster change they got rid of Priesta and they bring in Sib he's from Seattle Surge and he's known to pick up a ton of kills was it necessary we don't know yet what do you want to see Ali you're the AR player here at the desk what do you need from Sib here as we take a look at the monster energy pregame we need to see him at what he was doing last year on Seattle Surge sometimes he was just taking over games he was very high octane high engagement player and for New York subliners that's a really tall hill to climb because they were first last year with Priesta meaning Sib has to do and perform better New York came in with one of the lower seeds in their online play, still able to steal that first major. They also won the fifth major, and Kismet, both of those events, was my MVP. He is going to be leading this squad, and I want to hear the comms throughout this series eventually when we can. Let's take a look at the maps and modes, Ali. Where do you think the subliners are going to need their communication to be on point the most? Obviously, it's going to be Karachi. I mean, you see that in your map one and number three. We saw earlier today there is just so many places that 
that you have to check. If for New York, those comms are going to have to be on point, and I'm looking at Kismet the Bulldog specifically, also put up for Controller Player of the Year. He did lose it to his subduo in Hydra, but I don't think he's too upset as that, knowing that his teammate was the winner. Optic versus New York. It's time to make it official here on the desk. The players are ready, so let's go quite swiftly. Are you ready, Nameless? Yeah. I'm going to go first. I'm going with New York as a New Yorker from Manhattan. Got to pick the subliners, and they won the world championship. Ooh, this is tough. I don't remember what I picked this morning. I, I think New York. I think I'm going with Staying with New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, New York for Ali as well. Nameless? Hey, man, I'm just, like, we with the move from here? Priest to the Sib, it's confusing. I'm worried about their search and destroy, especially now, so I'm going Texas. I think they take it. You really just like Pred, don't you? I mean, yes. Yeah, he, who yeah. doesn't? The guy's a monster. It's got a star-studded lineup on either side of this series. And to bring you all the action, we've got Merck and Maven back in the building. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much. Here we go. Uh, this should be an absolute banger. Yeah, our world championship team. Before we dive into this too much, I just want to ask you as a former professional and absolute stud on the map. Wow. A change after World Championship like pained you a bit. I remember you were just like, how? I just thought the system made sense, man. I, I just thought their teamwork was great. They were so far ahead of, of everyone on huh? every single game mode. But, you know, you, you listen to some podcasts, right? It was the, their coach, uh, D-Real. He just kind of said, if you have a chance to pack a punch, you got to go for it. And they went for it, right? They saw the improvements of other teams uh, in the league. And maybe they were just worried about sort of some of these teams building God squads, whatever it may be. So they we'll said, see. we'll see. Screw it. Let's add some more firepower because that's what Sib is. The question will just be, what's the chemistry going to be like between Skies and Sib, getting them on the same page? And now as we get quickly into this, into our first map, I just know for Optic, you are a big Kenny guy. I love were, that, man. <laughs> I sure do. You were excited about this move and what he could bring to this team, right? I mean, listen, like... And Kenny, he is just a guy who I have seen in practice rooms time and time again. He cares about sort of the team, the systems that they are building, making sure everyone is on the same page. He has a style of Call of Duty. It is a successful one. He's trying now to bring it to Optic. And I'm curious to see if he'll be able to do that. It's kind of our two big takeaways to discuss before we get into this map one. And now we get rolling. And in the hard point thus far, it is Optic Texas locked and loaded, racking up time. Early RDC, top of the map. That'll be Pred that's early on the rotation. He's going to have a one-on-one -on -one starting to develop here with Kismet. Yeah, but you saw, I, I think with Sky spawning and, you know, his teammates spawning out. He knows that there may be someone here, right? The comms are sort of, where's Kismet? Where's Kismet? There we go. We're able to find him. His first kill, official kill in the CDL under this Optic name. I know he was so excited. He's talked about it, right? All of the chance last year. He didn't know how to react to be happy, but he's got the green wall behind him now. Yeah, it was a tough start a little bit, too, because, like, travel stuff. What Was it visa issues? Like, he was a little bit behind. They had to kind of catch up a bit, right? Scumped thought he was playing. Thought he was playing yeah. in, in a couple of these early matches, but able to get him out here. But an early lead here for Optic. But at P2, the subliners in control. Dashi is trying to get those taps in. One of the better natural aimers you're going to see here on the map. Guy's an absolute animal. Well, there you see it. The headshot <laughs> in. Sim peeled. Another one. Drop in. Skies ripped right off the map. Is Big Brucey getting it rolling early. Fred, nice little snap there. But Hydra, going to be a tough one on one gunfight. That is for sure. It's four in a row, though, now for Dashy. Is he starting to work towards some streaks? Yeah, and they know, right? You see Shotzi around 30 seconds. He backed all the way on up. So as you get to this P3, they knew where New York was, you know, spawning out with those kills coming in. But a nice life there out of Dashy. And we saw in this particular harbor, we cast it in our first series, how big it was. The swings that it made to allow Boston to really get back into the game. Now we're going to head over here again, see what kind of time the Optic crew is able to get. They're in early. Fred going around. His teammate will drop. He's there for the trade. Look, nice little slide and cancel to rip the second player out of action. But. But you are still here for subliners. Look at the left side of your screen. This is what we talk about with this P3. There's not really a close spawn. Sometimes like none. kind of where Kenny is, you can spawn in that area, but it is very rare. So when you get three or four dead, it is so much time towards your side. But a great job by subliners with that first push. Now three dead here for Optic. Sib on four in a row. We've talked about him. Sort of that surge duo going up against one another here in their first match. Yeah, I mean, in, for Optic fans, I'm sure you remember Sib just back to what the Mercado, remember that, like, 1v3, yeah. Like, he has had some spectacular moments against the organization, so they won't forget those anytime soon. But Hydra looked like just in the webcam, he was getting loud for the teammates as he's on four in a row, now up to double digits in 10 and 4. No beating the hard point for now, but he's maintaining this second story. 
Yeah, just trying to find this last player, then maybe starting to earn that time, just dealing with Shotzi. But nobody on the hill, so I guess you'll take this if you're opting, but now 25 second lead for New York just due to that P3 hold and that initial break. But he's just kind of baiting here. Kind of waiting for his teammates to get in a position, trying to play his life. Finally, Pred takes him down. I'm not sure if it's because he was on four in a row, maybe, just building towards streaks as well, or just, you know, you hop in the hardpoint. They're, they're kind of doing the same thing on the other side. You're going to drop instantly. I'm not yeah, sure. I, I think that's it. Just trying to keep top control. Yeah, fighting for positioning, just waiting for your teammates. But yeah, not a lot of time earned here at P4. Not a lot. Like, none. <laughs> a couple of seconds yeah. on both sides. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it has just been everyone sort of baiting who's going to hop in the point. Finally, their optic goes surging on end. So the scrap time and the final 15 or so seconds will go their way. You see the next hard point popping on the minimap bottom left as New York Subliners get ready to rip and roar. Going to be, what, 17 points or so separating these squads. As the next hard point pops in the early gunfights, they go to Skies. He's able to rip down too. Yeah, and well, I mean, obviously they find the first two initial kills, but then Skies responds. You saw Hydra. He was trying to get active. He was trying to get out the away from that hard point to find a couple of kills. But well, right now it is a subliners uh, lead. Let's go to a listen in with our world champions. Yo, dark, dark, dark. And, I don't and, see, bro. I don't see. Oh, dark. He's yeah. in. He might pitch me up behind me. And no. He's on the vending, he's on the vending of hill. Bottom, bottom fire, bottom fire. Oh, oh, he's on the vending, vending of hill, vending of hill. On the vending guys, good job. Shots on the Nice, close up, close up, close up, close up. He's close up, he's jumping. Nice shit, nice. That's good. I'm looking for Dashi. I'm on the hard point. Don't, 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 come in. Bridge, bridge, bridge. AG, AG, one shot bridge, one shot bridge. Dark Paco, absolute bridge. He went top, he went top bridge. I got your Dark Paco. I'm up He's on top of a bridge with a sub. Then top third. Fuck. Spread them, he's on fire. Right now, we're gonna go right. Yo, we should ship left. We should ship left. Get middle left. No, they fall right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave them on the right. Trust me. I got you, I got you. Uh, see, leave him on the right. There, there, there. Bottom fire, bottom green, bottom green press. AG's going on third. AG's going on third. AG's going on third. AG's going on third. He's there, he's there, he's there. Yo, he he wants to. Yo, wait, wait for Paco. Wait for Paco. Yeah, he was bottom green. He has a god pitch. He has a god pitch. Yeah, god pitch. Uh, uh, bottom green, bottom green. Bottom green. Dead. Right Paco, right side time. Right side time. I have a god pitch. Got oh, Paco, pick the hill. One TP bridge. Right side time. One TP bridge. Right side time. Should be bridge. On top, 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 top. Top three. I'm looking. I'm looking. Top three. Nice. Hold up. Hold up. I'm getting third. Have the middle. Have the middle. Have the ramp. Have the ramp. Yo, could be back. One could be back. I hear the back call. I hear the back call. I'm looking back. It's only that. Top three. I'm watching. Shoulder three. Shoulder three. Yeah. We are back, and the subliners' comms are good. They still got a big advantage, but a little bit of a double dip here. Let's hear the comms on the other side. Right to a listen-in with Optic Texas. Let's go time. Let's go time. Let's go time. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hard stop, stop, bros. Trying to hit him with a nade. Try to get on. Wait for y'all. Oh, a dive into the comms with both teams. Joe, uh, I don't know, any like simple takeaways from early listening? Uh, from the New York one, I love the patience, right? You heard just wait for Paco, wait for Paco at that P1, and they did just that. I mean, for Optic, comms are clear. Just not able to find that break there at P2, but an opportunity here. I think a must-win hill for Optic at this P3. The rotation is very early. You already have Dashi on the hill time. You have Pred kind of looking out, looking for early kills on rotation. One more player under him, Shotzi on the other side of the map. This is the chance that Optic needs. You know, put themselves, what, within 10, 15 points. Yeah, I mean, they had an early setup here, kind of, but it got mixy really early, right? Last time through P3, they just couldn't turn that into a big hole. It was an early break from New York. This time, they've got to shut it down. A bit of a chow. Out, people dropping. Sip finds two picks. You have another chance to get a break here. We didn't see a break at all in phase versus Boston. Maybe back to back now for subliners. Dashi's going to drop. One more in the back is Shotzi. You're inside the hard point, and it's just looking a little too easy right now for subliners. Yeah, I mean, Shotzi luckily gets a close spawn, and now maybe the chance oh. for update to switch over the pistol. Kenny off his spawn, works through the middle of the map, able to find two. But I think if you're NYSL, you take this, right? Because, yeah, I wait, mean, yes. <laughs> what, 30 to 40 seconds are going to go their way, so they keep it mixy, not a full 60, still going to have a, a solid lead here as we go over to P4. Yeah, not that it's going to be a full 60 every time, but that, that's one of the hard points you can hammer people on, and they did a good job just making sure it wasn't perfect. 
but for Optic, you get a good chunk of the time at least. Is that going to be enough to start swinging back into things? Just fried out of it is Hydra takes that gunfight versus Pred. Last time at this hard point, nobody really got any time. All the points and all the fights basically around the point. We'll see if anyone can turn it into time. It's just been a battle on the outskirts. I mean, we've had a couple of hills where nobody's really been in it. I, I have watched a lot of scrims, and I have not seen really sort of this playstyle just playing for map position over sort of the hill. I mean, obviously, it's very important. Both teams are playing that way, but now you're going to kind of have to start paying attention to that play clock. There's yeah. two minutes left. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. Are we on sub base, or yeah. where are we? Yeah, NYSL. They do find some of that time, but there we go. Four dead, and now a chance here for Opti to get this scrap time. You see the rotation over to P5. That is exactly where Pred and Dash are set up. Will the swing come here? He'll bring it back within about 40. Hydra just ripping off heads. Dashy just gets gunned to sleep as he hits the edge. You're plus 12 right now if you were Hydra as our controller player of the year continues right, to show how talented yeah, he is. Yeah, he's showing uh, how good of a player he still is. Doesn't matter the title. Finding that time, now hitting the 200 point mark. And well, he's gonna have a freebie as Kenny jumps on in. Here comes the rest of Optic on a break attempt, but it's gonna be traded out effectively for the subliners. Just have one more guy up, one gets a close spawn and just enough presence here to maintain it. Another hit coming in, basically everybody through that right side of the minimap trying to funnel on through, but the numbers are gonna get back in time for subliners as well. Pred the opener. Yeah, yeah, a little double, double bendy machine setup here from Skies and Kiz both on top. Kiz now inside with Hydra. Kiz been on five in a row. They cannot win it here, but they get pretty darn close. As Kiz wins another one, now has the cruise for some extra utility. Oh, uh, it's coming in right away. He wants it. Cruise in. Looking for spawns. Trophy is there. Gobble, gobble. We already had Thanksgiving. It's Christmas season now. What, what do I do, like a reindeer? I don't think you could do that, but NYSL now on the hill. A couple of more seconds. Kenny's still there, 26 and 21 from Ken. Kismet though up to eight, and that should seal the deal. He's got one more one on one. Good luck, Shotzi, the subliners. A statement map here in game one. Listen, if you saw the coaches poll, you know, they were in what, like B tier? Uh, you know, people saying they're a little bit behind maybe, but what did we see last year? Kind of a similar situation, a bit behind it, winning major one. And even if they were a bit behind, once we get to these matches, I mean, they're the world champions. Not surprised to see them coming out with Fury map one. I mean, if you, you can be a bit behind in scrims, you're just learning, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that is sort of the key. Losing it's, is learning. It's great to win scrims, but yeah, if you're just figuring out what you want to do on match day, then then so be it. But still, just only the first map of, uh, of our series. But you can see here, Hydra right back to it, 29 and 16. Kismet, his SMG duo right alongside him. And on the other side, it was just uh, Kenny. Positive for Optic. Yeah, I had the damage there for Kenny and the kills as well, but yeah, everybody else in the blender a bit, the deeper that map got. And it was a weird one though. Like, yeah, no, it was, yeah. Both teams playing for position, leaving the hill, kind of a, a, you know, nobody in it, uncontested. Yeah, and I just don't know. I mean, obviously they played in the favor of NYSL, they ended up winning by about 100 points, but yeah, it wasn't even like it was just like a central point. Just multiple times you see everyone fighting for position. And well, sometimes maybe you are going to have some. Uh, it's early in the title. Some awkward moments you have. You have to, especially for Optic, who's a very new roster in many ways. People kind of trying to figure out how they want to play certain spots. Well, I just think on that hill. I mean, I get it. If you have a. That, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, yeah. you're down low. Like, yeah, you're probably oh, going to lose. Like, we were watching Hydra. Yeah, if any time he would have hopped to the point, he would have died. Like. <laughs> So he just kind of chilled to see if the guys could get back, but like everyone was fighting to try and get to the actual hard point. And you see kids been here with a triple to seal it. Good luck beaming somebody off of this heady, but they got a rival in their hands. Good night. Nine streak is what it ends at. All smiles for the Bulldog. Yeah, you and I were kind of talking earlier, just like, you know, maybe why is this team, if they are struggling in streams, I'm sure they're fine, right? But Karachi, you have the two subs. And I just think if I'm the subliners, I want a two sub meta all the time with the way that Hydra and Kismet are on the map. Yeah. Uh, you probably want as little as ARs as possible. Um, yeah. and, and maybe that's just a part of it. Karachi could be their best map. Yeah, and I, I think we'll probably get, usually as the year goes on, you know, you'll have two subs, sometimes Weapon three. Balances. We just have a lot of, yeah, it's pretty heavy AR obviously right now. But yeah, so far, so good. Uh, looks fantastic for that team. Now, we'll see how Optic can bounce back as we get to search and destroy. You know, Dashi has been brilliant in that. But like that, what do you think is the hardest thing when you make a team change like this where you've got 
but I guess part of your core stays, but it's a big mix up, right? Like you've got two superstars coming into the team. What's harder, like search, respawn to kind of get clicking? Well, I, I think respawn should be, I mean, great for this squad, right? I mean, just and you play lane. a lot more, you scrum a lot more respawn too. Right? Yeah, but I, I think search and destroy is just, it's sort of a, can we get on the same page, right? Everyone has their own ways in which they want to approach search and destroy. Just do we agree with one way, right? And if we can find that middle point with the coaching staff with Karma and JP, then yeah, I think they, this should be a disgusting search and destroy team. Yeah, no, the potential is there 100% for them to be just filthy. I feel like anytime you have a team just with this much talent that can all win their ones and make individual plays. Like you've always got a chance in search. Like even if you oh, make some yeah. blunders, like just gun people to sleep. Like we've seen it happen time and time again, but the guy's got to talk through how to bounce back a, a pretty, pretty big defeat in that map one, like a hundred point loss. Um, things weren't really working for maybe some frustration on their faces, but that is this where like, you put a lot of pressure on Kenny, I think, this year, right? Just sort of in a leadership role, maybe how to play the game to a degree? I, I think so. I think the pressure will be there just because, like... Like, in-game especially, because, like, you know, when the coaching staff's not there. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who sort of builds systems, and it does take some time in some titles, right? It hasn't been until the end of the year where they have clicked up, but yeah, if you're optic, true. maybe that's just what you need. And then on the other end, I, I think for Pred, like, this team at times has just lacked some consistent sub slaying since like probably scump right obviously like his retirement like when he was in his prime you knew what to expect from scump 1.1 1.2 no, like shotzi is a brilliant talent event. but he hasn't been that like where you're just a lot of slaying yes, slug, yes. right that is what you brought this guy in for yeah like, yeah be a star just yeah. in that map number one he might not look at the objective but i like he drops a one 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 two all right <laughs> and he looks good doing it but yeah eyes gets the the best of him there yeah, I mean, it's a tough matchup. Hydra is uh, a beast. It's, it's been awesome just to see, like, uh, some of the international spice and flavor that have come in as rookies and, you know, developed into these astounding players. Pred and Hydra, two of the biggest names to have done that. One from Australia, one from France, and what a treat they have been to watch. Hydra hitting it early on, and it's Pred that's going to catch it. That kind of worked out, huh? Yeah, there, there is that, uh, that gunfight, but your favorite part of this map there is a lot of explosions. This Kenny's going to find Hydra with the oil tanker able to take him down. Now a two versus three for Sib and Sky. Who's going to blow up to the map first? Yeah, whether it's a red barrel, these oil tankers, you just never know. You have to be very aware of your surroundings. Shashi just checking him back and forth. They've got this 3v2. Sipping skies, looking for openings around the map. Skies, I thought for a second might take the one-on-one -on -one here, but you're gonna have to make a play at some point. 30 seconds left to go. Here we go. This feels like Optic's so split, right? Just no trade potential in these gunfights. Now a one versus one for Kenny and a three versus two goes to Subliner's way. I mean, when Shati gets taken down, you're hoping that Kenny or Dashi can find an angle to get that trade on the skies. Never happens. So we get into a, a vanilla two versus two and the gunfights go the way of NYSL. Holy, I mean, just that, that POV too from Dash, like just a little tap and check the bomb, like in the timing of this, this slide through and just gets fried off of it. Skies with two in the round. That's an already one you feel good about. You win the two versus three. Good patience. You know, you, you melt about 30 seconds before you start to make your plays. But now Freddy can see the gun. He's like, all right, I gotta go. Sip, out of the round. Yeah, just doesn't even like throw a nade or... or stun bottom blue just ready for it but while this is happening hydra's already around in the base of optics so surprise, if you're sky so you need to wait you have to wait that is bombed down now as well that will slow things down for optic they're gonna have to get that and hello now we're into a nine versus two after the numbers went optics way look at this who is that Fred's trying to reflank it but while that's going on the reposition is here so now if you are dashy, you're just hoping that Pred can find an angle, find a player, and get that bomb. There's a beautiful office setting. Dashy does get the pick on Disguise. All right, so you give yourself a 2v1. This is man Hydra now to 1v2 clutch. Under 30 to go. Pred has acquired bomb. Pressure to Optic to plant. Pressure on Hydra to clutch in this scenario. Did he spot that player? I don't think so. Top heli, maybe his teammates do, but Tom gonna get planted. Dashy Ooh. now with the shots. Pred looking for the trade. He knows he's weak and never yell, able to gun him down. I was a little bit nervous. A four versus two brought back into a 2v2, yeah. but Dashy with a critical kill 
to give them the round. Yeah, what the pick on the skies. No, we didn't see it from our POV, but a huge one in that situation. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Like, sometimes it's tough with Codcaster. Like, yeah, if Hydra got eyes on, like, both players, like, what, what he saw, like, I thought maybe he had vision on the player top heli, or he got horrible timing. It was very close to spotting him. Yeah, sometimes, like, you know, you've spectated your, your teammates before. You feels like a little delayed or you're just looking at something else you can give that call out to your teammate it's just with like the silhouette i just can't like i don't know sometimes you can i can tell for sure what people see sometimes i'm kind of guessing <laughs> yeah i can never see anything i swear <laughs> well kismet they'll line up the first dash he tries to chow the hydra's already got mid map hits through on the cross Pre tries to find it but he's already wrapped back to the pocket and that's a much faster round Four up, four down, peeling them apart and taking a one round edge. It just feels like on these break offs for subliners, just they are always fighting together, right? Every time it feels like we're on an optic POV, they're in a gunfight, not a lot of help. So, but like once they shoot, it's like a second person's hitting it, like quick, right? Quick, yep. Like the angles are there for the fast assist, and we haven't really seen it on the other side too much. All that. That's all the info Kenny is looking for. So he knows this is probably. They're hitting fast, bro. They're going. He only saw one player cross in that window. That's the intel. We're pred on a Hydra, but we're into a three on three as Kismet finds another one on a Dashi. You hear Pred? He's not rocking covert sneakers. He's rocking the, the Deddy field upgrade instead. Oh my god. He's right above him. Oh, Pred's able to get it. Kismet now against the world. There's one. Finesse is back. Eee, you're in trouble now. Yeah, yeah. It was a slide away from one. You're into the angle of the other. Position is there from Optic. They closed it out to 2-2. Two, two we go. But yeah, no, good info and good read on the aggressive push. You saw the minimap. I mean, they were hitting it. Three were sending it. But you said Kenny got info on the cross. Gun up and ready to get that first blood. Take control early for the numbers if you were Optic. Yeah, that's just what this game is all about. Uh, high rise, invasion. Terminal, it's all about these crosses. Watch it's a cross, get info. info. Yeah, how many players cross? Is there a smoke down? And how are we gonna play off that? You know what, Joe, you're smoking hot. I appreciate that. You're welcome, buddy. You're a very handsome man as well. <laughs> Hydra's kind of lurking, coming to his team. He's in a great spot here. Yeah, he's gonna pounce it fine too, and then shots, he's like, all right, I got the trade. But they are ready for it. Dashi now with a potential one versus four. Oh! Imagine, just centered on his forehead. And this is the thing with high rise. With the underground, with the jump ups, you can finesse so much. Until you like can't a Houdini. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> An explosive barrel might have got him if the shots didn't. <laughs> he was tucked right against one. Three, two now. And yeah, you saw, I saw Hydra, like, his eyes, like, lit up, and he was just calming to his team, like, I, I got a spot. Yeah, yeah, wait. <laughs> Got in that position. That's what he has always done just so well. Put himself in the positions to succeed. Find those easy kills. Yeah, you could just see, like, he, had, he knew he had, like, freebies just by his face alone. Some damage in. Oh! The nice. But there is a trade. That's so. a toss. Yeah, with the bounce, but Shotzi was able to find one of his own. Uh, what was he on four in a row? Was, mm, some ways to go towards streaks, but building. Now 2v3 for subliners. They clutched that 2v3 in round one. They came close in a 2v4. There's been some sketchy rounds for Optic when they have numbers. See if they can do a good job this time around. Pred is going hunting. Yeah, I think Hydra shot at some point, so Pred's like, I'll, I'll try to find him. But now it is all down to Hydra, who is on four in a row. Gonna find the timing, but not the kill. And then uh, here comes the rest of the team as Optic him <laughs> to trade him out. Yeah, I was like, is he gonna try to win this, or is he gonna hide the corner for 40 seconds? We'll see how he plays it. But yeah, streaks in this game are, I don't know, not, not quite as powerful as they've been in some other titles. Well, because of trophies. Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, you and I have been casting. We've seen someone on four in a row that is tucked in a corner for a long time, depending on the title. Not gonna happen there though. All square again. Any big takeaways from the early going? No, I think this is a great bounce back here from Optic, right? It feels like they're, uh, well, oh, well, there it is. I knew it was coming at some point. 
Well, you think there's going to be like three or four that die to it at the same time. I, I just know I've watched, I've seen two like triples from a barrel. I was just hoping a whole team gets smacked at one point because that would make me laugh. But you're right, that was just a, a solo explosion. Dashy wins it close and personal there with Hydra. 3v2 for subliners now. Pushing through on the hunt is Kismet. I think just slowly kind of trailing Dashy. Two versus two, and that 1v1 should develop. Yeah, so Kismet's finally able to hunt him down. I saw on the minimap, he's just chasing him around to go to the 2v1. Now, Shotzi, what can you do? Close some doors, make some plays. 35 to work with. Pal, let's see what you got. Nobody really committing to, to bomb plants very often, right? Just waiting for a peek. This time, no, they are going to put it down. Just trying to find that info. Gonna get out. Kismet gonna go top propane. He gets that info. Does Kismet spot him? It kind of looks like kid. Maybe. He's got a hell of an arm. Oh! He's alive. Oh, he's alive. That looked like it hit, but I don't Thought know. Thought it was blown up. Any damage, yeah. Shotzi somehow gets what? it. What? Snaps. Almost snaps onto the second. I mean, he uh, did snap onto the no, second. He, he had seen a couple more bullets. It was that initial movement. It felt like he was trying to get on top of the generator, yeah. and, and it messed with the movement, but maybe gave him a chance. No, I'll say the movement. Yeah, the movement, like, screwing up is the reason he had an opportunity, honestly, because it just looked probably kind of awkward from their POVs. He has bounced up, found, like, an interesting timing. And he probably needed... I didn't see how much damage he did. We got three bullets in or something, I think. That was a quick snap onto the second. You saw the talent on display there. Now we hear the, the start of this round and what it is. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, if you didn't know, actually, Maven did the sound effects of this game. Yep, worked very hard on those. Just for this map. <laughs> no, nobody died, though. Early 30 seconds off the clock. We have Kismet going for this outer route. Sib with the first blood. Oh, Fred ready for it. It sure is. <laughs> Not ready for that, though. I thought he was going to lose Avis a little bit there on the railing for just a second, but he was able to regain it. Dashy now. This will be one for the one versus two. Got a couple tags in, but it's a round of subliners. And again, one round away from the 2-0 edge. When they are making those plays, there is always another player alongside of them, whether just right there, right? Kismet saying, hey, I'm going to hop up, get ready for a trade. Hydra was coming up from underground, coming up from blue, has that trade. With Maybe a little advantage in the small talk when you, you know, you're a world championship team for the most part. Oh, it, no doubt about it. It's just like, it is a much bigger change that Optic did versus this team. You should be a little bit ahead, I would think, in like the communication department and little stuff like that, right? Especially between those two. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Nobody to drop yet. So looking for that first blood. Hydra on eight and five might have the first fight here. Oh, oh drops to the corner. Shots, he's just hold it. But once again, there we've been talking about the that smoke ended up being brilliant because that would have been that same type of trade able to get away but the smoke cuts off the angle able to finesse and then the help is there at range for Texas 3-1 advantage like Kismet gets spotted what shots he able to find him spots him so they're ready for it Kismet with a rival in his hand as well not gonna be possible shots he chases him through and there we go and, and I think just from optic you could tell they're probably saying, listen, no matter what, we need to be near one another, ready for a trade. Because that time, as soon as Shotzi started to fight, there was multiple arrows yeah. inbound in that position. Yeah, it seemed a little different, right? And it looked a little tougher because of smoke <laughs> from Sips POV. Good luck. Get it tied up and get us to around 11. We had one in our first series of the day. Can we get another today? Shots at range. Thus far from the MCWs. Shotzi trying to play behind the height. Skies is... What is crawl backwards, son! What is... It? So he... Yeah. He's breaking the window and... Just, that is, just barely outside the ledge, I guess, can get an angle onto him. It, it seems like Shotzi and Skies are playing tag right now. I know. I'd definitely fall off doing 100%, that. hundred percent. 100% I'd be falling to my death. Yeah. I'd be like Spider-Man, but like fat, bald Spider-Man. Just fall and die. Shotzi and Kenny. Nobody have opted the uh -huh. advantage. 
5 HP is Kenny able to get out. While this is going on, Tismet trying to find an angle, trying to work the flank. But you see how powerful top propane is, just able to see all over the map. Yeah, just so much ability to just get prone and finesse as well. Just take people's attention. Kismet, though, may have found the timing. Could White finish the kill? He's got to get away. Shots coming in from everywhere. One lines up in front, not able to do it. Sky's last up, not getting it done. Take us the whole way to around 11. And I feel like sometimes, uh, because, you know, they don't, they only use movement attachments on the Renetti, right, under the, sort of their GA. So I, it's like sometimes you feel like, I'm going to use this pistol, get an easy kill, and get out. But I, I think it's a little bit easier with the MCW. Uh, we yeah. talked to Crowder about that. Like, sometimes it gives you that false confidence. Yeah. They had different attachments. Yeah, probably. Oh, it's like a one-two pop yeah, just cannon, no, right? No, but, yeah, no doubt about it. They're not using the same Renetti you are in pubs, put it that way. No. Round 11, here we go. Who's going to be the playmaker? Well, it's really slowed down these last three to four rounds. Ooh, probably gets smoked by one nade, but oh, oh just gets careful. away. Sib with the first blood, though. On to Dashy. Daddy out. You want to make a play. Looks like he spots Sib. And that is just, Kismet is just re reading that, just ready for it. Kenny, though, makes this a 2 on 3 a winnable round here for Optic. I love this spot, too, from Shotzi, right? You can see that. <laughs> Look at him go. Look at that wiggle. He's on four in a row. Can he keep this streak going for the win? Two versus three, though. Time dwindling. Under 30 seconds to play. Oh, and that's just the worst timing possible because he's on that bomb. Shotzi had the cross oh. to be. He was just ready for it, but he, he jumps over those players, and now he's left in a one-on-three. He's probably so confused when that bomb first gets planted, just based Man. on like how it looked. It's so awkward the timing. Ooh, almost giving out haircuts, but not quite enough. Sim with the first blood in the round 11. Some awkward timing there for Shotzi at the tail end of the round. It's a win for Subliners. Now up 2-0 in the series. Yeah, it all starts with that first blood, and then at that moment. New York kind of know, hey, they have to make a play somewhere on the map. They try to take something back from us, and Kismet just waits. He waits for the pop. Just, it. just, I mean, great play from Kismet. Nobody really stands out on the New York side. Just a great team effort, really, from both ends. Just so back and forth. But New York able to win that round 11. Yeah, I think, like, Hydra early might have been kind of runaway numbers-wise. But, yeah, that it, by the end of it, Definitely a team effort, but a very close map. They kind of ran away with the hard point a bit at the end, but tight throughout it there. Around 11, goes the distance. Um, it's an interesting map. I, I don't I don't know. Like, it just plays because of all uh, the explosive barrels, explosions on the map. You know, there's sort of, I feel like a lot of rounds kind of start a little bit slow, just sort of waiting for the entire map to blow up. Then everyone looks for their openings. Yeah. It's just like a question of, do you want to take a risk somewhere on the map, right? An yeah. underground hit, uh, B Street hit, whatever it is. But when you don't commit to it, it can get a little crazy. Even that, with all the mantling and whatnot in this game. Absolutely can, but that'll do it for the second map. Series not done, though. First to three. Who is going to take the control? What well, Optic battle back. Is this team just filled to the brim with talent? Looking to get things clicking within this series, but a tough opponent. Your world champions from last year. Controller player of the year in Hydra. They are looking strong thus far. Up 2-0. We'll be right back.
upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Don't miss out on all the action at the first Call of Duty League Major, hosted by the Boston Breach, this January 25th to the 28th at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway in Boston. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to callofdutyleague.com for more info. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a fantastic day. Yeah. Day one of many days. I don't know exactly how many days we have in the season, but I'm very excited about all of them. <laughs> I don't know either. I have no idea. I didn't count that. I, didn't, I don't work on a league, league outside anymore, so I don't know. But yeah. It's been awesome to be back. I know this is day one. I know this is day one. That's about all we know. But hey, hope you guys are enjoying the show at home. Um, listen, I usually be like, we have so much more action coming tonight. We might not. We might have one more map. I'm not really sure, but guess what? We have action tomorrow. We've got action Sunday, the week after that, and after that, and after that. It's going to be a great time. If you are a Call of Duty esports fan, I'm going to correct Thank you for watching. After next week, we have a holiday party. Okay, I am a liar. That's a good <laughs> point. We do. <laughs> never mind, we have Christmas. I'm going to give you a Wait. tip, everyone. Just never listen to what he says. Yes. That's Yo, what am I, I still do. dressed up as Santa? For yeah. your kid, dude? I'm going to come and go, ho, ho, ho. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I'm dressed up as Santa. I'm ready to we'll figure that out. I'll get one of those big let's, white beards and stuff. Let's lock it down. Good point, Joe. Off. Map three. Time to get a rocket optic. Looking to bounce back. This is what someone's like, these guys just goof around too much. <laughs> They're in game knowledge. Uh, well, between maps, I'll say whatever I want. Hydra, while well, he's shooting whatever he wants, the beams are on point, shots he's getting dropped, and... Now looking for openings on the point is Hydra. You'll see him bottom left of the map, just looking for an angle, and he'll catch Shotzi sprinting. Shotzi so far has uh, spawned up twice and just ran into Hydra. But it's just a, it's a different thought process than me, man. Just, Finds that kill immediately in the enemy spawn. Uh, we haven't seen Karachi control today, but I, I would say I think it's winnable for both sides. You know, this is an offensive. I mean, if you get control of B, right, the defensive team has to try to retake from both of those alleyways, either jump over that dumpster or try to go top plat. It is not easy whatsoever. But New York, they're kind of playing around the slays, and Heiser is just right back to the defensive base. I mean, this is just what this guy wants to do. He wants to be annoying as hell, I think is uh, what it seems like. Yeah, but. Just catch you off spawn, but you're still sprinting to get back to the action. Well, that happens. He gets taken down to the two of his teammates. So only one take done at A. And Skies has just been hanging out at that cafe, just waiting for his teammates to get over there. Yeah. Like, boys, I've ordered us dinner. Yeah. Is anyone going to come eat with me? I'm all about lonesome. No one been able to get there yet. His optic continues. Woof. Got through the lines. Hydra, nice shot. Skies, finally his dinner date is over. He ended by himself. He had to pay the entire tap, and he is out of the mix. Kenny just throwing haymakers like he's young Mike Tyson, laying people out, and Sib there with the double. 20 seconds to go, though. Not a lot of progress offensively. You know, I mean, it's something that turns around AR Kenny. I, I would not have any the way he has been shooting, especially in these respawns. Only 11 seconds left. One player in skies, or sorry, Kismet, able to get over towards B and at least pause that clock. The rest of his teammates trying to get there, but look at this pinch here by Shotzi. It looks like Skies, though, is ready for it, at least turn around for a second. But now, you're just waiting for Shotzi. He could end the round right here. What kind of time he does he get? Finds the first. It's just a little pistol pre-fire pop. <laughs> trying to hit it inside. Not able to, and Hydra will drop him. Still 9.2 on the clock, and what may have been like, what, two ticks only for a subliner? Suddenly you've got two points of progress on both. Lives department, you're basically even, so you've still got a chance to do this. You should have a lockdown. That's about to finish. The pressure has been there, and now we go. The B side pressure enough to open up A. And while this is happening, I just in the spawn again. I mean, Shocking. Just looking for the players off the of spawn from Optic. Trying to go for that pinch. Sky's gonna find the first pred though. I you know, winning a couple of these key gunfights. He has done it multiple times. On to Hydra, looking for those spawn kills, but 50 seconds left, nine versus nine. Oof. Thought he maybe had one, the crossfire comes in. Back to spawn we go. Trying to get aggressive on spawn a bit, looks like Shotzi and Pred. Oh, that hit him, that stuck him, so Shotzi with two. Beautiful stuff there from Shotzi, and that gives, I mean, they're big kills because you get a three life advantage now. Eight versus five, 25 to go. Explosions all over the screen. Pred with another big kill in the clutch moments. I think Cashy somehow avoided that frag though. So now 7v4. In New York, they're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to attack this objective. Opti just need to play together. And there we go. There's a team shot from Shotzi and Pred. 
But these are the moments where New York should be so oh, close. No. That's going to be three dead. Kenny now. Oh, no. Kenny's going to try to stop this, and he does. Finds one. But Hydra and Sky still alive. Does the nade connect? And we get him. There's the team nade as well. So the nades are there. It's zero point zero. Sky it's taking down an optic. They hold on in round one. <laughs> oh, my God. Shotzi with one. The follow-up, the nade, I mean, it's Kenny. Kenny with the shots and the nade probably is what does it. I mean, he gets the damage through to set it up for the other guys. But a wild into that control. And one that looked like it was going to be done three minutes ago. <laughs> like, they had what? It was like 10 seconds left. They had two ticks of progress, something like that total, and it came down to that. So, I mean, great job, I guess, from New York getting the extra progress, but then great ice from Optic to make sure they don't get the round wet. Yeah, sort of 7v4, 8v4. New York made that last push, almost made it happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, th I think you can take a little bit of a win from both sides, but the fact is the round one goes to Optic. I'm kind of in this mid-map stalemate for both teams. Pred just kind of lurking through bottom fountain right now. Well, he's going to find two kills. Oh, immediately Fred after is hungry. that. Can he get right on this A point? And he's going to have a lot of company here soon. As he gets dropped to look for the clearance of a bit of progress, but he did get one tick done. And Shotzi's movement there. I'm not sure he hit a bullet, but he was moving. Yeah, you kind of see, I mean, as soon as you get on this eight point, that forces the defense to come out of their positions. You just have to be ready for Ooh, those trades from top three. Shotzi's shooting well, though, 14 and 10. And throughout this sort of hotel area, my man's been cooking. Tries to get right back to the fight, but it's Kismet. With the wall bang, that'll shut him down. Oh, the timing there, just like I thought he was gonna hold the ADS for a moment, but Kenny will be on the receiving end of that one. Leaking all the way behind is going to be Dash. He's now set up at B. He's like, we saw Skies earlier in the round, but now he's got help a little bit faster. The boys want to meet him at dinner, Joe. No, I mean, the whole, uh, the, the whole team is here. Yeah, yeah. and you kind of have what Hydra was trying to do from Shotzi, so he spawns him out further. Preds watching the pinch. You only have, what, two players on it now? So it's going a little bit slow. One tick of progress done. And it looks like the one player maybe to kind of stop this is going to be Sim. Sim is on the pinch. Him and Skies both going to find kills. This is what New York need to retake B. And yeah. they'll do just that. They break on through. The Renetti hits. Yeah, he talked about being a movement for Renetti, but Skies has got no problem picking up the kills. And yeah, I mean, looking at that, like they were on the point, like Pred was kind of like the off guy that was trying to slow them down and find kills. He got one, and then just couldn't continue to be annoying. They're well, able to push tough. through and get presence. I mean, well, first of all, I have to go right back to B. Now you only have, it well, looks like that second takes not done, so the time is in a extend. But yeah, when you're watching those pinches, you have middle of the map, you can go top red, bottom red, on the pinch, you go top red. There's just a lot of different times. Yeah, you true. not go your way. But the killers are going optics way. 14 and nine now. Life advantage. The shots in with the nade and the <laughs> shot combo. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. 18 and 12 now. Four shots. He 19th dialed up. Two more pushing him. Timing just a little awkward. He looks right. They come left. But it's Optic Texas that are able to get the win. Shots. He's got the pressure on spawn, slowing him down. And Optic fighting back in this series. You can see the potential right from both ends. This is a it's a pretty 50 50 map, right? Like you have yeah, opportunities yeah, yeah. on both sides. Feels like more than invasion, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a little mixy, especially around that hotel area. Just, yeah, what timing do you get with all the two-story buildings, different alleyways? Well, Shotzi led the way through our first two rounds. But New York 2-0 up in the series. See if they can start to bring it back. So close in that round one, but the clutch from Optic, massive. Oh. He's right back to it, Joe. Wow. I mean, great shots from Kenny, but yeah, no, I imagine a lot of the times are, yeah, Hydra's probably in our base. Uh, be ready yeah. for him to be in this position. I mean, Shotzi was doing it on the other end, so those sub players just going on those flanks, trying to find people jumping off a of spawn. But again, just a fight for middle of the map. One life difference nice here. Shots. Sky's nice top shots. three. The team shot comes in from middle alley. Almost three dead, but Dashi's headshot connects. Yeah, say if Sky's on his head, he might get that one there, but that's the difference. Sib 
just in the objective in the points and we we're kind of wondering you know it's going to be objected by committee at times so replacing a player like priesta if you were a sib i don't know did put more pressure on skies to be in the objective was sib going to maybe pick up that role a little bit we we're curious to see how it plays out over time I mean, Sim's just gonna do whatever the heck this team does, right? What wants him to You're do. You're coming into a world champion, I think, right? Like, yeah. what do you guys need me to do? Well, you want me to play, I am with it. Your system works, so yeah. I'm just gonna shoot as straight as I can. But Optic, they defend A before it is completed. Kismet, it is his turn to go for a couple of spawn kills. Able to find one, but the timings just have not gone New York's way. Oh. Every time they have pushed that alley. And that's, that's what's tough, too, you know, with the the respawn timer and stuff and control, like just getting the timing exactly right on when they're going to be coming off of it. So you can end up getting two or three kills or you can end up leaving, leaving something wide open. But it's similar to the first round, the sense that they've got like two ticks, time's dwindling, and this is when there was a heroic effort. Life's a little bit different though. They got, it's even now versus what they were a little bit of a hole last time through. I'll tell you what, Shotzi is shooting right now. It feels like he is warmed up and they're going for the retake now. With Pred winning that one on one, pressure on New York to get done with this eight point, extend it for a minute. Kenny still locking it down. Kenny with two, he has done this again. But there we go. That heady looks so nuts from that angle. It is wild. You don't even see a head. You see, like, you wouldn't even see me because I don't have hair. He barely sees like a hairline. <laughs> like, that, dude, it is bonkers. Nice awareness, though, there from NYSL to find Shotzi. In their base, Shots. Dashy though. Gonna turn this into a seven versus nine. Well, it was kind of awkward. Shouts they bump knees as they round the corner. A team kill comes in behind Pred as his Simtex takes out Kenny. Four v eight. And this was yeah part of the difference I was saying a little bit earlier. Like you, the lives were a much better place than last time. They didn't have to have the same maybe heroic effort. Now no respawns remaining. You just get sliced down. One player left on optic. He will fall in New York. This time around they're able to take the offense. And optic almost had that. I mean it's pretty. I, there's a lot of similarities that first offensive round honestly for New York. Yeah, just comes down to the time limit. Able to clutch up at a. Kenny almost found three. Like, maybe if he has one more teammate to, to watch that middle alley, they have a chance to shut that down. But New York, stay alive. Well, when we switched, like, POVs there, like, for a second, I thought he, like, killed everybody. Because you're, like, <laughs> Kenny with two. And, like, we saw the angle of the person trying to, like, shoot his head. Didn't look right. So I'm like, is he about to three-piece him up? But I, he dropped right during it. Stunned. And the jump. Well, it doesn't work when you're stunned up, buddy. Nice opener from Optic. And the information behind the stun leads to a kill for Shotzi. Great start. Shotzi up to 25. And well, now they have to find Shotzi. Able to take him down as he takes down one, but look what this does. This just relieves so much pressure on the map. Two players on A, A almost done. Are New York even gonna go for this? No, yeah, all the that, focus is gonna be on B. That's the fastest hit we've had so far. Well, fastest success. And that's off the opener. You get, what, three or four down? We've seen that so many times in control. You have a flawless opening, you get a point. To go with it so now you've got a four life advantage you have what two minutes or so to work with you're feeling damn good if you're up close this out here and pushes to a map four yeah things will slow down here a bit with hydra's position you're going to see after start to spawn towards the bottom right side of your mini map right you're, they're going to have to take some longer routes they're already here kenny shotzi pride all win their one-on-ones and now it's down to hydra the person playing Forward in the Opti base has to come back and try to help his teammates. And now look at this. All through this dumpster alley. This is not fun. We've all been here, but somehow they get through. They find that first kill. They're using their teamwork and their nades. But Jenny's still ready for it. Yep, yep. Just keeps on shooting. The pre-fire there for the last. Just funneling through over and over again. And me putting in the blender. Finally, the pressure may be here. Sib knocks over two. And they'll clear them out of the point for now, but you've still got almost two minutes to work with, a six life advantage, things just getting better and better. You're watching like an NFL game or something, you see like the percentage of who's got a chance to win, it's increasing moment by moment here for Optic. Props to uh, New York, I, I don't know how they got out of that that alleyway. I mean, they, I thought they were done for sure, but able to, to slow things down still. But that's down the damage been done. <laughs> yeah, still down by, well now four lives. Optic right back to it. So far, they're holding. This would be a hell of a hold. It's like, can they get back the lives? Can they keep chipping away at it? Bring us back to even.
Zopta gonna be pained around a four or so life advantage, and they're still doing it here. A lot of these roaming one-on-ones, though, that we saw in map one, go the way of New York, going the way of Optic here. Fred and Shotzi with those SMGs. Uh, <laughs> Skies. Up, but Skies is chilling. He's got five in a row. He's toying with him. They send him back to respawn again. It's just reset after reset. Two life advantage now. Dwindling bit by bit, Joe. There's another push. Man advantage here for Optic. Trying guys to do it again. For dear life. It's trading effectively is New York. 8v6, 20 seconds to go. Just one tick needed for Optic. They're able to stop the clock here for a moment. Trying to snap back in the back alley is Skies. Hydra now there. They've been trading 5v4. Down to one life advantage. Shotzi holding the back dumpsters. There's multiple to deal with. Kismet able to get over the wall. Now up to Kenny. He's going to get dropped. Two versus three. Yeah, but they, they two versus two. They Four seconds to go. Well. So now it's a one He's actually able to win it. One versus two. One versus one. Texas gets it. I gotta see the end. Look at hop back. I need to see how the final kill went down. Well, I think he just comes off his spawn. The last player comes off his spawn. Like, yeah, it was a 2v2, but the one player is off spawn for Optic. The fact that Dashi gets that kill with the Renetti on the point, pauses the clock, gives, I think it was Shotzi time to come off a of spawn and get that win. I gotta see that again, because it, it's just chaos in there at that point. There were like, so many trades back yeah, and oh, forth. Yeah. We're, we're just hopping around, seeing who's getting the kill. At that point, I'm just calling who's left in the match, for God's sake. Wow, what a wild one there, but it keeps Optic alive. So let's see this again. So yeah, I was even, I was like looking at the lives. I haven't looking at the mini map. I was relying on you to see that. And it's what? We'll wait till this gets dwindled down a little bit to see how the final seconds play out. And it slows down our brains a bit after the frantic finish. Yeah, it's like Optic have the advantage, but the numbers, right, are, are on the point are here for New York. You can see that it is very sort of split if you're Optic. You have one player pushed up, couple of players off a of spawn. And this is where it gets mixy. It's a four versus two. Hydra and Sim try to do what they can. So it's Shotzi. Right here, it is Shotzi. It's a 1v2 for Dashi, pretty much. But he's able to find the first, and he pauses the clock. Just a couple of more seconds. Shotzi off his spawn is like, And who was here. it that slid by? Like, if you would have been able Hydra. to get the trade, but you just slid too far by. If you just, like, peek that, well, you might just get popped if you peek that, too. But, oh. It might have still been weak. Look at Hydra. just like, ah, oh, it's got to be a frustrating one. But I have to stay alive wow. in the series. A great control right there. Yeah, I mean, our smart little dose of control we've had so far, that was a blast <laughs> compared to maybe Invasion or <laughs> something. Like that Chaos. Was nuts. Absolutely nuts to tail in as we take a look at the statistics. Thank you, broadcast team, for a quick replay. We've got to slow that down and break down how it finishes. It was a madness there on Karachi. Sib with 34. Shotzi doing his thing at 32. Damage wise, I mean, what? Kenny led the way for Optic. 7,000 for Sib. 7,000. Yeah, I think that's the highest we have seen yeah. today, no doubt about it. But I think the difference from game one is your subs got going. Shotzi and Pred, they started winning more one-on-ones, and you can see that in the Hydra stat line, in the Kismet stat line. Those sort of lurking, roaming gunfights started to go their way. And Hydra, he was in positions. Just some timings didn't go his way. Every time, we were like, he's in the spawn, he's in the spawn. And that could be two kills for you, or... Yeah, you taken down. And that's also something with New York that's going to be it's just a little bit different. Like we were talking about with you go from a player from like from Priesta to Sib. Um, listen, Priesta is a phenomenal talent, but he wasn't usually the guy on this team that was putting up seven thousand damage and lead the way in kills. Like he yeah. he he had his moments, but he didn't really need to be. Um, you know, just filling gaps, doing the dirty work. That's what he was a lot of the times. So like Sib now he comes in and seven thousand damage is a lot of damage. Like my guy is shooting, but like it's just different like a different component in this team versus having Priest. That's to be something I have to work on. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, still, I mean, some of those rounds, they made, they almost pulled them out. And I think that's what you, you know, you're talking about the coach talking about a pack-a-punch, like, I get that's it. That's it. That's I, I get it. it. I get it. But yeah. shoots very straight. You didn't get the map win. So it's just going to take some time and we'll see. We see how it continues to work out, but monster, monster map individually, but we continue on in this series. Yeah, no, I'm happy about that, right? Yeah, We're going to yeah. Terminal Hardpoint now. These two teams, it feels like the subs of Optic have gotten going, but should be mainly ARs if we, as we have seen yeah. throughout the day. And we'll get ready for the Terminal. Um, but this has just been, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I think these are two teams. Okay, I've been excited to see basically everybody because everyone made a change when yeah. you talk about the CDL, but Optic especially, just, you know, kind of this post-scump world we're living in. All the talent that comes in. Pred for us has been 
one of the more fun players to commentate. I mean, I'll never forget some of the moments we had back in Vanguard. I damn near lost my voice screaming about his plays. You know, last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kenny is just, you know, listen, we'll, we'll just be biased. We love Kenny. He just has a player and a person. Like, he is sensational. So we've been really excited to see what he's going to do. And how will the world champs thing go? Do you make a change after a win? I... Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I kind of get it, right? Because there's a couple of ways to look at it. Not only are you getting Sib for his skill, but when you bring someone new in, that player is motivated because they didn't win last year, right? And it brings an energy to a, a team that is yeah. coming off a world championship. It's like, hey, let's lock back in. I want to do it again, right? I, I want to do it with this squad. So I, I think it's a great thing for the team environment in itself. And he's a bad man. Look at him right now. Like, no, he's, he's cold. His name's Dante. Like, Yeah, he's a cool dude. There's yeah, no doubt about just, it. Well, I just want to be as cool as him one day. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. His name's Dante. No, yeah. You're, That's awesome. You're old. So. Oh, it's true. Yeah. But uh, game is ready. We'll get into it before we go too far off the rails. Thank you, everybody, for watching at home. Uh, to Terminal we go. Optic trying to bring it back in this series. Tie us up at 2-2. Maybe we'll get to a map five. We had one to start it off. We'll see if we can get the whole way there, baby. Why not? Bum, bum, bum. I mean, the first time we casted this one, it was uh, interesting. I mean, no one got over 20 kills. Um, just, yeah, it's that sort of like game within a game with just your trophies. And yeah, there weren't a lot of mistakes in the, in the match number one, but we saw in last series between Thieves and Surge, there, there was sort of, there were some breaks. That one was a lot too. more fun in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes Call of Duty, the more mistakes that are made, it's like more entertaining. Same with like a, a football game, like more mistakes, but usually is a little more entertaining. Just how it is. No doubt about it, his trades go down two for two, so nobody gonna be on the hill. Shotzi just making sure P2 is controlled for Optic. Well, in New York, they're gonna have to try to push on through towards this area, but gonna be difficult to do so. Dashi just hanging out, making sure his teammates are watching over him. No trophies in the game yet. Hit 4 HP, yeah, he's like, guys, cover me. And he's able to bounce back and get a kill before he is blown to pieces by the frag rate. He comes rolling through from Sib. Quality shots there out of Kenny to take down a second before he falls. But now we look to the mini map and the upcoming rotation. First person kind of set a bottom for P2 is going to be Shotzi. His teammates starting to lurk across and help. And you've got the position here right now for Optic is Kenny on five in a row. And look at this with Shotzi's position. You're spawning top S keys. You got to go all the way across the map. Now, maybe mid hall is a little bit vulnerable here. Uh, but New York doesn't know that, right? Because we're in John Gaster. They're not. Uh, <laughs> so you have two players set up in the back with Fred and Kenny, and while they are taking them down, that is going to be three dead. Sib, the last player alive. And with Shotzi's position, you just have to work all the way across the map. As Kenny on seven in a row, there is that cruise. AR Kenny going off. Yeah, I think maybe you were worried if that funnel came down mid-map, maybe Shotzi takes a little while to track over, but he never had to move. The other boys had it on lock. Now, you do get the clearance at least for an upcoming P3, but the damage has been done. You are rolling right now if you are Texas and behind a monster start from Kenny. So he'll get the rest of this time. Now see how they're maybe able to handle the play. And Shotzi trying to get in, but that didn't look like a fun. Well, I mean, led to a team kill, right? So chalk him up with a kill. Yeah, you don't want one for one, but New York here, they have to respond with a good hold of their own. A 50-point lead here for Optic. And Fred just goes for it. He just sends it. Able to take down one. He weakens up Hydra down to 39 HP. And maybe that is just a heads-up call. Hey, let's go for it. And then it's all four dead and the break. So they knew that they were weak in the setup. Let's hit the front of the plane. And they found that opening. You don't see that a lot often, but they just hit it. Yeah, Fred. Right. Well, guys, it, I, I just hyped that up, and you all just died right after. <laughs> You thought maybe getting into their setup, but smoked out of it right after they did the same thing. I was hyping them up. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, I was saying you don't see it all that often. It happens again, like literally two seconds later. So there we go. Okay, so New York the beauty of Call of Duty Esports. Well, uh, not going to tie the game up because, you, you know, you had Optics in there for a little bit. But over towards Burger, Optic already set up. You've got Shotzi and Dashi playing around the hard point, kind of watching that long security lane. It'll be Fred and Kenny. Everybody pushing up the rescues. You lose both players, I mean, basically for free. Kenny gets one. Now you still have to get across, which can be tough because you've got eyes here. And now the spawn's coming in. It's like step one, get the kills. Step two is to get across. 
Yeah, and, and like maybe on a map that goes back and forth, you're okay with, with this if you're in New York. But the problem is you need back security for the last hill because we're going right over to bookstore. So it's like we kind of still have to push through this lane. And now maybe with two dead, you try to get that time. You get down if you are Kismet. And you hope that your team has a trophy as Hydra gets in a P2. Yeah, I mean, this worked out pretty good from a I don't see if he spawned there or if he was just able to sneak on through. But opted to deal with it. So what you get the final 30 or so seconds, lead change now over to subliners. Next hard point, here we go. Nice little slide and snap there from Skies. And inside the hard point, Dashie gonna win the one-on-one. -on -one. Hydra just kinda waiting for maybe Shotzi to roam. Pushing towards that middle of the hall, but they have to group on up. And you see Pred's position. So even top SCs, when you start to rotate on over, he has a, a lot to deal with. This crossfire is insane for Optic because Kenny's looking over Shotzi. Shotzi has the main hallway. Does get taken down. Here comes the push for New York. Nice shots from Sip. Yeah, and that's just sort of your aim assist to go between both players. Like they double chow out. Always going to be difficult fights to win. Sip makes him pay. Kenny trying to snap back, but not able to do it. He'll drop. New York subliners regain control with 20 seconds to go. And kind of all over the map right now, if you were subliners, you got, well, one top left. All the way towards where you have one set up in the plane, one spawning Heskies. Next hard point's gonna pop, and I'm just looking at where Sib is right now. He's kind of on an island. Yeah, it's like you had a uh, chance there if you were in New York, but now down 20 points, we're headed back towards P1. You just have to try and flip this map so difficult to do. And if you can't do it, you try to get as much time as possible here if you want. I swear, some people's Renee's hit a little bit better, but Dashie is a very accurate man. <laughs> sure the headshots help. No, they do, they do. But it's always been like that for him with an AR. Sometimes I swear, it's like, I swear he's killed one bullet less. The guy just does not miss. Just kind of a standstill as everyone trying to get towards this hard point. Shotzi now looking for the angle. That just, something hit him in the forehead. You know, trying to watch the pitch. Let's say Hydra's trying to make a move on, on the other side of your map. Maybe you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one with Kenny, but Kenny just being very patient. And there is the pop-up. Kenny wins the gunfight. This is just a bit discipline you want to see from Optic on this rotation. Yep, let him get this time. All that matters is the rotation. Discipline there. Oh, his shoulders. Give a little shake and bake. This kid's, yeah, I mean, nice movement from him. And now maybe a chance you have a three on two around the hill. You see where Optic spawns, it's all down to Pred. Pred trying to do what he can, maybe having a moment, but there is the break for New York. A huge break for them here at P2. Yeah, I mean, considering what you invest in that, the disciplines you said for Texas to kind of hold, be ready for the next point, and you get the break on through. There's been a couple of big breaks. Optics, unfortunately, when you get it at the plane hill, gets broken again right after it. This one, what can subliners turn into time-wise? And it looks like this is gonna be, what, 40 or so seconds they're gonna get? You're talking like an 80 second swing. Yeah, just taking a look at the scoreboard. We have a bit of a pause as uh, you can see Optics gonna get set up. Yeah, Kenny, 22 kills, again, leading the way. I mean, he's leading the way by a margin right now in the lobby. Yeah, he's had a, a great series for Optic in his debut. The other side, just a very balanced effort from the subliners. Hydra thought he was maybe sneaking up the ramp. Sometimes it's the best way, yeah. uh, honestly. He, if you play in search and destroy, you, you climb up a ladder, or you go up the stairs. Actually, the ramp feels like the the area you can find the most timings. Yeah, I mean, it's what it's about. Power point is just catching a timing. <laughs> he tried to. Oh, oh, hi. Hello. Nope, bye. Hi. Well, there's some timing. There's the trades. A team <laughs> from Kings just up and down waiting for the squad. And there's another break. My guy's North. a gopher. That's like a whack a mole. <laughs> but once again, they're able to get in behind that. Like these little breaks, just leading to 20 to 40 seconds in spots. And this is like, this is when. It's like, okay, right? Like, you've got a 50-point advantage. You're up over 200. Like, those those points are starting to matter a lot. But this is the stretch. You see the left side control from Optic Texas. This is where you can really rally and chain something together here. Yeah, it's, it is not over yet. No, absolutely it's not. Set up Dashi already inside. One player trying to work the pitch. That's going to be Hydra. The rest of the teammates through book over towards Vending. So it looks like New York can have this side of the map. Maybe they want for P5. 
Or is Optic gonna try to push this out? It looks like off a of spawn, Fred through Bookstore does get caught. But Optic just holding down the hill. He's on five, making it six, and there's gonna be a cruise for him. We'll see if the cruise will come into play. What he's able to get behind it, but some clean shots at first, but shots he's able to take that fight ultimately. 20 seconds now between the two teams and just over 20 left. Inside of our hard point, Fred working behind multiple. Oh. A little slide and snap to maybe hit a third, but Kismet doesn't let it happen. Well, you're going to see another lead change here. New York going to have to have a break. It's one of those things, like, depending on how this result is, like, that plate push, I almost wonder if you just give that up. Yeah, yeah. Realistically, right? You did so much work at P2. You just say, hey, I think you can spawn out there. We're just going to go set up at Burger. But maybe they can clutch on up through a break. Yeah, maybe it's just cruise? like you've been, you've, been breaking, oh, you've been breaking all map. It, maybe you're just thinking you've got another break in you. Yeah, Cruz is gone, finds nothing. Kenny and Fred find the kills. 20 more seconds for Optic, nice and we're shots. heading to a map five. Nice shots. Clean there from Shotzi. Kidsman getting caught on the cross. Kenny approaching 30 kills. We saw nobody over 20 in our first terminal arp when we casted to start the day, but this time we've got people popping off. Five more seconds to go. Five in a row for Kenny before he falls as well. Dashy inside, locking it down. Nobody close and optic. Get us to a map five. I think you might be right. Like, you know, as good as the break look. And I was thinking at the time, like this 20 points get you over 200, you're up like 50, but then it's funny because right as I said that, I looked at the map, I'm like, oh yeah, but they've got like upside control and this map is this map and you just can lock it down for yeah, so yeah, long. Yeah, I mean, props to Optic, they just said screw it. Yeah, it's fine. They broke it. Let's get set up early at Burger. You yep. had three players in that area. There was a, a chance, I think, for New York where they had a bit of a pinch, but uh, the players held on. Uh, but Kenny with the 30 bomb, almost 5,000 damage. Outside of that, I mean, the scoreboard looks pretty similar but, uh, between the rest of the other seven players. Hydra 13 and 24, not a stat line we see for him, but this is kind of what I mean. Map number one, Karachi, you're running around with a sub. Hydra's doing his thing. Perfect. But on a map like this, where he's got to play a sort of slow, disciplined, every time he tried to make a pinch or a flank, red by optic, they were ready for it. And that's just the limitations of Terminal Hardpoint. No, it is. I mean, yeah. It they couldn't be like more different when you're kind of talking about like play style and how they'll line up from a weapon standpoint, but just sensational stuff there. As Optic, they get us to a map five. You know, it starts a little bit slow. You have a really rough round 11. You beat up a little bit on Karachi, but after that, the fantastic stuff. Now we've got a breakup coming, and then we get to the map five here between your world champs in New York and Optic, the new look team looking to make some noise. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Here we go. It is a fifth and final map to close out our inaugural day of the season. It's the first day. It's been it's been a banger. We've had a lot of great maps. We've had a whole hell of a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for those watching at home. And now we see how it ends here. Uh, we got a long season ahead of us. I know it's still early, but I'm having a blast. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. We got a, a second game five of the day. Optic New York. Optic, they look great in games three and four. Uh, I mean, you, you know, Kenny really stepping up since map number one in that AR role, but then the subs, especially in control. But we saw from map number two, New York, they were just so on top of the trades and how they were taking fights in search of destroy. Can Optic be a little bit tighter here in this game number five? Well, they were looking really good on terminal. Different mode, I know, but we'll stay here and see if you just keep those fights going your way. Kenny was just masterful in that map four. This is just a, a tough offensive map. Uh, oh, he's just littering. You really have to use that smoke. And look at this position Hydra gets into. There's not an early challenge. And Scott mm -hmm. is ready for that peak. And he's like, all right, guys, well, Kenny has spent 10 seconds crawling just to have his face ripped off by Skies. Yeah, and it's tough. I don't know if you expect Hydra here, but now you do. Dashy, the stun is going to connect, but he is out of there. Just able to escape, but I, I think just playing some tournaments, some wagers, and playing with Octane, he's like, dude, every time I spawn up on offense and search on terminal, it, I just, I know I'm not going to have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do something I don't want to do, and that's really what it is. You have to try to make a push with the smoke towards one of these sites, and it's just not going to be fun. You have to just try and clutch it on out. 3v2 for subliners. Why, that's a win and a half. Oh, what my God, the hell? It trades the teamwork. I don't know how they won either of those gunfights, but now a chance. But now it's a 1v1. The Bulldog versus Big Brucie. 13 seconds to go. They saw him. On the bomb. He got the info. Kismet is there, and he bails them out with a 1v2 clutch after oh, the two gunfight wins by Shotzi and Dashi. Jesus. I mean, it was unreal until it wasn't. They, yeah. they pulled aside, <laughs> let's just run through the hall, and I'm like, that's just a, They're probably it, just feeling turnt in that moment. I mean, like, yeah, that team I pissed on one. I got the other. <laughs> yeah, the slide, just waiting, the double chow. They almost pull it out, but Kiz in the 1v2, the time on his side. Wow. Gives New York the round. The round that almost was. That looks so cool. It did. It really did. Just like seeing, like we weren't even on like their POV, but like just seeing the gunfight. I mean, the first from one the other angle. The sky, then, gross. Oh yeah, yeah. We didn't even see it from his POV. It still looked gross though. Like it's been a just different straight head. Don't have anyone inside a plane. Normally, kind of a standard defensive setup is sort of just have one in there. Get a trade. You're at least gonna get one. You might get two. But shots are just gonna play it from low. You can wall bang from top three from middle of the hall. So maybe that's the play. Y'all dash you to find the first blood. Right on thought you'd make a great airline steward. But Kenny now. Thank you. We'll see what info he can get. Hydra still Dude, how does he always tucked away? How, how do we just get to the same spot and just tuck away? He's, all, he's always lurking. Almost finds a second, I think. But Shachi knows he's going to see that cross. There we go. He spots that, but they were looking for it. Shachi just playing his life. 20 seconds. New York has to plant. The nade hits. The plant's through. One versus three for Kismet. Good luck. That is an insane play by Sh Most players, after that nade hits, they just go for the, the player on the bomb. Woo. He's like, I'm going to win the first gun fight on the player that's not weak from a grenade <laughs> and then run away. Shotzi up to four and one. Yeah, I guess you're kind of thinking I just hit him with a nade. Like he's going to back he's down, planting. not going to chow. Yeah, he's pulling. He's pull, even the plank gets finished. Like he's probably not going to chow with whatever, 50 HP, whatever he ended up with. Just sends it to the other guy. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Guy's different. One, one. 
So you go deeper into this search and destroy. Back on offense is Optic. Nearly an insane round one victory. Well, it is that duo. I mean, four for Shotzi, three for Dashi. Yeah. All the kills for Optic throughout the map. Sure are. Oh, hello. Somebody please answer the phone. My flight was delayed. <laughs> uh, I'd like a new flight, please. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Great airline steward. Thank you. All right, so off this smoke going down. Just trying to cross me over towards A. The nades are hitting. So there is some info that there's a player near this area. But now without a smoke, like, some of these pushes are going to be tough. But if anyone can do it, it's probably Shotzi. Yeah, let's get him and Dashi next to each other sliding and hopping around. They're good. Uh, they start to work their way up. Just peek it for a second and back up. I like that from Hydra. Don't overcommit. Get ready for the second shot. Throws a dead nade down. He's going to use a smoke here. And while he's going to oh use a smoke, almost to perfection. Gives the call out, though. But I think the smoke kind of helps Optic to just kind of go for it. Bomb being planted now. Shotzi's so weak. For a second, I thought he thought he had a stun. Like, the way he threw that. Like... Now, this is winnable. You have to have a tight setup here if you are Optic. Okay, he's going to get out. Watch that flank. Wrapping all the way around those skies. He's able to take out one now down to a two versus two. Sibs out of ammo. Sibs out of AR ammo. Well, and that's going to make things difficult. Pred with the kill. Skies all alone. One versus two. He will drop. Texas get the round win. And Hydra, yeah, the, the smoke nearly led to three kills. <laughs> it looked like it for a second there. But then, yeah, after he drops... Sort of a free cross of the bomb. Yeah, they're like, all right, let's just use, we might as well use this smoke. We got 30 seconds. Yeah, let's go. We're going to get to with two smokes in the round. <laughs> props to Shotzi for just committing to the plant. Immediately gets that down. Such a quick decision. Doesn't allow, you know, NYSL to get any nades on the bomb, find some wall bang spots. And, well, he is leading the way at 6 and 1. Okay, here's your standard top S he hit with that smoke down towards the middle of the hall. New York just going for it. We'll stop here for a moment. Hydra, though, with the first blood. See what shots he can do with his four in a row. As a nade hits him to six HP, he's probably going to be chilling for a second and then dead. Kismet soars over the top rope. Dashy, last up now. As they just send it and simply too strong for Optic within this round. Unless Dashy can do something truly nutty, not going to happen. 2 2. Yeah, we, we haven't seen it so far th through this game, but I, I would say one of the mo more default sort of hits for offenses is just right off the start. Either put a smoke kind of where P1 is, front eskies, deal with that line of sight, or right outside of bush. You put a smoke down main hall, and, and you flank top eskies, and it sounds like that's exactly what they did. We didn't see the smoke on our screen, but you have that pinch come in, and then for Optic, you're just kind of playing a retake, but they get picked apart. I sure do. I mean, Kismet with some big ones. A nice nade on the Shotzi. As we saw him just kind of laying there and gets bopped. Now let's see what happens behind the smoke here. They try to maybe slow them down with it for a moment. Sib will be playing up top. And he'll be looking for the angle, but it's Kenny now with the first blood finally in the action after that fantastic map four here on Terminal. That's his first kill in the game. And while this is going on, you know, you have Pred just kind of watching the pinch, watching the flank, but maybe trying to make a move of his own. It's just, what is this timing like? Because New York, they might try to just go right up Essie's. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go for an early retake. Uh. Kenny somehow plays his life for a while, but Shotzi is here on the pinch with, with Pred. They're going to rotate on over. Going to try to plant this bomb. Should get it down now, two versus one. On to Kismet. He has a 1v2 clutch already to work with, but that one uh, obviously a little bit different as he got in round one. This time, much more to do. 30 to go. Kismet looking to be the playmaker. Can he find the timing? Knock, knock. Who's there? The Bulldog's been spotted. Looking left, looking right. Just trying to bait one out and almost baits it out perfectly, but can't snap back in time. Optic. They got each other's cross. They get the round win. They take the edge here again. Yeah, that was close, though. New York, you saw the SC's push coming in. Uh, you know, Kenny gets caught, but Shotzi was already out, and Pred immediately hits that flank. They time it perfectly, able to trade those numbers and get that bomb down. But 
I saw it happen and I was like, which way is this gonna go? Yeah, yeah. Now, what did New York try this time on offense? They had the beautiful B hit last time around. A fantastic execute this time. We're going the other way. Shotzi's going to get caught. Nice shot through from Dashi though to knock the weak player, drop the weak player as he went to go hit through. Shotzi did some great damage into him. Probably see two bullets there from Dashi to get the kill. Now do a 3v3 and you've got plain side control. Yeah, the adjustment for Optic was a three stack top S cheese. And Shotzi, I think he's just looking for info. I, I, he's trying, trying probably not to take a, a, a fight there, but they at least trade it out. Hydra, he gets found. It's, once again, going for that lurk roll on that pinch. Yeah, it looks like he almost wasn't ready for the gunfight. Like, he just kind of gets caught. It's still going to be a tough retake. Can you get the kill before you drop? He does. Now to a one versus one. Sib, Chows, oh. Sib wins it. The slide cancel is clean. I mean, he doesn't have to chow. You can check bomb from middle hallway, right? You can look, you can jump right into that middle window. Nah, his name's Dante. He's gunning him. Yeah, he just goes for the challenge. You know, maybe your teammate gets the kill cam. He's hopping bomb, just goes for the slide, able to snap. We are all tied at three. As tough as it can be on offense, we've had some success here for our teams. You've got what, Pred lurking on one side of it. The other three grouped up, thinking about a B hit, working their way up in the lurk roll here through bookstore will be Hydra. I mean, this could be bad timing. I don't know if they're gonna know Hydra's in this position. You have Pred watching main hallway. Are they going to clear this? It looks like Shotzi has an idea. They have done such a good job of finding Hydra, knowing the way yeah. he wants to play and dealing with his pitches. But they have to win the gunfight, he does. And then just using his own smoke to just chase him down. You know, Hydra is not... He's three and six, and we know he is a fantastic tactical search and destroy player, finding time, he's playing the lurk role, how good he can be. But Optic won none of it. Yeah, you're right. They have shut him down. That's been a big part. And why it's 3-3 and not maybe Subliners running away with it. Because he finds some of those openings, you know how he can take over. Yeah, well, Sib and Kismet there. Kismet going for the info, and then right away, Sib hits the pinch from bottom plane, finds two freebies. Dash, I think, was just worried about the full flank. So he was watching that way. Those stairs were wide open. And uh, Sib, part of the reason that you're out 4-3. <laughs> He's had some big multi-kills. A little clutch in the 1v1. But I feel like it's just really rare since we've started casting Hydra in search. Like he has like a even like a negative surge. I don't know. He's just like a lock for double digits sometimes, or he's just so so good. Well, it's just props to to Optic to make you know finding sort of the lurk positions that he wants to play in some of these deep corners. Well, Sib now seven and five. Shotzi leading on the other end of it at eight and four. The round advantage now to Subliners. Oh, mm. um, I'm not. He just wanted to test the. Maybe not his best round, but now has to try to stay alive. He hears the nades, goes out for the jab. Red has put so much damage into that goddamn cockpit. Yeah, wouldn't make a great pilot. <laughs> yeah. That was incredible. 4v3. Kenny trying to bring us back. Do this position, they don't know. He, he could have packed away. But now Dashi here to help. Going for the challenge is Kenny, two in the round. Able to make this a one versus two. Ooh. For Optic, now they just have to use those numbers and Hydra just so quickly trying to go on this pinch. Well, he is spotted and they're ready for it. I mean, that's, that's a hell of a round. Considering how it started with Pred, you know, obviously a bit awkward there for him, but then Kenny with the two big ones at Eskies just brings him right back into it. Yeah, man, it was in the blender that uh, round. That looked like a, a me round where you just like make one mistake and then it's just like a it's just like a domino. <laughs> Sorry, guys, somebody go cockpit, throws an idiot at the window, <laughs> has to back away, goes back to the cockpit, and then gets caught. It's just like, well, that one's on me. But uh, Kenny and Dashie able to hold top Eskies. A four four. We're tied up yet again. Oh, they're just gonna send it. Behind that smoke, and well, New York just backs away. Shots, he's like, I'm shooting every corner just in case Hydra's there. Yeah, they're gonna have to retake this. Now, moment of silence. 
Now real loud and then real quiet. Yeah, right. It's like all the utility gets used and then we just... <laughs> yeah, well, it's a question of how much utility is left on both ends, yeah, especially true. in New York. So if you're going to try to retake this, you're going to need some nades. That is for sure. Maybe you won't, but they would definitely help. No, yeah, I mean, it can be done without them, surely. But yeah, no, you're right. They, they'll be the assist. That's that's for certain. Sib just trying to get right into the window, get the info. Spots one, and what a gunfight win it was for Sib. At least able to take that one, but now three versus three. 20 to go. The fight starting oh to get frantic. And Shotzi is Bruce Wayne. He's taking over Rick Bruce. He's Batman over the top rope. Just laying him out. That dude just ninja kicked through the air and just pistoled someone in the face. Yeah, there's some style of that. Give him some style points. My goodness, Shotzi. Up to 11. And, and just after game two, I don't know, he has been different throughout this series. He's just gotten locked in. Yeah, no, he absolutely has. Spectacular there from Shotzi. Now round away from the reverse sweep. You start in the 0-2 hole, you might bring it the entire way back. Got to be brimming with confidence now. Kenny Doe stunned up, backing up. The flurry here from Subbites. They're going back to sort of what we saw in an offensive round. Win a bit ago, but Kenny says, no, sir. You shall not pass. Locks down two, but now we stop for a moment. Into the 2v2 we go. Kenny and Shotzi, sipping skies. Yeah, Pred. Pred's just hoping to get one. If he gets one, maybe one of those players is weak. The, the game might be over, but instead he gets caught. So numbers equal oh, out. Sib again. Sib has just been... The Nasty. Gunny, the Gunny, he's 1v1. Sib has been unbelievable. Now to Kenny, this would be for the ace. Well, and through all of this, all this timing, the bomb is already crossed towards A. The 1v2 ace. And he's hoping it Win was the a map. B hit, but it, it is not. He's like, ah, oh, crap. Damn. <laughs> okay, find an opening. He does not. Gets caught on the cross, gets dropped, and it's another round 11 in this series. We go the distance again. That overchow from, from Pred, man. I know, like, hey, they're weak. He's just hoping to find one, even if there is a trade. Instead, he gets caught. Sib. I don't know if they're going to go for it again, but maybe they will. Yeah, they found success there, but not going to be the play this time around. Okay, here we go. Hydra in the lurk roll yet again. Shotzi's not really playing for one. He's playing for a retake here. Well, he's been caught a couple of times. He gets some tags in, but now just needs to back away with his life. Oh, careful. Oh. <laughs> Down to 69. Nice. Ah. Sight control through for subliners. Still has a smoke. Then just watching that cross, trying to bait out the position of Opti, see if you get any wall banks in. A couple of dirt spots coming through. Just shoot through all of it. Why not? Can't quite connect. Skies with the first blood. Pred taken out of it. Shotzi is trying to get eyes on him. Sliding across. This is going to be so difficult now for Optic. Can you just get like one wondrous wall bang? Rip somebody out of this and give yourselves a better chance in this round. It was Dashi and Shotzi that had the near heroics early on in this game. Can they do it again? Shotzi's gone. He's been your playmaker. Hydra, the lurker, finds the kill. Now on Dashi and Kenny. He will drop the drop shot, a thing of beauty. Finla, finally, Hydra finding his openings. They take the round. They clutch up. But what a series it was. Hydra's like, finally. Yeah, no, really. Like, finally, he gets involved as a playmaker in that one. He almost, I mean, he almost gets caught in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. But then backs on down. And will optic. Take it all the way to around 11 at game five. I think a slow start to the series for them. They've showed kind of. Do we have all round 11s in search today? We did. Because we cast the three, right? Phases was around 11. This had two round 11s? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I might have to make that up. Maybe. Who knows? I already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has been a fun, fun day. Sib, man. In New York, just they get a dumb. Yeah, Sib, like, let's see, it's 7,000 damage in that map four here. There were just so many of those gunfights where you've got eight players on the map that are twisted. Like, they are wildly talented, but he just somehow wins this one-on-one. -on -one. It seems like you shoot at the same time. You're both hitting your bullets, and he just fries somebody. Just locked. Nah, that guy, yeah, he is. He is. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. I might have to start taping up my elbow, too, dude. Yeah, I, whatever he's doing, I want to do it. There we go, NYSL, the world champs from last year. Clutch on up, two round 11s. That ice 
it, it has stayed here for this team as they win their first match. Yeah, you know, all we've been hearing is kind of a slow start for them. The coaches pull, you know, they have them in B tier. Uh, I don't yeah, we think. We don't see search. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, big part of it. Is you and I were talking the drive in here, like that's the huge thing. Like even for us that have watched a good amount of scrims, like it's just it's response. Like it's hard to judge where teams will actually be in a best of five. Search and destroy. It's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be fun to watch how it plays out. But that'll do it for Joe and I. That'll do it here for day one to break it down to the desk we go. Take it over, guys. Thank you so much, Maven and Merck. Great stuff there from Optic and New York. We were worried it was going to be a 3-0. Well, Optic woke up. Games three and four, they get the dubs, and then we get our second game five of the night. Allie, you were clapping with each kill on both sides of this game on Terminal. What were you seeing in that final match? It was just a lot of first bloods, and I specifically really liked the round 11 decision making by New York subliners because you could see that they made that decision like, yes, going over towards A, towards the plane, there could be somebody sitting in cop pick, but should we get past that? It's basically signing the round off as theirs, and luckily for them, unfortunately, Optic only had one player in the back looking for the push and gave the plan up for free. Nameless, I gotta ask you this because that's all chat is talking about did dashy rage quit at the end because i actually scrolled back now that we're on youtube you can scroll real quick and i saw he was eight and eight after that last death so the man went even despite the loss in the final round I did dashy rage quit no or is that just part of the game no way he rage quit i mean it was six five versus the world champs your brand new roster and they just put up a hell of a fight i mean you talk about optic throughout the series they didn't play perfect call of duty by any means a couple of egregious search and destroy rounds search and destroy is the game mode i expect this team to be very good at they're going up against some solid players on the other side of things. You think about this map, that first round, Kismet's 1v2 that you just saw in the highlight. Incredible. If they don't overthink it, like they rip two people off that bomb site. They were just expecting there to be a third. Eskies got worried about timing and ended up getting bad timing by overthinking it. So for Optic, I think they're fine. This could have easily went their way. Uh, but the New York subliner is still looking very strong. Sib put up a hell of a performance in the series, especially in those first blows. That's the next player we got to talk about here, Allie, because all eyes were on Sib. You won the World Championship. Championship. You did it flawlessly in the grand finals, and then you removed Priesta in favor of a young guy. Yeah, no, I think Sid's performance today was amazing for the amount of pressure that was on his shoulders, especially in those search and destroys. In that game, too, him and Hydra combined for six first bloods. That is what you want out of them. You don't want them to have that short step. Because again, we're talking about the world championship team. Then obviously game number five, Sib goes 11 and seven, going hand in hand with Shotzi on the other side. So I think for New York, this spells for a pretty good future. Nameless, we saw three matches. Shotzi earns movement king of the day in my book. Anyone <laughs> up there to challenge him? I mean, Hydra, right? I mean, the first like couple of maps, Hydra was balling. I mean, we talk about that Karachi hard point. Like, it was pretty lit, and Hydra was going crazy on that one. So both those guys, you just expect a level of play from these submachine guns. You know, going up against ARs and headies, and they're still able to pull off the impossible at times. It's beautiful to watch. Optic falls in a game five. New York picks up their first match win of the new season, and the world champion. The MVP Kismet is in the building right now. Old dog, we had to bring you in and talk a little bit about what you've been up to. After lifting the trophy at Champs last year, what has New York been up to? Uh, I mean, just building the new vibes with Dante. Uh, we obviously, you know, people gave us a flack about the, the decision that we made with bringing him for Preston. Um, but we've just been trying to build him into our character and like how we do things and he's been doing well. So that aspect's been good. And then just obviously grinding the game. So and maybe a little bit early, Kismet, but you are a world champion from last game. How are you guys feeling on the new inception in Modern Warfare 3? Um, I mean, it's it's fun, like, it's bittersweet, because obviously, like, it sucks going from you being the best team in the game, and then you have to relearn everything, but it also, like, it, it fuels that, like, passion that we all have for Call of Duty. So just being able to learn the new game is a lot of fun, and doing it with these players, I mean, they're the best players in the world, so I wouldn't want any other team to do it with, so it's just fun. Uh, Kizma, I gotta ask you, you know, the word on the street was things were starting off a little slow for the New York sub yep. for the world champions. The word on the street was you guys were beat here by uh, the coaches. Coaches? So I want to ask you, did you see that? Uh, and then why such uh, a change in your gameplay, I guess, in this first opening match? Is the intensity, what was it? Uh, I mean, obviously a tournament match is way different than scrims or whatever, so you're gonna have that intensity. Um, the other biggest thing, I mean, I'm not gonna flack them for putting us in a lower tier. We started a couple days late, as did Optic, I think. So we were, it was that weird learning curve. Um, but I think we're picking things up and, you know, our team, I mean, people have said it, like over time, we're just gonna get better and better and better. And until then, like, we're gonna always have stuff to work on, so. 
I mean, it just gives us a chip on our shoulder. I, I love it, so. <laughs> you can't give Kismet a chip. Right? <laughs> you can't give him that. He's already they started enough. too early already, man. Too early. All right. <laughs> too well, early. Kismet, the final question for you is we see the chat get extra rowdy anytime that you guys play against Optic. Do you feel extra pressure when you match up against this team, or who, what other teams do you enjoy playing against? Uh, I mean, obviously, I love playing the Optic crowd and, like, having that pressure. Uh, I mean, we've talked about it literally in a meeting the other day. It was like, you know, we're very blessed to have the, the idea of having pressure. Not everybody lives their life in, like, a pressure situation. So we just look at it as, like, it's another opportunity to perform, another opportunity to do what we love. And those moments, I mean, yeah, I love it. So. All right, man. We'll let you go celebrate with the team. Congrats on your first victory of the new season. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. That's Kismet and the Subliners picking up a Game 5 victory, but they weren't the only ones. We had three matches on the day, and our first one also going the distance. Let's rewind time and go all the way back to Atlanta versus Boston here, Allie. Break it down for me. We've got some of the top dogs versus some fresh faces, yeah? Yes, and actually, Clint was wrong earlier. They did do three Game 5s today, but the Game 5 in this series was a 6-2, not a round 11, and it was just what we would expect from Milena, I will say on the side of Boston, they really impressed me with this opening match today, which is funny because they kind of did the same thing last year when they had to play in their opening match of the season. Yeah, uh, the revenge game. It was really, really tight, honestly. Uh, you talk about Atlanta phase. I mean, this core three has been together for so long. Yeah. You add out a world champ like Draza, who brings that next level intensity, who grinds all the time. You expect them to have a level of play, which they showed today. But I think I focus more on Boston, the takeaway from this. They looked very good for a new roster. So for these guys, fix some things in search and destroy. You won two respawns in that series. You're feeling pretty dang good. I have to say, Caps really impressed me, especially in that first search and destroy. Look out for Capsital as he loves to play aggressive Snoopy also living up to the hype at the end of the day though phase and their teamwork is the difference maker the game five as Ali mentioned didn't make it past nine rounds Atlanta phase gets the first victory and surge well you got the fastest victory on the day in the matchup against the LA thieves this one we expected to go all red it was the I guess I guess the uh, world champion title and win. Ilian who you got double <laughs> arsities up there for a moment and yeah. a new Belgian player in the lineup. Absolutely. I love what I saw from these guys, right? You, you know, you got some guys who are riding the bench who hadn't played in a little bit and they come out and they get a big victory, which I think was massive for morale sakes and for these guys to sort of know where they at, where they are against the rest of the competition. For me, Seattle is just perennially going to be my dark horse throughout the entire year. I feel like there's always going to be the phase and the optics that you're predicting to go very far in these tourneys. This is a team that can upset them. They've teamed with those guys. They've won championships with those guys, and they are of that caliber, and we saw that today. And the main thing that I was looking at was the performance of Illy, and he went bonkers like he went yeah. off throughout that series. So if he's playing like that, this team has potential to go all the way. I completely agree. I think on the topic of Seattle Surge, I think my biggest worry when it came to this team was going to be in the respawns. I have no worries whatsoever in the twos and fives, but I was worried about the one threes and fours, and they definitely proved me wrong today. Their hard point looked so clean against the LA Thieves. I mean, it just looked like Seattle Surge at all times they were on the same page, and I hope that moves forward as we continue. On the other side, this was our first look at LA Thieves, and if you listen to the community, the big concern is, okay, talented players, but who's actually going to run this ship? Who is going to lead this team? What did you see from them today? Did they play their opponent close, or do we already need to raise some sirens around this LA Thieves squad? They played them really close. Those okay. hard points were like 15, 30-point games. Yeah. Uh, you know, you talk about terminal. A couple of decisions here and there when you should give up time. I mean, I even saw it in that Optic in New York game. New York didn't decide to give up Burger early enough. So it's like you have to make these decisions, and you need actual match and tournament data to go off of, so they'll learn and they will get better. I saw enough. Chat, you're welcome. I have now stretched it past five hours. The drops are beginning. Reminder, link your YouTube and your Activision accounts if you want to score big, and we're going to be live all weekend long. So do it right now, because tomorrow we're hitting you with the first of our quad headers. We got Miami Heretics versus the brand oh, new Carolina Royal Ravens Rocker versus Legion Gorillas take on another purple squad in the Ultra, and we close it out with our second look at some Boston Breach and Seattle Surge squads. On that December 10th, though, on Sunday, we opted at the end of the night. Were there any other matches that you think the community are excited for? 
Are we talking about throughout the whole weekend or just whole tomorrow? Because the whole weekend, I think it's got to be seeing Miami, to be honest. Seeing them tomorrow is the first game of the day. Vamos Heretics. Vamos Heretics. Wake up your Spaniard friends. They're playing bright and early at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's noon on the West Coast. We'll see you then. Breaking all the rules. At the mind now, this ain't win or lose. This is what you wanted from me, lit the fuse. Be a pawn all my life, I refuse. You were scheming all my life, now you need me. Not seeing it as a big deal is something I can't repeat. In the lab like Dexter, you sabotage like Dee Dee. Yeah, I got the crown now, it's mine now, I'm knee deep. Yeah, I got the crown now, it's mine now. I can't be minimized on the throne, you've been advised. Putting me down, but I switched it up. I'm top tier, better listen up. Overhype can't trip me up. Over the way, had to lift me up. What a shot, look how it rolls, even if nobody knows ya. On my own wave, I am gold ya. You was trying to block me on a low ya. Took the high road, let me demonstrate. Cause the old me gone like I've been erased. I'm the boss now. I'm the boss now. Wiped away my tears, got the sauce now. On the wall, on the wall, in the corner, under the dumpster, in the corner, in the corner, under the dumpster. You shooting me on point? Ah, uh, that's too good. Yeah, yeah, you got this. I'm by myself. Jump. Let's go. Baby, let's go. What the f***? I thought we lost. I thought we lost. How much time was that, bro? It was literally one second.